started when I was at a friend's party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. I mean, all the time. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. Wait, is that a phone? Look at the performance, the graphics. That thing's a gaming machine. A new challenger. Is that Faker? That man's a gaming legend. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. And here we go. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. <laughs> Others back. Legendary. We're the best duet ever. An enemy has been slain. The melody is my calling. The music of my bow will cleanse their hearts. Supernova to the rescue! <laughs> Music is the strongest form of magic. UBS Gold, Trust in Gold. Kekompakan menjadi kekuatan. Kehormatan menjadi tujuan. Kemenangan adalah kemewahan bagi mereka yang berjuang meraih impian. Limited Edition UBS Gold X Mobile Legend Bang Bang. Rayakan setiap momen berharga dengan emas. Main bareng, investasi bareng UBS Gold. Limited Edition Maya Necklace UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Eudora Bracelet UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Bundle UBS Gold Bar X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Gratis Hero Skin Setiap pembelian item collaboration Tersedia di UBSLifestyle.com Blibli dan di e-commerce UBS Lifestyle Halo para pengejar Kejar ini, kejar itu Kejar Keep kalem, pasti ada diskonnya Pesan GrabCar pakai promo YouGrab Halo para pengejar Kejar ini, kejar itu Kejar Keep kalem, gak ada kata telat Pesan Grab Bike ada jaminan anti ngaret.
Belanja di Indomaret makin banyak untungnya. Kumpulkan cashback poin jadi untung terus. Makin sering belanja, makin banyak poin yang kamu dapatkan. Dapat diskon jadi untung terus. Bayar belanjaanmu dengan poin yang kamu punya. Belanja jadi gratis jadi untung terus. Dan untung terus dapat banyak promo. Jadi member Indomaret Poin ke sekarang. Untungnya non-stop. Even my French neighbor. I mean, all the time. I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. Wait, is that a phone? Look at the performance, the graphics. That thing's a gaming machine. A new challenger. Is that Faker? That man's a gaming legend. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. And here we go. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. <laughs>
The melody is my calling. The music of my bow will cleanse their hearts. Supernova to the rescue! Music is the strongest form of magic. UBS Gold. Trust in Gold. Kekompakan menjadi kekuatan. Kehormatan menjadi tujuan. Kemenangan adalah kemewahan bagi mereka yang berjuang meraih impian. Limited Edition UBS Gold X Mobile Legend Bang Bang. Rayakan setiap momen berharga dengan emas. Main bareng, investasi bareng UBS Gold. Limited Edition Maya Necklace UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Eudora Bracelet UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Bundle UBS Gold Bar X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Gratis Hero Skin Setiap pembelian item collaboration Tersedia di UBSLifestyle.com Blibli dan di e-commerce UBS Lifestyle Halo para pengejar Kejar ini, kejar itu Kejar Keep kalem, pasti ada diskonnya Pesan GrabCar pakai promo YouGrab Halo para pengejar Kejar ini, kejar itu Kejar Keep kalem, gak ada kata telat Pesan Grab Bike ada jaminan anti ngaret. Jadi Indomaret makin banyak untungnya. Kumpulkan cashback poin jadi untung terus. Makin sering belanja, makin banyak poin yang kamu dapatkan. Dapat diskon jadi untung terus. Bayar belanjaanmu dengan poin yang kamu punya. Belanja jadi gratis jadi untung terus. Dan untung terus dapat banyak promo. Jadi member Indomaret Poin ke sekarang. Untungnya non-stop.
is for everyone. Ready? So it all started when I was at a friend's party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. I mean, all the time. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. Wow. Attention passengers, this is the final call of the flight. Wait. Is that a phone? Look at the performance, the graphics. That thing's a gaming machine. A new challenge. back. Legendary. We're the best duet ever. An enemy has been slain. The melody is my calling. The music of my bow will cleanse their hearts. Supernova to the rescue! Music is the strongest form of magic. UBS Gold, Trust in Gold. Kekompakan menjadi kekuatan. Kehormatan menjadi tujuan. Kemenangan adalah kemewahan bagi mereka yang berjuang meraih impian. Limited Edition UBS Gold X Mobile Legend Bang Bang. Rayakan setiap momen berharga dengan emas. Main bareng, investasi bareng UBS Gold. Limited Edition Maya Necklace UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Eudora Bracelet UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Bundle UBS Gold Bar X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Gratis Hero Skin Setiap pembelian item collaboration Tersedia di UBSLifestyle.com Blibli dan di e-commerce UBS Lifestyle Halo para pengejar Wah, saya bantuin ya Kejar ini, ini kejar kan? itu Kejar Keep kalem, pasti ada diskonnya Pesan GrabCar pakai promo YouGrab Halo para pengejar Kejar ini, kejar itu Kejar Keep kalem, gak ada kata telat Pesan Grab Mike ada jaminan anti ngaret.
Belanja di Indomaret makin banyak untungnya. Aku kan berdiri dan terus berlari. Terus ke arah puncak tertinggi Ku takkan berhenti Hanya sampai di sini Kemenangan abadi menanti You know we won't miss if we unite our focus And if you haven't
terus berlari terus ke arah puncak tertinggi ku takkan berhenti hanya sampai di sini kemenangan abadi menanti you know we won't miss if we unite our focus and if you have a Masih berlanjut, persaingan pun semakin memanas hingga hari kedua. Baba Playoffs MPL Indonesia Season 11. Di match pertama, dominasi sang raja dari segala raja, RRQ, dipatahkan oleh sang kuda hitam, Alter Ego. Walaupun game pertama dikuasai sepenuhnya oleh sang raja, Alter Ego tidak gentar dan mengembalikan keadaan. 
kita yang sangat agresif dari Sally Boy mampu menekan penuh atas semua game objektif. Inisiasi dan zoning yang dilakukan Prime membuat rotasi sang raja terhambat. Akibatnya, Nino menjadi... Ini udah bagus, cuman eksekusinya aja yang jelek. Terus kurang sabar doang. Game 2, game 3, game 4 sih. Salut banget sih gua sama tim gua. Season ini RRQ masih agak gambling untuk menang kalahnya juga. Pas tiap di regular season juga begitu. Lumayan sedih juga, cuman terburuk begitu aja. Masih percaya kok RRQ bisa juara lewat jalur lower bracket. buat match selanjutnya ya kasih game yang terbaik lah kita udah kuat nih sekarang pada match kedua sang macam putih Evos Legends tidak bisa memenuhi gempuran dari Raja Langit Oni dan mengalami Clean Sweep pada match ini Sans dan timnya memperlihatkan kuatnya dominasi mereka di segala lini. Kalau aku tuh sering nyari karikal karena emang bikin kesel musuh, dia lebih ke matanya ke gua, terus lebih cewek aman, kairi aman, jadi ya jadi enak game ini. Evos harus menerima kenyataan atas kekuatan absolut Sang Raja Galaksi season lalu dan harus turun ke lower bracket. Sangat sedih sih, berharap semoga Evos menang lawan Onik, ternyata emang Onik masih di atas langit. Hasilnya baik lah sama kayak hari ini, 3-0, dan mudah-mudahan nggak ada kayak banyak-banyak kesalahan lah. Aku nggak sabar sih buat ganjang-ganjang nanti. Onik dan Alter Ego harus bertarung di Final Upper Bracket demi mendapatkan slot pertama ke Grand Final MPL Indonesia Season 11 dan tiket turnamen MSC 2023. Dan juga El Clasico akan menjadi pertandingan yang sangat penting bagi RRQ dan EVOS Legends demi menjaga asa untuk melaju ke babak selanjutnya. Apakah dua match yang memiliki sejarah panjang di MPL Indonesia ini akan menjadi Tandingan terpanas di sepanjang babak playoffs MPL Indonesia Season 11. Saksikan dan jadilah saksi atas perjuangan mereka pada hari ketiga babak playoffs MPL Indonesia Season 11. We own this. To the layoff, season 11, it's the playoff today in day number three. And we've got two matches that will decide the rest of the playoffs. And we'll decide who will go to the international tournament of MSC in Cambodia. Before that, we're gonna shout out our sponsors first. MPL Indonesia season 11, powered by Moonton, presented by Samsung Galaxy A-Series, A34 and A54 5G. Official mobile internet partner, Telkom Cell. Official gold partner by UBS Gold. Partner in eSports, Dunia Games, Grab, Secret Lab, Flea Flea. Official broadcast, Max Stream. Official broadcast partner, Deva Sport. Partner, Indomaret and Point Coffee, and also supported by PBSE. And there you go, the team arrival of Rex Vagum Keon, the Kings of Kings, looking to make things right once again and looking to extend the streak of them going to the international tournament for Indonesia. Here it is, man. RRQ with a performance 3-1 against Alter Ego yesterday, sent down to the depths of the lower brackets. Evo's Legends suffering the same fate. A bit more of a stomp, though, in that match. 3-0. A bit. Onik completely demolished Evo's Legends yesterday, and they're gonna have to recover a whole lot here, Ghani, up against RRQ. Looking at their performances based on um, yesterday, right? Ba based on yesterday's game, um, I gotta say, both teams has a lot of mistakes. So, again, they need to make a lot of adjustments here in this upcoming match, El Clasico. Oof. El Clasico. How are you feeling, man? I am feeling super hyped. I expected the Classico to be maybe in the upper brackets, but no, no, it ain't. 
for some fans, like, this is a match that they've been, they've been waiting for even more than Grand Finals, right? But of course, it's a rivalry that has goes on for years, like literally years. It's a classical for a reason, Ghani. It is, right? And Mirko, this is going to be Arashi taking on are you Evos, Sherpin? Are you no, an Evos no. fan? No, no, no. I'm still waiting for the jerseys, man. Buy oh. me. His loyalty can be bought, ladies and gentlemen. So there you go. He's still waiting on a team for a jersey. But here today, it is Mirko, Sheffin, and Ghani exactly. on a desk to bring you El Clasico. And we are all really high. I think that's the word to put it, right? That's how we can put it. Our emotions, our feelings. But Ghani, let's take a look at the hot topic. Well, here, go big or go home. The third El Clasico will be the decider. It seems like this season, EVOS Legends, they weren't able to. Throughout the whole regular season, they were looking shaky, especially when they are up against RRQ. Sure, the scoreline is 2-1, but regular season, RRQ, they just get the better of the e of the White Tiger side. And you can see here, the score 2-1, 2-1. But then again, that was just the regular season. Perhaps because of the playoffs here, EVOS Legends, they are a different, they might be a different breed here. Remember, day one, EVOS Legends were down two and nothing. They were able to come back from a 0 and 2 situation, even though they got clean sweeped by the side of Onik. But now they need to reset here. Take a look at the vibe in the locker room though from the kings of kings. Looking relaxed, looking chill. It seems like very positive all around. At the matchup though, Mirko, it's Toss versus Albert, quite literally the heavyweight matchup. Toss, one of the best junglers in Indonesia and Albert has been pretty much the tier one jungler for Indonesians. And you can see there Saikots and Lemon. Lemon, a legend, literally legend, been doing this for years and finally he has the chance to prove it again that he is one of the best EXP laner in Indonesia. But the opponent is not a pushover either. It's Saikots representing Indonesia for C games, for Zayz, getting picked. I mean, I think right now, looking at the performance of Lemon in the playoffs, it hasn't mm. really been too magical. It hasn't been the it hasn't been the performance that we expected, right? Obviously, though, against Evo's Legends, this is the time that usually Lemon does pop off. He's a big game player, and if it's if any game is to be called a big game, this is it. This is the one. And again, the ultimate showdown of the two marksmen right here. Brands, he's a quote-unquote the king of marksmen. And also, he was uh, the selected to be a national in the TC games. Take a look at the games, though, from yesterday, RQ. You know what? Based on yesterday, it seems like Skylar was the only one shining only on the Melissa, right? When he's not on the Melissa, it was very hard for Skylar to dish out the impact that he needs here. And again, so perhaps that should be the keys to success going in this match. They need to give Skylar a comfortable hero, secure the hero in that first phase. So with a very strong investing early on towards Skylar, so that perhaps in the Land of Dawn, he can show the impact that he needs, right? Yesterday's game though, overall, RRQ looking very shaky. Apart from game one, they were the ones, Alter Ego were the ones who were able to dictate the games. But then again, Skylar here, very strong. Six time be pick, picking up the Melissa, very strong. It seems like his comfortable hero. But going up against Brands, it's also his favorite hero. So Melissa here, the question is pick or ban. If you have the first pick, you need to let the Melissa go to pick it up in the first phase. But France, of course, on the other side, yesterday's game, man, Onik, they were just too sharp, they were just too clean, right? Overall, though, he likes the Beatrix as well, but it was just this game here against Abaloyski and France, they were able to show that the dynamic duel between Brands and as well as Dreams, very, very strong, right? The chemistry that they have is just so, so immaculate. And again, in this Korean um, state, they need that, right? Chemistry. Whereas RRQ, unfortunately, yesterday's game doesn't really show that chemistry that we know. The unity in movement, the sy synchronization, the symphony of skills weren't really shown from side of RRQ. Perhaps that can be the answer for side of EVOS Legends, where in day one, going up against Geek, they were just yeah, after being down 0-2, they flipped up the switch and say, let's rock it. 
And after that, one by one, slowly but surely, they crawled. Again, they have the passion, they have the determination. It's just a matter of, I feel like, chemistry, trust, but also patience here. Patience. It's an investment in both ways, Mirko. Both Skyler and France, but unfortunately, France yesterday, the investment is not there. Game one and game two, beautiful draft by Yeb, knowing that France, the only option available for him is the Brody, and pretty much set him up for failure with the Masha pick from Boots. And game three, even though he has the Melissa, I believe, he has the comfortable hero that he likes to play, like it doesn't work, but it's on it. It's the outlier of MPL ID, yeah. so what can you say? Like, But this one though, RIQ, they're a bit shaky. As you said, Ghani, yesterday, not the best of games. There's a lot of throws, there's a lot of questionable engage, Mistakes. especially from Finn with the Kaja. Like, he should have gone, gone back, but instead he wants more, and that becomes the death of RRQ. You know, I think for Evos, it's so brand-centric still. They yeah. haven't fixed the issue that was in the regular season, Ghani. Yeah, and they need to somehow find other options, right? So let's take a look here at the keys to victory. Four out of RRQ, they need to play proactively from the early game and look for opportunities to flank EVOS's Ooh. black line. They need to play proactive, why? EVOS Legends, they're also somehow a structured team, right? They need to farm for brands, they need to protect the brands, but again, RRQ, they need to disrupt that um, side here. They need to disrupt their pathing, they need to disrupt the rotations coming from side of EVOS because RRQ, they, season nine, they were just chaotic, right? Fights, 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 fights. But then again, EVOS Legends here, the more structure, they have the patience. RRQ, we need that RRQ Season 9 if they really want to win. Just play freely, just play, find the right calculations as well. And I can't wait to see here. From side of EVOS Legends, it's going to be counter setup, right? RRQ, they like to initiate war from Vin, from also uh, uh, Lemon sometimes, right? So they need to counter that. They need to somehow withstand, decide, right? You really want to commit onto its fight? Or do you want to back off, especially in the gold lane? Skylar, sometimes it's he, he's independent, right? Vin can also protect it, so he need they need to counter that, right? Dreams, an answer. And also, they just need to be more clean. I feel like the more the more primary, primary like task or side of, side of RQ, they just need to be more clean and in sync. Because yesterday, I got to say, apart from gay one, the, the disconnect is just evident. Is that what you think as well, Chevin? I would say so, man. There's a lot of... We talk about this with Orashi, like how Sans is a very reactive player, but the calculative is also there. But Lemon, is that the same though? Is that calculation is there? I believe he's just more of a reactive person, and that's why he's been playing those kind of heroes that has a lot of sustainability, which can pretty much bail you out of questionable engage, you know? Like Lapu Lapu, like Taritzla, or maybe Edith. He hasn't pulled off the Edith Inspire yet, but maybe that's not comfortable for a pro play. But I hope Lemon can somehow just turn it down just yet. I mean, turn it down like the okay. adrenaline, yeah. yeah. To make the engage much more, um, much more clean for RQ. I think that is a very, you know, valid criticism right now for RQ especially. And you know, maybe they don't need to, you know, make Le or force Lemon to make these adjustments. Maybe they could also just play Banana. Uh, an XP Ooh. laner that is a bit more structured. Like Ghani mentioned, I think for RRQ, in this po at this point, when they're at such a level of disconnect already in terms of synergy and the way they play, I think getting Banana in there, adding some more stability to the team would be a good option to go for. But Banana, MPL experience, very, very minimal. Well. Playing in the playoffs is a whole different beast, especially an El Clasico match. Mm, that's right, right? I mean, again, we saw the, br the brilliance from uh, La Banana in the regular season, but we also saw some blunders, some mistakes that was also evident from this guy, from the other fruit, right? So again, it's just a... Pick your poison type of right. You want to go lemon? Do you want to go banana here? Or you, they need to think that fast. Which fruit? Exactly, which fruit is the best? You guys, I want to hear your comments. Who do you prefer, lemon or banana? Lemon for right. sure. You pick lemon. I like sour more than sweet. There you go. I personally like sweet more, so I guess I'll say banana. I like bigger things, I like banana. There you oh, go, two okay. banana votes, one lemon vote. Very strange um, reasoning for Ghani, but hey. 
He likes it big, ladies and gentlemen, just like his plays in game. And just like, well, actually, if we talk about big, it's more of a, that's more Lemon's thing in games. He makes, makes big plays. True. Sometimes it ends up winning the game, sometimes it, it ends up losing the game. So, hey, man, I don't know. Lemon, very flippy floppy. There's another thing that's not flippy floppy. What is this? It's an investment. Not a bodong investment like Udil said, like Julian said. It's UBS Gold investment. It's a collaboration of UBS Gold and Mobile Legends Bang Bang and MPL ID Season 11. It's a Mia necklace, Whoa. Eudora bracelet, and also a gold bar for Mobile Legends. So if you're really interested in that, check out at ubeslifestyle.com and UBS Lifestyle e-commerce. Go ahead, check Voice it yours. out, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, I was saving it for you to call me out so that I can reveal it on cam right here. Bagani, he's gonna have some time to show it first. I think someone took it away from me. It's too good. And it's gone. Oh. I'm joking. Oh, oh okay. I was trying to there you go. steal it away, maybe, don't bring it home. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful UBS Gold XMLBB merchandise that we've been waiting for six weeks of the regular season. It said coming soon for so long, but it's finally here. And look at it in all its glory. Investment, and it looks good. It really does, right? It really does look good. And ladies and gentlemen, that was UBS, right? Check it out. Just to not invest in the game, not in just invest on the players, but also in real, real life, right? You also want to get ahead in real life. You want to get the farm you need in real life as well. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to witness El Clasico. Who you got for game one is the question because it sets the tone, right? Sure, day one, the teams that get the first game actually Except loses. For Onyx. Except for Onyx, right? Well, Onyx is different. Onyx is always different. And I'm the like, only exception. The only like. example that's acceptable for us to make for EVOS versus RQ is not the Onyx game, it's the Geek Slate game where they came back down from 2 0. Like, let's just ignore the Onyx game because they're just different. And RQ, they're losing against Alter Ego and on the brink of despair, probably missing out on MSC 2023 in Cambodia. And just want to remind you all that this is a win or go home situation. So whoever loses will go home. As we're gonna see the starting lineup for both of these teams. The only, you know, switch up that I can see here is Lemon and Banana, but no, it's gonna be Lemon. They prefer the experience over Banana. Yeah, it seems like an Clay Lemon Scholar, Albert Vin, the same roster as yesterday, right? But on the other side, I feel like I expect the same lineup as well. There you go, Hijume, Cyclops, Brown, Stars, and Dreams, the IESF champions roster here. Well, go head to head. It's gonna be EVOS Legends and as well as RRQ. Man, oh man, one team will advance, one team will go home. Let's welcome them. The classic rivalry between the two biggest organization in Indonesia for MPL. One with international trophies, a world champion, the other four-time MPL Indonesia champion. Welcome to the stage, the classic rivalry between EVO's legends and Rex Regum Kaon. Here we go, both teams with a lot to prove. Evos has not had success yet in MPL in the latest seasons, but RRQ looking to change that title of local king or local champ to international champ with that MSC ticket. It's a full house for a reason, right? Evos legends and as well as RRQ, both the biggest fan bases, the Kingdom and EVOS fans. They are packing the building here, and both teams, they look to make their fans proud. Remember, again, one team will advance, one team will go home. Take a look at their focus faces. It's do or die. It really is. But you know, just a fun fact before we start this. So-so, RQ's manager walked up to me outside and said, Please don't vote for RRQ. Oh. He did not know about the patch. The mere curse has been a mere blast in the town prediction so far. So with Coach Age and Taksam, Coach Reyes and Bangduk walking Woo. up the stage, you know who I'm going to be predicting. Oh. We're going to see it's either mere curse or mere blast, of course. But Bangduk, man, I feel like we kind of, you know, forgot him 
forgot about it a little bit more because Bang Duk very new for RRQ and taking on one of the biggest job in the business being RRQ's coach and taking on EVOS Legends, the arch rivals of this team. But most big and band heroes gone in. As you can see there, a lot of things to discuss. Yeah, I mean Bang Duk, right? He opts for a uh, farce uh, most of the time. Because Rembo, again, and as well as um, Clay, they really like to bank on the far side here. Very good, again, uh, rotation, rotation, good wave clear as well. And also, they like to use the Kufra as a roamer. Though, in the playoffs, they have yet to pick up that hero for Finn. He opts for the Kaja instead. And on the other side, Evo's Legends, same story. Somehow similar, very Fredrin. Or oriented, very um, brands oriented as well. If they can pick up the claw, they definitely will pick it up. And this is going to be the previous draft recap. The last um, encounter between RRQ and EVOS Legends in this current game with this hero, it was actually EVOS Legends. They were able to equalize in, well, taking the first game, right? With the Ling, with the Eve, it was a bit too much for the side of RRQ, where Benedetta was on that EXP, so well, on, on the Albert, was on Albert, so wasn't really good. But RRQ, with the change of trap, with the adjustments, they were able to somehow find the loopholes here. So it's going to be very, very tight, I got to say, the series. I expect the series to go full best of five. Ooh, full best of five. If a lot of people, a lot of people want that. A lot of people want that. Very, very competitive series, but we're gonna see here also another game RQ versus EVOS 9 to 3. You can see there, Diggy is also an option for Vin, so he can play those kind of reactive heroes, kind of passive heroes instead of those uh, engaging like Kufra, like Kaja. But on the other side, Dreams, kind of the same style. Which do, you th do, you, do you think that's a true statement, Mirko? Dreams and Vin? Yeah. I think they are very similar, right? Both of these players. I wouldn't say a wide hero pool, but a very selective, situational hero pool. The Franco came out, both of these players really good on the Franco. And the way they play, I do agree. I would say Vin is a bit more creative when it comes to engages, but Dreams, so far, has had the better display of just mechanical skill in Season 11. Especially in the playoffs, right? Remember, uh, the comeback going up against Geek Slate was, I feel like, mostly centralized between Dreams. The Lolita catching five there, that play. I, oh my god, that was uh, very good and the follow-up was there. Again, synchronization-wise, I feel like EVOS Legends has the better edge this playoffs. Agreed. Uh, RQ though, perhaps they have the experience, they have the... Um, championship mindset, mentality. Mindset, championship mentality as well. So perhaps that both teams has a their own favor. They have their own advantage, right? And this guy on your screen, Skylar here, 81% went on the Claude. But it seems like it was just the early, early season, right? After that, it was just an auto Claude ban for this guy. And it was very hard for him to find other comfort. So, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, let's enter the drafts. We're gonna see right away a lot of bans here. Claude, of course, respecting that Skylar Claude. And I think RQ is gonna respect the Claude from EVOS as well. Brands, of course, very, very comfortable with this kind of heroes. It's kind of interesting that Claude ended up being the S tier, like the tier one Your marksman over one one. Would you say, Mirko? Is that is that true? In playoffs, to especially later in the season, Claude is more prior than one one. I think we just played a fun match outside too for like a internal cup, Ooh. and we saw what the Melissa did against a one one, a hero that usually absolutely dominates in the draft. In this patch, one one has been nerfed all the way down, and I agree. I think the Claude is much better, especially when you want to set up for something like a Melissa that right now is still up for grabs. Evos, or most of the teams who ban Claude, usually set up for a Melissa pick. Onik, Evos, Ultra Ego, that's what they like to do, and that's what I feel like Evos like just need to do here. Melissa Farsa, I feel like. They Melissa Farsa is a choice. Melissa Fredrin as well, but Fredrin into glue, you're right, it's a bit tough. They should here. I feel like they're still discussing those. They're discussing options here. I feel like Melissa, Farsa. If not Melissa, give us open. Uh, no, the Farsa is more prio, I feel like. Wow. It's, it's not going to be the Melissa, though. Program. It's going to be the Farsa and Lapu. So responding here, that glue, right? Lapu, Lapu, in the hands of the captain himself. Very reliable, good engaged uh, tool as well. 
and it provides as a facilitator towards that mid and late. Let's see here the response from RQ. Perhaps they will pick up the Melissa here for Ooh. Skylar and as well as Frederick. That just makes sense. The thing though, if they actually pick Melissa, you have Lapu Lapu and Farsa already exactly. on your opponent. Right away, you want to say that, Rinko, right? Because the Bravest Fighter goes through that go away and also that long range threat is definitely not one to ignore. RQ, it's going to be tricky and I feel like they still Time want to go for Melissa or Beatrix instead. Wants to go for more range here. This combo, Ghani, Onyx versus Evos yesterday. You can see their real ward manipulation combined with the Bandit Rage can pretty much give you real trouble. The long range, the, the, the slow, the burst from both of these heroes is just insane. I completely agree, right? There's just a good mix between DPS and as well as that burst from that Renner shot as well from the side of Beatrix. So again, a good combination that we're uh, just set up by the side of our RQ. A good peel with that glue. EVOS Legends though, looking at their composition, very team fighty, right? Good to ultimates, Feather Edge Strike, Bravest Katina? Fighter. But let's oh, see Katina. here. I feel like they should pick up the marksman here for Brands early on, but there you go. It's gonna be the one one, right? I expected the carry, but it's gonna be the one one here. Not much success. But I guess if one can pull the one one, it should be Brands. Yeah, okay, 1-1 one, one pickup here, not the Melissa. Up against the glue in the Eve, I understand his concern of picking up that Melissa. Similarly to how a Lapu and Farsa kind of stops that Melissa pick in its tracks, right? So with the 1-1, one, one, you do get more survivability. You get a proper lane as well against the Beatrix. But in this current patch, I honestly feel like Beatrix has a bit of an edge in lane, clearing the lanes faster and having more to say in the lane when it comes to trades and May possibly the, the only way Evo Legends win spirit. in the gold lane is through ganks or with Wan Wan going for all ins. If he gets poked before that, Beatrix is going to have a good time. Good time indeed, but you can see there right away, knowing that they had the Wan Wan, doesn't want to go against the mid And I feel like the second bend for Evos also is going to you know, invest for 1-1. One, one. It's gonna be those kind of, maybe a Diggy ban or Lolita ban, a Roamer ban that is pretty much a trouble no, to Kai deal with with 1-1 one, one comp, but Ark, he knows what Taz knows the best. He wants to go for Akai instead of for Fred in a lot of time. It's his power hero. Yeah, RQ here limiting the options for jungler, right? Very makes sense. It makes sense, right? Uh, Akai, I expect a Baron spec here, either from Saru Evos or RQ, if not banned out. Because looking at their composition, both of them somehow need that sort of a, um, invasive jungler that can peel all the damage. EVOS Legends, 1-1 one, one pick, right? Sparat towards that mid, towards the late, after getting, what, three items, can soak in a lot of damage up from that crossbow of tank. And EVOS Legends, though, they will somehow limit the options for Vin here, banning out the Kaja, and as well as Lolita, and perhaps pick up the Kaja themselves. Then again, RQ can definitely respond with a, um, I don't know, I really like the Bar Barats now. Uh, I disagree here, I think it Connie. works for Evos more than it does for RQ because they are really lacking mobility. Mm -hmm. Another thing though, like if actually picks up, Evos picks it up, there's a lot of slows there too that mm. makes Barats' life harder. And we got True. a comment here from Udil. For me, the presence of Lemon is not a mistake, especially considering his excellent performance. There may be some weaknesses among his teammates. Individually, he can grab a lot of spotlight <laughs> with Mitsutar <laughs> and Lapu Lapu, so it can be said that they lost worlds. because of Lemon. Ooh, or said here, or maybe a mind game statement for Udil. He, he likes to batter, he likes to joke a lot. He's and, a spicy boy. Yeah. Probably the best for media here in MPL. And yeah, Lemon has not had the best performance yesterday. There's a lot of good, like, Rivers Fighter flicker. When he pops off, he pops off. Yeah. When he doesn't, he loses the miss. game. In Hit my or miss. mission to banish and all it's gonna be a landslot. Ooh, I like that. Because, you know, there's no Lancelot stopper yet, and you want to have more mobility if you go against this glue. Because, as I said earlier, Ghani, you don't want to get glued. You don't want to get glued. Kufra makes sense here too, honestly, for the Kufra? side of RQ. If they really want to follow it up, if they really want to just dive into the back line. Fredrin. Getting a bit more pressure. The Fredrin makes sense in the jungle. But at this point, they picked up the glue, a Yeeve, and a Beatrix. Maybe they want more. It's a bit too one-dimensional, in my opinion, if they really are just going to try to play it for Skylar. They need another lane that can carry another role. Right. Hayabusa right. makes sense here. Yeah. Going for a bit more aggressiveness. Yeah, they pick up the Hilda and the Hayabusa, so no Kufra. 
and they're going to be really oh, relying on insane. Lemon to make these engages, wow. initiations happen for the team. And wow. looking at Hilda big, right, you might think it's weird because Hilda is a kind of a free crossbow tank 4-1-1 if he actually goes in, especially after 1-1 one, one gets that uh, win of nature, it's easier. But the thing is, if you combine it with the sprint, it cannot connect to other members. It's going to be real hard for you to actually burst down the Hilda. So another target for the 1-1 one, one is also the glue. Another good disengage mechanic as well. So it's not an easy job for one for brands here especially, but Evos needs one more hero here. Yeah, let's see. already banned, but let's yeah. see. Yeah, I mean, with the Silda as well, right? Ultimate-wise, it can I be, it can cancel the far star out. Remember, Feather Airstrike, can be CC'd by the ult from the side of Hilda, so it immediately just nullifies the Feather Air Strike with the Kaja last pick, right? It's been a very prio hero for both teams, very popular hero. And with this Kaja, I don't know, draft wise, I gotta say, I like um, RRQ's composition better. Yeah, I do agree, I do agree, especially Finn playing the Hilda very, very convincingly in M4 too, even though he. Kinda fell short to the PH teams, getting that third place, getting a second runner up in M4. He still performed even again beefy comp like an Estes comp. So I'm really trusting him fit with the builder here. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, both of the drafts set in stone. Who do you guys think is going to win? Let us know, show your support for Evo's Legends and RRQ as we enter the portal that's opening up to the land of dawn for El Clasico in the lower brackets. Game number one. Remember, win or go home, best of five. It's a do or die for both of the team. As you can see here, Skyler helping Aubrey to get the buff, denying all the pressure away from Hijima and Dreams, and Vin being Vin, going for a bit of invade here. See here, right, again, with the four flickers that the side of RQ opted here, so they will move and perhaps offensively uh, can figure out offensively and defensively here so perhaps a lot of movement speed can be gained but take a look at Vin he doesn't care right Taz will off for the um, tank but my god Vin Vin might just be killed here he actually chose the flicker and he will be taken out first blood over to Evos Legends for the tank slot as early as the first minute 100 gold lead built up but here Evos Legends definitely have more pressure to play with around the Letho Wanderer with Albert now using the Quad Shadow defensively, it should just be, yep, a free Letho take for Evo's Legends. Remembering as well, on Evo's three national team members on RQ, it's to show our pride and support for the Indonesian national team in SEA Games 2023. It might be a statement game here for the gold medal from RQ, Skyler, but Taz getting a little bit of trouble there, but he's a tank, tank slot, so it's A-OK. -okay. But the infant will still come in for Hilda and Clay here. Definitely, but take on the top side. Brands already trying to run away, gets out. Very well played there, utilizing the minions to bring the shadow kill over and to get it off of him. And again, it's a very slow tempo. Sure, Evos Legends gets a first blood onto his window. It's just a room where he knows that his um, play style is just to give vision, provide vision here for his team. and. See the change of um, approach here from Vin because he has no flicker now. He will not do an invade. He opted for a clear, for a safer pick here, for a safer approach. We take a look at the turtle here with this rotation. Hayabusa, it's a little bit, a little bit late, but let's see the delay. Lemon with the split split already. Hijume gonna be able to escape with wings by wings as Taz goes in for retreat, secures it for Evo's Legends. So far, so good for the Tigers. Doing really well early. It's always the risk of picking the Assassin jungler. The objective setup will be worse for you where you're trying to set up. Of course, Psychot's doing a really great job just shooing Clay away with the Bravest Fighter, knowing that he's one of the threat for Taz to actually take the objective. But you can see here, Talent's prediction to Evos in Professor KB and Mirko. Is it Mirkers or Mirbless? So far, playoffs has been Mirbless, so I'll say Mirbless. Okay. Well, again here, take a look at the spells already, right? Evos Legends, they have all the spells. Meanwhile, Skylar and Clay, they're on cooldown. And Evos Legends, they should know with that information, they might actually go for a gank here topside. They might commit to a play. Advanced Judgment is in hand. Ooh, 
course, Kyler is still very, very careful here. Vin too, I think he knows that oh, Dreams careful. is there, but oh, that's oh, oh, very that scary. Is a, there's a window for a flicker, but he doesn't go for it. Doesn't want to gamble it. Yeah, the range isn't really um wasn't really a hundred percent. He wants to be precise, but here Vin now already very, very aggressive. Again, all alone. He does have the flicker to play with, but Dreams doesn't want to commit the divine judgment, wanting to save it for Skyler here. Speaking of saving, you guys can save and find value with the free hero skins with every item collaboration. UBS Gold X MLBB, Mia Necklace, Eudora Bracelet, and Bundle UBS Gold Bar. As you said, Gunny, it's a very slow game. And I feel like the only instance where the both of the teams are fighting is the objective takes because Vin is always oh, never mind. Bravest fight, I mean divine judgment there utilized already, and he gets bursted down. Brands. This is what the 1-1 one -one can bring to the table, right? Maybe in terms of damage and that team fighting presence, it's been nerfed a bit. But that isolation is still there. When you get all the weakness points, everybody just scatters. Yeah, it's, and it's easier when Dreams is also in the lineup with Heijume too, trying to burst out anyone. And it's, it makes Dreams' job easier. The only target, all of them are viable. It's the frontliner that doesn't care. That's what they want to go for. Just burst on the frontliner and trying to get that crossbow tank going to other members of RR Kyoshi. So, Dreams, any target, he will, he will go for it. Now, opportunity looking for the flanks right now as Lemon jumps in onto Dreams with a split split. Dreams still saving the Divine Judgment and the Bravest Fighter gets popped into the back line onto Clay now, who's going to be forced to use the real world manipulation. The retreat battle can be won by Taz as Albert is nowhere to be seen there. Phantom execution to the back as well. Finn will be taken out. It's a 3-0, making a 4-0 with the Turtle Tank. Finn, 0-3-0 in RQ-05. This is definitely not looking Whoa. good for RQ. Could have been Lemon. We're going to get taken down with ease. Four members of EVOS ganking up on him. My goodness, EVOS legends, they picked things up quickly. They stepped on the gas here. Their pacing has been unstoppable. 6-0, 2,000 gold lead. With that play earlier, you can see that the disconnect again from the side of our Q Clay retreating top side. No one can really cover him. And now, already with the invades. Finn doing some oh damage now Lord. with the power of wildness. 0-3-0 zero, zero earlier, but it does not matter. Oh, oh he dodges away from the Phantom Execution. Putting out a whole lot of abilities. Now Albert on the chase with Lemon. On to Taz with a split split. Brand's going to be able to zone them away as Brand gets nullified here by the real world. Manipulation forced back away, but Captain Psychot is angry. Jumping in, never mind. It's RRQ who punishes him. Brands now looking for no. one more weakness point, but nothing will be given! In, up until the Whoa. end, Finn slays him before he can pop that crossbow of Tang. My goodness, right? I, as soon as I said the clear disconnect from side of RQ, suddenly, it's no Ghani, <laughs> no Ghani. You said that we it's were... the caster curse, you instantly. Know, let's, let's be in sync. And there you go, 2,000 gold uh -oh. already nullified, and now Vin jumps in. Say goodbye to Hijume, man. It's not even a trade here. Vin. Oh, Taz no, doesn't read it on. out. What? Taz. Oh, my God. Okay. What? <laughs> How did he not see that? Okay, but <laughs> Vin, from 0 0-0, 3-0 since. Vin, the hill topic is definitely working out as the game goes on. So he's going to get more beefed up and getting all the defensive items, especially that blade armor will do wonders against Brands and crew. Right now, Evos will still try to pick up pace with total take dreams. Man, they're trolling me. Exactly. 6 and 0 now, now in 6 and 5. Still, though, good. The gold favors Evos Legends just by a bit. And now, take a look at the setup here. Ben already providing vision, providing information. And with the setup, I feel like our Q will win the team fight. Crossbow Tang already ready right now, but a snipe does not connect. That means the Crossbow Tang is free onto the back. But Albert secures the turtle for his team. Only Vin taken down for Dreams. Both of the Roamers so far down. Evos Legends starting to lose control, but mm. they will be able to get the better trade in the end. Okay. You see what I mean there? 1-1 one, one easy, easy Crossbow Tang. As long as you have Dreams in your lineup, but Albert looking for fight. Toss will get the red buff. Oh, oh Hijume actually. Oh my god, already, right, with the change here from side of EVOS Legends after that turtle take, they were able to somehow take the mid, take the bot, and invade wow. the jungles. But RQ want compensation. Hijume now with wings by wings, trying to get out, but Albert, the assassin, jumps in. Brands, no crossbow tank, still able to escape right now. He pops it just as Lemon joins in, baiting Lemon into the turret, and this should just be a free kill. Psychon says, hey, I want the kill, give it to me. 
And he takes it just like that with the bravest fighter. I think I'm convinced that Lemon doesn't know the interaction between glue split split onto the crossbow tank. It kind of, it's pretty much a purify for you. The split split will go away, and you're not, you're no longer mounting on that one one, and you're gonna get deal on the damage instead. And it's under the turret, so it's everywhere possible. You're gonna lose. And to add to that, right, Albert has displayed a good assassin here with the emblem Master Assassin here. No longer the higher and draw it's called. It's gonna be called the Master Assassin. It seems like the passive is just nasty, but take a look at this damage. Clay instead deleted. Also, they're just following it up now. Brands, oh my goodness. With the Inspire, he got everything. Finn trying to play with the wall, but it's gonna be a free kill with the crossbow of Tang following through. Picking up a killing spree now for Brands. He's going wild, still going in on the Skyler as well. Evo's Legends, 2.4k gold lead. Oh, it's getting harder and harder for RQ to make plays. Remember, if Finn doesn't snowball, he doesn't get the item that he needed. It's gonna get worse for him because Brands will deal much more damage to him. It's gonna get easier for him to connect that crossbow tank towards other members of RRQ. And it's gonna be a free, a free Lord for EVOS. No contest whatsoever. A good setup there by the side of EVOS Legends, right? They took a look at Taz. He's basically uncatchable. And on the other side though, Albert, he can make the plays just, but because Taz has a Demon Slayer emblem, and he is building towards tank. It's just harder to somehow catch Ta uh, Taz in that sense, right? Whereas Albert, he's on the assassin emblem, the master assassin, to specify which assassin emblem. The Mas master assassin provides you one good 1v1s, but it's not tanky, you know? Gotta play the fast hands. And during neutral objective take, it's just very hard for side of EVOS Legends to somehow find a good opening. Even though they got Lemon, even though they have also um, Vin, but there's Kaja to always deflect the and deny the rotation. So again, a good trap there and good execution from side of RQ. With this Lord though, perhaps Evos Legends can just just fixate the their lead. It's strange. I feel like Evos Legends. There were a few moments where RQ were able to force that tempo, and that's exactly what they need to utilize. But that's why I also didn't really like the high booster pick. I said they needed more win conditions to play with, but still, picking up a Yeeve in the Season 11 playoffs yeah. hasn't just hasn't been too successful. I think he's sitting at a 11% win rate. Fix me, um, just try to correct me if I'm wrong there. But again, not successful at all in Season 11 playoffs. Why? Mobility. She is just stuck in lane. She's a turret in that mid lane. When the Farsight can roam, the Faramis, the Valentina, all these mid laners that are prio, why are they prio? Mostly that mobility, right? And here, if Evo Legends can engage first, find Clay, zone him away, the Kaja just absolutely counters her, right? All he needs to do is wait till the end or flank, and the Eve is stuck. And even if they get a good team fight, Evo Legends with their mobility, they can die from Psychots. And a die from Psychots with the bravest fight as well. We've seen that uh, against Clay there, just very desperate to pull off that real one completion to try to yeah. give a little bit of survivability. But in the end, he got taken down anyway in the first turtle, I believe, or in the top, uh, in the top side of the map turtle. So yeah, you you do have a point miracle there. And in terms of synergy with other members of RQ, it's weird, right? Hilda and Yeev, you know, it's a single target and an AOE damage. Also, Hayabusa doesn't really work out with Yeev too, so maybe that's also a problem for RQ to deal with. Evos though, their gold laner compared to Skylar. Skylar is 0-2-2 right now compared to Brantis 1-1. This is gonna be real hard for Skylar to actually get back into the game, but we're back into the game for Evos versus RQ. Still, 3k gold lead. Back where we left off. And Ghani here. I think I the Hilda was a bit too greedy too, no? I yeah. The Hilda was the sus pick actually, right? Because there are a lot of heroes open. I mean, 
Kaja itself was also open, but now with this Lord here, it's not enhanced though, but Dreams! Speaking of Kaja, just as you mentioned it, the crossbow tank will be popped in, forcing a flicker. Skyler now getting dove on by Taz, uh -oh. as Lemon flickers out as well. Everyone zoned away from the turret, and like I said, that mobility gets them out of the real world. Manipulation, like it's nothing. That immobility field doesn't even stop them. Man, that's sad, right? You built the Ice Queen one for... Uh, and you invest that Ice Queen Swan, but once you pop the um, real world relation, every member there was just able to escape that one with the wings by wings, with the dash as well. Lapu can pop the Bravest Spider if needed as well as a defensive maneuver. But now it seems like all tier twos runs at RRQ will officially be taken down. Ooh, damage from Skylar there is already evident, uh, is already there though, but. Is it a little bit too late? Is that a golden staff for 1-1 yes. here? Yeah? Classic France. He always goes for the golden staff on 1-1. I've, I've been asking almost everyone why the golden staff gets built by Brands, and it's only Brands. Well, I asked Aldo, and he said, you know, back in the day when uh, Brands built it, it was to try to, you know, outmaneuver the joy with the attack speed. Ooh. But yeah, it is still capped, you know, with the movement speed. I mean, with the, with the dashes built into the passive. Yeah, yeah, that's also... Um an option for you, but as I said that, every frontliner for RQ is no longer a front frontliner, right? Because it's an easy, easy food for Dreams to deal with. And I really don't see how EVOS uh, or RQ can come back from this unless all birds get creative, because Yif, his potential as a Jet Mirko, is very, very limited here. Compared to maybe, even in this kind of situation, I feel like a burst mage might be better uh, when you're losing this match, the Yif, the only thing that she can do right now is just to clear lane, clear lane, and trying to chew away all the members of EVOS Legends. But and anyway, like if they actually get shoot, there's still gonna be a lot of waves from a lot of lanes. So it's not just the only thing that she can do is just take care of a single lane. It's hard and harder. It's very hard, right? I mean, from the early game, um, it wasn't the keys to success that EVOS Legends they needed to control the early game, right? They need to somehow just just put a foot, put your, like, st stick your ground in that early game, which they did. They managed to execute that. Meanwhile, RQ, they need to disrupt the side of EVOS Legends, that early game that structured EVOS. They need to dismantle that. They need to somehow find the loophole, figure, oh. figure it out. But no, they weren't able oh, okay. to, okay? <laughs> I get there. A poker with a peekaboo. Yeah, I thought he was going to get mad or something yeah. there. We do have another pause. Ladies and gentlemen, please be patient with us. We are trying to troubleshoot the issue ASAP here. Remembering, fair play is our number one priority here in MPL Indonesia. Please give us some time to troubleshoot. We don't want the players to be playing with a disadvantage. Here, though, you're going to see our cameraman at work. Whoa! As Arashi said, there's crowd control in game, there's also crowd control in real life, and there it is. And if you're not here in in uh, GX4, you're missing out, man. Oh, is that an Al Nasser Ronaldo jersey? <laughs> oh man, wrong goat. <laughs> okay. Connie, Ronaldo or Messi? Ronaldo or Messi? Messi, of course. Bro. Okay. Who's the MLBB goat? Okay. MLBB goat? I mean, it's not really a, um, a debate, isn't it? MLBB or MPL go? MLBB go or MPL go? MLBB go, I think, yeah, it's not debatable. It's, it's two time. Yeah. The two time. Carl. Like, Mr. TZ. Even as Indonesian, you gotta give it to him, man. Like, there's no one else that has the same success as him. I think the only contenders for GOAT are all Filipino. It's <laughs> 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 B-Wise, Rebo, and Carl. Zeiss, this is the Benny code. might actually. Zeiss is also a two time world champion. <laughs> well, technically, yeah, but we're talking about the yeah. players, right? <laughs> oh, and most legends with that momentum behind them, that ISF trophy, that really has given them, I feel like, that championship mentality, Ghani. Not against Onik, obviously, because I don't know what the heck is wrong with Onik. <laughs> They're just too damn good. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, that was a perfect series, perfect game as well. And, man. Man, oh man, take a look at the, uh, again, crowd control from the side of the cameraman here, Chef, and anything stands out. Anything stands out? The fact that there's a lot of dates here, which I don't like. Why do you don't like dates? Stop single! Do you, do you not support 
dating? The only date that I know is the, the fruit date, the sweet date that you eat at Ramadan. This kind of date is Nana. Oh. oh, speaking of sweet, man. This guy had a sweet rank back in the day, 9,000 MMR. It was Sutsujin in the building with the MBL team, the whole team with Claw, Toma, everyone from the MDL roster. Oh, Try even Van Strong Claw. supporting. Giving support, but ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome you back to the Land of Dawn. It's still a 4K cooldown for EVOS Legend 7 to 11 in kill department. And it's gonna be real hard for RQ to manage that bottom lane because it's slow pushing the heck out of it. Three turrets available in the bot side for EVOS. For RQ, only one. Lemon will try to take care of it. Let's say, man, Dream's already poked down right now as Ven tries to utilize that mobility built in his kit. Saikon still waiting in the midst. Evo's Legends with more control, but Lemon now. Oh, Divine Judgment bringing Vin down. For that, as right comes down, the crossbow attack is going to be transferred over to Clay with the Bravest Fighter as well. You might as well say goodbye. The oh! steal, though, from Albert. If all else fails for RRQ, they can always rely on their golden boy. But it's only, it feels like it's delaying the inevitable. Lemon's going to be chased down. Evo's Legends will be able to take him out. And, and it literally is Albert versus everyone. Endable? Oh. Albert, will he be able to defend? 4,000 gold lead built up for Five Evo's seconds. Legends. Albert with the quad shadow and the shadow kill. Not going to be able to clear out the minion wave in the mid lane. But the Lord bit. spawns up top. They can force it here, oh. but Evo's Legends decide to go and clear the Lord. A very good shadow kill there is to somehow eliminate the uh, minions mid side. But this Lord here that was stolen away it will just be a free Lord. Evo's Legends with the clear and sharp team fight. Let's see what happened here, right? Albert here, wait for the right timing, but Dreams. the two heroes whoa, 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 there's a fight. Friendly and friendly. Oh my god, there's a fight. Clay takes down Dreams. And, but yeah, Albert, good steal. But again, the disconnect during team fights is just... Yeah, or Q, they were just scattered there. And of course, Evos Legends will definitely capitalize on that. Wait, what happened? Prance died. Yeah. Brenner shot now onto Taz. Lemon with the split split, zoning him away from the purple buff that Albert's going to be able to take. Evos Legends have completely lost their gold lead here. The tier two is getting taken left and right. It's down to only 2k, 1k even now. Still 1k, but the map pressure is still on Evos Legends. Still three turns on the top, uh, in the mid side, but Taz might be looking to defend this. No. They're gonna let this go because it's just way too risky. Very risky, right? And Beatrix, though, here almost on his way towards his last item. So with the BOD, with the Malefic Roar, and with the Nature here, he is able. Look and at Brands. Looking for it to just dominate here. But Brands, yeah, Corrosion, DHS, Golden Staff, Wind Talker already. His attack speed is gonna be very, very crazy. Albert here opening up, will not commit on towards anything. Oh, I don't know about yet. that. Let's Let's see. See. Again, again, Lemon. Lemon. Yeah, he jumps in the split split. Oh, he flickers out. A good bait. Now, as Vin jumps into the back line now, onto Brands, who's forced to pop the Inspire, trying to run away right now with Divine Judgment, locking him down. Psychots and Taz, for the world. Albert losing out a lot of his HP pool. Psychots going to fall as well. So he flickers forward. Oh, Skylar oh. will fall to the Magic Warship. Clay now running away from Taz, who's still going to be able to utilize the base damage within the Lancelot kit to take him low. Evo's Legends still utilizing this lead that they have to keep on pushing. Lemon, again. Every hero that he's in is very, very reactive, but the calculated, calculated part is just not there. Going in with a slam slam pass pass combo, the dash is not there, and that's a free, free crossbow tank for Brands. He has to somehow tone it down, and he has to. Good retribution, though, from Albert, right? With the timing there, taking the purple buff away. But I do see the point of uh, Lemon, though. He wants to bait the crossbow or Tang. But unfortunately, the follow-up wasn't there. The Lord will be taken away with the information that Albert used the retry on that purple buff. It's going to be a free Lord for the side of Evo's Legends. And looking at this current situation here, RRQ, if they don't lose, they don't lose any member. I feel like they are still able to defend this one. They definitely still, but... Oh, maybe that's the plan here, Gone. Yeah, you're right. The only thing that can tank that crossbow tank is Lemon. So Lemon will go in first and try to somehow eliminate the crossbow tank. And once that's uh, that's gone, you can just collapse. Albert, Skylar, Clay, very, very squishy. So 1-1 is definitely a big threat. 
and probably that's the only way for RQ to win fights. Let's see. Castor dealt with already though, Divine Judgment. Gonna be able to lock Vin down right now. It's Alper jumps into the back line, but the Wind of Nature has been built up by Brands. Lemon in the midst of it all right now. The crossbow tank is ready as Taz gets out of the damage coming down from the side of RRQ. Lemon can be slain. Alper though in the back now. Able to find the kill onto Brands with the shadow kill now onto Dreams. One for one, gold lane for XP. So far, way more worth it for Evos, or for RRQ, actually. Taz will be spotted. But a good defense, right? Lemon for Brands, I feel like that's worth it. And to add to that, RQ, they managed to take down the Lord. Again, looking at the composition of the items here, right? Ice Queen one, Glowing one here. But this time, Yves, usually we don't really see a lot of Enchanted Talisman, right? Throughout the regular season. But it seems like now, he builds it, right? He wants to spam his items. Looking at the current situation now, again, Brands now, I feel like he needs to respect her. He needs to sell one of the items that he has and somehow just build the a good either either anti heroes or radiant armor. I feel like here might work or immortal because he needs that extra life to just secure his side. One and point one point eight thousand gold lead though ex established. It seems like an, a very, very balanced game now. Sure, turret-wise, it's still favoring our, our EVOS Legends. But with one team fight, if and only if RRQ may find the right hoop hole and EVOS Legends suddenly blunders, it can just... This game could end with RRQ getting that first game. Interesting Definitely. here, like 4-1-4 four, four, EVOS Legends there. Toss will take care of the top lane. Uh, top lane minions, but Lord is also on top lane. Let's see, will EVOS Legends trying to abuse the fact they have more pressure on the map? And yeah, there you go, like Dreams and Brands camping on there, trying to get a weak side pickoff when Taz actually goes for the Lord. Let's see if RRQ reads this one out. Who's tasked with clearing out the far lane? It has to be Albert with his mobility, right? So it does leave RQ a bit vulnerable to these commitments. Evo's Legends have also built up a massive wave down below that's going to be crashing down into the base, setting up for a possible split push, trying to utilize the forced error. I think at this point, Evo's Legends can't afford to lose a 50-50. They can't afford to take a 50-50. With the map pressure they have, they need to utilize it. Take a look at the positioning for Dreams here already with the somehow set up to find the counter setup. And both Hayabusa and Beatrix here. They know. They will uh, just clear safely in their base. But this is the signal to give the green light for Toss to commit to the Lord. Lemon is on Nylon. He is. He is in the flanks right now, but it does just give every single weakness point over to Brands. They're still going at it. Lemon might actually just fall here, but he pops in a split split. He gets out. Now Albert going to be engaged on. He's baited into the squad. Psychot's going to be able to find a stun onto two members. Estaz is still looking for the Retribution, jumps in now. It's a 50-50, who wins it? It's gonna be Brands, who takes it away for Evo's Legends. Albert gonna be forced to back away, but he jumps back in onto Brands. Not able to find a kill just yet, Ooh. as his immortality will be popped in. Taz as well, doing the same thing. Brands buying the immortality just in time. Skyler flickers forward to get some damage down. Brands will be slain. Evo's Legends have taken too much, and RRQ punish. Evo's did not utilize the Lord. Maybe I'm taking my horse back on it. That reactive play from Lemon might be the way to go. As you can see there, once the crossbow tank is gone, like Grants versus Skylar is just free real estate. The basic attack is just way too much for 1 1 to handle. And once you don't have that win of nature, it's gonna be real easy for RQ to snowball. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you, RQ. They didn't get the Lord, but they finally find the good opening to set up a fight. And Evos Legends now. They gave away the Lord. Base turret top side here, very vulnerable. But it seems like with Psychots, will they be able to defend? They will not. not. Star base turret number one here falls. Fords out of EVOS Legends. So a very good response. We got a game on our hands. Item-wise again here, nothing much of a difference. Full build attack here by Albert, right? With the true damage, with the hep to seize and Malefic Roar. There's going to be spiciness from that penetration and also that Hunter Strike, right? But looking at the side of Wan Wan, again, I expect him to sell one of his items to somehow build either the Immortal or 
the winners, but I feel like Immortal was on cooldown. Yeah, right. Immortal was, was on, on cooldown. cooldown. And once you have that Wind of Nature, like, this kind of items, it only works if it's your, you need it, right? Stat-wise, it's not incredible. So Immortality, Wind of Nature, with the Touch and those kind of items, you want to have that at the last moment possible. Like, that's the efficient way to play that. But of course, these are humans. Like, you cannot be just... All of these guys are not Kyrie. <laughs> <laughs> so Kyrie's not human. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. After seeing his item swap yesterday, I think it's crazy. But here, Brands, I, I feel like no. Just Evo's legends there in that team fight, Gani. That team fight shouldn't have been a team fight. They got the Evo board. Yeah. Board. RQ managed to pull an alter ego on towards um, Evo's there. They were the ones on the Evo's side. Alter ego for RQ after getting the Lord to, to fight now was RRQ taking something out of Alter Ego's books. 3,000 gold lead now for RRQ, but at this point, the gold lead really doesn't matter, right? We're, we've entered a point where yep. everyone has full items, but the map pressure certainly still plays a massive part, and Evo's Legends still have an advantage on that front, with the mid lane and the bottom lane base turret taken down. RRQ, very minimal ways to control the waves here, and also, because they have a glue, they have to send their jungler or even their marksman over to clear bottom lane. Why is Blue not, 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 not an option? Why not an option here, Mirko? Like, I feel like Blue is definitely the right way to go because you have the split fit, you have the flicker, you can just play, uh, oh, oh. you can just bail you out of any kind of danger. Average very low, man. Power of Wildness, though, to the back. Brand's still gonna be able to sustain back up in. Very close to dying there, but the Raven's Fighter comes Everyone. down. Phantom Execution in the back line as well. But all the Prio targets are still alive for the side of RQ. Alfred gonna be able to jump back and forth to get Skyler the kill. Taz for a lemon. Jungle for XP. No frontliner for RRQ. But Evo's legends have lost their main way to fight for the Lord. This is what I this is what I mean right about Lemon. Yeah, he's very, very unpredictable, but the way he plays, he's not afraid to trade himself with another person, and that is what happened there. He somehow distract and focus to make Evo's Legends side focus on him. Meanwhile, Taz there was caught in the front side, and he is gonna be taken down now. Evo's though, will delay the Lord take. Vin now, targeted. Dream still holding on to Divine Judgment. Look at that, isolating RRQ, Vin. All alone, flickering out. Psychops trying to chase him down, but well played by Vin. Wow. He gets out. The render shot, even chunking Psychops half HP. But look at the base. This is what that map pressure, this is what those objectives oh really my. are able to give to Evo's legends. The forced error is being built up, and Evo's will control the Lord Pit once again with Brands jumping in all the way. Weakness points all popped in. Winter Truncheon bought in time. Clay flickering only to get stunned down as he Vin gets taken down. Psychops with the Bravest Fighter there. Brands selling. The item getting the immortality, side cost flickering out. It's still anyone's game here in the 50 50. But Alberto is still 2 0 10. It's incredible how he has not died yet with this kind of composition, with this kind of, you know, Kaja. There's a lot of threat there that you have to realize when you're playing this kind of assassin. It's really, really vulnerable. But he plays this assassin to the utmost perfection, getting the Lord still, getting all the, some of the turtles available. But this is a tough job to do as Evos will secure the Easy Lord. Yeah, RQ, they see zero openings there to somehow contest for that Lord. Uh, whether they like it or not, they will be forced onto a defense, looking at the situation that the base is quite exposed. And item-wise, uh, not a lot of Immortals in hand here. I feel like a lot of Immortals were still on cooldown for side of our RQ. That's not a good sign, man. Evos Legends, they are perhaps can ex somehow exploit that fact, right? Looking at the Immortals here, they have four active Immortals from inside of Evos Legends, so they don't mind here. Go in, jump in with the Lord, force RRQ onto a fight, and then focus down the Lord. Meanwhile, RRQ, they need to think twice when engaging. Well, you have to realize, though, Gunny, it's a 1 1. So, Winter Traction is way better than Immortality in this case, but Lord Siege coming for Evos. It's an Evolved Lord this time. Damage reduction all around for the players as they go and build up a three wave push. Lemon in the midst. Feather airstrike zoning the other members away in the back line as Albert tries to do the same, but he won't be able to do so. Winter Truncheon gonna be there, right there with the Divine Judgment. He's made by the Immortality to survive just a bit longer. He doesn't get the Winter Truncheon in time. Lemon in the midst of it all.
well. This dash giving the damage coming down. Brand with the crossbow with Tang as well. Onto Vin. Brand still able to survive. Kiting Albert away. Popping his immortality and doing some damage in the process. The Winter Truncheon gets bought now by Albert. Is he oh, still going to be able to survive? My God. Well played. RRQ. They fight to see no another And Albert jumps in once again with the Quad Shadow. Skyler, Skyler picks a kill up. How? How did what? they manage to pull off that defense? What a defense from the Kings of Kings! My goodness, again! They just took care of the Lord Hannah. Wins the team fight, Sky Cuts, Hijume. Now they might go for the end. Remember, 30 seconds on Hijume. They might go for the collapse here, 4v3. Watch out for Dreams, though. He has a good position there. We'll try to get someone to take into uh, that Krobos crossbow tank, but. Real world completion. Brands Rage popped in and split split as, as well. Buying the time right now for Brands. He's still waiting for the crossbow tank and pop it right now. His Lemon's immortality will be popped in. Taz, he will have his immortality popped as well. Mid lane gonna be pushing in. Skyler looking for the kill, but a Thorn Rose binds him a little bit more time. Brands looking to clear the wave. Skyler just focuses down on the base, but Dreams has come back oh. and he will be able to zone RRQ away. Evos with the defense as well. One base turret left for Evos, zero for RRQ. 28 minute game. Remember, oh. the longest game of MPL ID season 11 was 32 minutes. It's also RRQ versus Evos, so they're picking up where they left off, Ghani. The crowds are hype, the casters are hype, and I'm sure you guys at home, you guys are hyped as well. And let's take a little bit look here at the instant replay, right? This defense here, real world relation was key. Take a look at the, oh my God, Albert was just popping off window. Good clutch, winner's crunch in there again to nullify the crossbow of Tang. And that is what set the tone for RRQ there. The resources that I personally thought were lacking it was actually they got the better mechanically. They got uh, better uh, of the EVOS Legends mechanically, right? EVOS Legends, they were a little bit too hasty uh, on the execution there. And take a look at now, that's another reset. Sure, the base turrets of RRQ all gone right the top standing left earlier was taken down now oh my god vin needs to be careful here lord is up here again it's just a matter of macro and a matter of patience and you gotta give it to albert man in terms of what he can do as a hayabusa in this kind of composition he's done it all kda 3 0 10 perfect and the defense there in terms of like when you want a defense, you want, you want to have a sustain. You want to have this kind of heroes that can take all the damage, soak in all the damage to prolong the wave clear for your team. But in this case, it's Albert with the Hayabusa. How? How is this guy doing this? It's insane what he's doing, man. He's making some magical plays happen. You think maybe Skyler and Clay will take that carry role in the later stage, but it's so far been Albert. He's the one making and targeting the right members in these fights. Sure, Skyler and Clay does more damage, but they're merely targeting the front line. What's winning them the game, what's winning them the, the team fights has been Albert. I agree, right? I mean, 3010 to his name. Item-wise, very, very uh, confident as well. Full item still has no change there. Uh, perhaps he will do a little bit switcheroo with the Immortal here, but now, already, the cooldowns of that Immortal from instead of RQ is already active, right? Clay, Immortal, uh, Vin Ooh. also Immortal, but Vin, oh my god! Uh oh, Immortality, gonna be popped in, DREAMS is gonna be able to find the Divine Judgment onto Clay! No follow-up though, and this might be disastrous! Look at the back line, Albert gonna be able to find the, the damage to give Clay the kill! Taz looking for the back line himself, but will be forced to use a puncture to escape. Lemon still surviving, but will be slain in the end by Brands. Psychots for Vin and Lemon. Evos Legends, once again, they prevail in this trade. And this is a perfect opportunity to get the Lord for Evos Legends. Grand speaking of the immortality, Albert has to pull off an absolute miracle if he actually wants to steal this. But it's a three squishy members for RRQ. There is just no way in hell they want to go for this unless, oh, they want to gamble. Oh, I'm not too sure about this, man. I mean, they have to pull the trigger at some point. That's the feathered airstrike baited out. It's all yeah, no way. in Albert's hands. Will he be able to make the miracle play? The answer is no. They give it up. They decide they want to try to defend. This is going to be another Lord. How many Lords have we had in this game? Uh, Six, no? Yes. Five plus, yeah, plus one. Oh my God. 
<laughs> well, there you go. The Lord is just way too much. And right now, Lemon and Vin is still not available. Evos, this might be it, Erko. This might be it. Vin and Lemon still down. Three of the four. Albert going to be popping the Quad Chatter. Divine Judgment locking Clay down as the damage comes through for Evos to lead the series 1 and 0. Oh. Wow. The first game, 32 minutes. 32 minutes. So if you're worried about having a boring, boring series, no way in hell. It's RQ versus Evos. What are you thinking? It's El Clasico. It's a top notch game with a lot of micro plays especially from this guy, Albert, but unfortunately, he was not able to carry RQ to victory. He's done all he can, but Evo Sledge is still triumph in the end. No words needed there. Half an hour of gameplay, a very um, intense one as well. But Evo's Legends, they were the ones who were more disciplined. They were the ones who were more um, sharper in that game with that composition it was just a um, tough hill to battle for RRQ already because they were the ones behind in that early game right after that it was legends they were just sustaining control but with Vin and Lemon taken down in that last fight it was just GG straight push free lord and free game free push to end the game well, in that game, it's definitely harder to execute for RQ, right? They have to somehow get the crossbow tank out of the way, as I said earlier, over and over again, and try to win fights when it's not available. As you can see there, there are some instances where RQ does win the team fight once Lemon and Vin bait it out, but it takes a lot of micro skills. It takes a lot of luck to, to actually pull that off. Man, like the Winter Truncheons, like all over the place for RQ, but it's just all for naught as they as they, as they get second down in the first game. Wow, again, what a game. 32 minutes to start us off. And like we mentioned before, what they have to build with now, winning a 32 minute game, very high morale for Evo's Legends. Losing a 32 minute game, it that's might a bit hit, tough. It might hit you though. It might it hit you. Might, it might. might. Well, they're pro players, Sheffin, all right? I mean, they got the round zero, two. I mean, EVOS Legends, they were down 0 and 2. If they don't have right. that mentality, man, it was a 3 and 0. But again, it's, I believe in RQ, they are able to reset here. But it was a um, very, very tough battle, right, for RRQ, especially realizing that they were the ones who were uh, struggling to find an answer in that game. Only slight glimpses in that game that they were somehow able to find the comeback. But the timing weren't just right for inside of RRQ. When they were ahead, there was no lore to play around with. Meanwhile, when EVOS Legends, they were able to take uh, a couple of members from inside of RRQ down, Lord was there to be played around with. Discipline team fights here overall that were that made EVOS Legends the better team in that game. I must say, the deserving team won that game. Why? Because he was EVOS Legends' um, checklist. Uh, the kicks keys to success. They were able to protect brands in the early game. They were able to set the tempo, their own pacing, right? Meanwhile, RQ, they got driven a little bit by the side of EVOS Legends. Their game plan was to give Albert on the assassin. You needed to target that Farsa. But in that early game, we see no real pressure, the killing pressure in that early game. Why? Because I feel like for the most part, dreams, man. This guy, again, regular season, I got to say, a good roamer, just a good roamer here, dreams. But solid in the roamer. playoffs, very, yeah, very solid, very, I don't want to say mediocre, but a very good, reliable roamer, right, dreams. But in the playoffs, man, he shines. Give him the Kaja, he will shine. Take a look at the items as well. It's yeah, it's item-wise, nothing much because a lot of changes, but Dreams, man, 20 assists to his name in this game. That's massive, right? His fleeting time comes into clutch. And I gotta say, I mean, Hijume providing a lot of plays as well, facilitating tempo as well. Captain Saikots here on the Lapu. I gotta say, Silent here, very uh, it's reliable. Just reliable, very great performance. Taz. 
very solid. That is why James just shines most here. He knows when to cover for his mid laner. He knows when to cover for the side of that gold lane. But I gotta give props to Albert O as well here. I, I know they lost that game, but zero deaths on that game. That was impeccable. As an assassin. All right, and it was just uh, impeccable mechanics that were given. But let's talk about the good team, the team, all right? Feather, Airstrike, and Divide Junch combo. Take this note, guys. Nasty combo, all right? You need to draft these two heroes on rank because it provides you a lot of cover, a lot of uh, good AOE and a single lock target. And remember, that kill, that nasty pull, Divide Judgment, can be insta-kill. So, ladies and gentlemen, learn from side of Evolve's Legends. This combo can be can win you games, you know? Uh, just a very simple one, pull and then feather airstrike. To your MM, to your mid, doesn't really matter. But Dreams, again, good positioning to facilitate their team. EVOS Legends were able to just win that game quite Whoa. very, very um, somehow cleanly in a sense, right? Very um, structured again. But take a look at the GPM. <laughs> of course, it's gonna be Albert here on that losing side. But Brands deals the most damage, almost 200,000. Take a look at Vin, Vin though. Out of the 460,000 damage dealt from side of EVOS Legends, Vin took 326,000 damage there. So more than half, almost, oh my God, that's a lot, right? 20 assists for the side of Dreams. That was a good class L Classico here. A uh, very intense one, right? Action-packed, but also there's brains to it. There's layers to it. And that is what I like. Uh, perhaps from inside of RRQ, what they can improve on is just give a hero, just uh, give another hero for Vin. I feel like, sure, Hilda works. I see the goal, but I do prefer on that draft to give Vin the Kaja instead. Kaja was still available at that point, right? Dreams picked it up. Well, EVOS Legends picked it up at that last game. I would prefer perhaps give Kaja on towards Dreams, or if not, Helda, mm, it's a little bit hit or miss, right? 10 deaths there. Early game, I get your point, but late game, Vin was just there to die. I feel like even early game, I kind of don't get the Hilda. I feel like yeah. the Hilda was literally picked to deny it away from EVOS Legends because they wanted the Hayabusa. Because they were up against the tanks a lot. I don't think you're going to be able to fully bully the tanks a lot with proper winning lane in the mid lane too. They had a Farsa and a Kaja. Better mid control. So they're always going to be rotating faster towards yep. the invades. Exactly. And this is going to be your MVP here. Brands, the king of marksmen, again, displaying. This is what I like from side of Evo Engines as well, right? Remember. Brand Z. Brand Z, the, the, the central, <laughs> yeah. They just like <laughs> brand second centric was the word. Yesterday, remember, against Onyx, the first two games, they opted for the hero brands the in that hero. second phase, Quad right? Quad one one ban. Usually exactly. second phase, they then they pick up the hero for brands. They instantly adjusted in that game three, but at that point it was a little bit too late. So in this current match, they adjusted. They will secure a hero for one one for brands rather in that first phase, and then the rest. And I like that adjustment. It worked for them, right? MVP, 1-1, one, one, sure, with the adjustments a little bit off, but the king of marksmen definitely can make it work. Yeah, I think 190k. Yeah. 190k is insane, but also Albert 824. It's a 30-minute game, everybody. So there's going to be a lot of time, downtime where Albert does nothing and just waits for an opportunity to strike in. So 824 is actually quite an insane number for an assassin jungler at that point of stage. But Brands though, man, like, yes, he played good, but the thing is, it's dreams and the target is just coming at you. So it makes sense where you get that 190k damage from. So I think they should highlight other player other than Brands. I don't know. For that MVP? Yeah. I feel like I feel like there were uh, some candidates, other candidates. I, yeah. I personally felt like Dreams, Dreams really yeah, exactly. deserved that MVP there. But obviously, okay. we're going to take a look at the highlights again. Maybe we didn't see a few things, right? Maybe Brands did make these crazy moments happen, aside from just waiting for Dreams, going for the Divine Judgment. Well, he deals uh, the more damage. But again, we are seeing the 
initiation, we are seeing just divine judgment here from the side of EVOS Legends, right? Again, a good zone from the side of EVOS Legends here. Minute number 13 and still, still a very back and forth. But this is the one that the disconnect that I feel like still from side of RQ. They managed to turn it around though. But for the most part, because Ooh, that of that early, bird. that mid. No, it's the bird. Very good. <laughs> All That's right. The Crimson Crow. Yeah. But it's, again, after five lords. So technically, RRQ, they managed to defend five this lords. Insane. This is was, oh my god. You, 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 this was you, an Albert. This was Albert Abob. Albert Abob, indeed. But where, this is the mistake here from side of EVOS Legends, unfortunately. With Lemon and as well as Vin taken down. 60 seconds on the death timer there wasn't too fun. Lord was there to play around with. Even without the Lord, they can force a collapse 5v3. Unfortunately for the side of RRQ, they need to say concede and get four game one. Well, it's not the end of the, the word, of course. Like, still 1 0. We've it's the best seen of five. how Evos can come back from 2 0, man. Like, but you gotta shout out the phone that they're using, the phone that Albert has been using to pull off those, those plays. Winter Truncheon, that infamous Winter Truncheon mislip. <laughs> Boom, bang, bada bing. Oh, not the mislip. <laughs> not the mislip. That one, okay. right? The mislip. I was using another phone, not the Samsung. Oh, you're right. You're actually right. So yeah, it's Samsung S23 Samsung buff. 5G, the fastest professor, processor, I'm sorry, technology. <laughs> <laughs> With 4 nanometer Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 4 Galaxy. Large RAM up to 12 gigabytes. Memory up to 1 terabyte. Yes, 1 terabyte. You're hearing that right. The screen is dynamic. AMOLED 2, 2X with 120 hertz refresh rate and also a battery of 5000 mAh. One terabyte. I still can't get behind it. Like, what wow. the heck? It's that small. It's in a phone. One terabyte in the base model, my dude. You know, best phone. It just, best it phone. just goes to show you that it might be small, but it holds something, man. It holds something. And you know what, right? Yesterday, you notice. Know what? There was two Samsung S1, right? Because it was the A series there, right? A series. But no, because the one is right here. It's it's, it's, oh. it's mine. It's mine, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. Level up your epic game with Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Buy it now on where? Samsung.com slash ID, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. It's a good phone. It's an awesome phone. You can play ranks with it. You can do anything with it. And also get an epic Ramadan promo up to 2 million rupiah in trade and purchases or with Galaxy wearables. Go yeah. ahead and check it out. I mean, there's so many new promos, there's so many cashbacks, it's practically free. Free. <laughs> right? I wouldn't say free, but there's a lot of bonuses, ladies and gentlemen, that you guys can get. Speaking of bonuses, I think EVO's Legends have got a massive bonus because not oh. only did they win, but they won in 32 minutes. That gives them so much more morale, so much more confidence to step in to game number two, where for RRQ, I would say it all started in the drafts. The draft really set up RRQ for failure, in my opinion, all right? But you guys, you know, you can learn from that. You can learn and set you guys up yourselves for success with Sinopolis. Get yourself only the best quality when you go out to watch movies. Wow. Yeah. If you're not uh, if you're not able to come here to G-Expo, you can also still watch it on theater in Sinopolis. So MPL ID is holding a live streaming event at Sinopolis ID theaters. For those who couldn't make it to G-Expo, you can still watch MPL ID Season 11 at Sinopolis Pajatan Village. Southern Village. Watching the matches on the big screen with Dolby Atmos Audio, it makes it possible to scream along with fans and loved ones. So, scream out in Sinopolis. Scream it's out. It also has the, the, that, that audio that all around you. Whoa. Okay, okay. 7.1, Donnie. Very sexy voice, Shepin, right? Ladies and gentlemen, check it out for Sinopolis, all right? And on that note, we got the theater, we got the phone. I need somewhere to buy the groceries. Oh, where Tell it him. is, where Tell it him, is. Tell them, Tell them. in Indomart, and Whoa. Indomart has Indomart Poinku. It's a membership that? application uh -huh. that provides benefits for every okay, shopping okay. at Indomart. What kind of benefits? Yeah, by becoming a Poinku member, you can get a cashback points for every oh, purchase. Okay. Yeah, well, so every time you buy something, you're going to get more money 
to buy in Inomart 2. So what are you waiting for if you like Inomart, if you've go if you've gone to Inomart quite frequent and also going to Point Coffee and Inomart 2 also uh, always use Point Coo every time you're making a purchase. There's also free products and exclusive gifts that you guys can get. Various other attractive promos as well. For those of you who watch in MP Arena as well, there's a booth right outside that you guys can go and buy. Whether you want coffee, whether you want snacks or anything, you guys can find it in Indomart. It has anything you could ever wish for. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I found You're the welcome, solution, all right? Johnny. I need groceries, but then I will gain more benefits Boom. with the app. That's and I get caffeine. Wow, that's a deal, deal and deal. That's, that's a, triple a triple deal. deal. Triple D, right? And later, ladies and gentlemen, game two will start soon. Again, I expect the adjustments from side of RRQ to just be more um, solid, right? In the early game, we didn't really see that the unity, the chemistry wasn't really there. Thankfully, they were able to recollect themselves, right? In that mid game, in that late game, they were able to regather and then fight glimpses. I saw that chemistry, right? That wasn't clear in that early game. Whereas, Evos Legends, what do they need to change perhaps to surprise RRQ? Well, perhaps they should have the Melissa. Remember, it was not picked that for game. RRQ? For both. Yeah, but do you think RRQ should pick it up? I, I don't, think, don't so. think so. I think, uh, no, Evos. The adjustments for Evos. They should pick it up for rounds, no? I think in that particular game, it would be very hard for the Melissa oh. to, you know, pop off. It's so, the dream combo, right? Like the mm -hmm. Divine Judgment, the Federal Air Strike. No, no, for Evos. Oh. They, they picked the 1-1, one, one, right, over the Melissa. Yeah, that's why, yeah. What I mean is, like, it's an easy crossbow tank every time you use the Divine Judgment. Because and of Blue. Yeah. Because of Kaja, too. Because of Kaja. If it's Melissa, like, it, it does work, but it doesn't work as good Effective. as the 1-1, one, one, I guess. I do see your point. Well, let's see here. Uh, they need to somehow um, adjust as well. Well, a good and sharp game from EVOS Legends. Sure, there were mistakes, there were blunders a little bit there, here and there. But overall, because they already established a very, very strong early game and uh, that mid game, it was uh, very hard for side of RRQ to turn the game around. They were the ones who just struggled to find that their winning condition. Whereas, again, that nasty combo, right? Divine Judgment and as well as Feather Airstrike as well to help the kill, to help the zone. It was their scholar here. He is the man on the hot seat, right? Yesterday against Alter Ego is heavily focused on this. Uh, and today, no different. It's hard, man. Like, Skylar, Beatrix needs, you know, it needs setup. And the way they set it up is trying to load all the slows from that real manipulation. But the thing is, you are, you have Hayabusa, you have Hilda, which doesn't really work out with Beatrix. It doesn't really work as well. But we can see here Evo spending out the, the Fanny and Joy. So we really don't like the mobility, potential mobility from Albert and crew. Okay, there you go. Or the swapping sides too, right? With the Fanny and the Joy ban this time around, coming from the first pick. Still, it's now very different to what we saw in the regular season. Usually, one one and Joy, the Pryo heroes like the Joy, gets banned out by the second phase, by the red side. Now it's always blue side for this series. Well, it does shows that uh, the Joy pick might be uh, backfiring here, right? As you can see there, Luke kind of forcing the. Uh, the joy pick inside the glue just because of the <laughs> priority, your just because of how good the matters. joy is in the game. But if you don't have a good synergy with your teammates in that hero department, it's gonna be hard to execute. And if it's not your comfortable hero, that's the bigger thing to, uh, that's the bigger issue to, um, you know, think about. It doesn't work. It's not gonna work. It might not work, indeed, right? RRQ, though, asking they need to somehow. Um, ask themselves here, what will you let go? Um, a lot of heroes still in Pryo here. Faramis can be an option actually here. Without the Valentina, Evos Legends. Wait, Claude is not bad. Not Claude, yet. Not yet, right? Also a very good hero that should be um, somehow discussed. <laughs> within the power. Kaja, RRQ, asking a question. Hey, Skylar, it's been a while since you um, played Claude. Are you, uh, you want to first pick Claude, though? Rans. Yeah, because 
Do you Arc, hold you on knows. to? Ark, you knows that Claude is definitely the right way to go for... Not the right way to go in, in the sense that we, Brands really likes to play the Claude and Ark, you knows that he wants Brands to pick the Claude and kind of counter it. Just like, I believe, which game was it? I forgot. They know that a hero is gonna pick, gonna get picked, and they know how to counter it. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Introducing my buddy. That's it. Wow. They actually go for it. Yeah. There you go. Definitely. The current S tier gold laner in Claude has been picked. Let's see which is which hero is the counter in lane. Brody usually or the carry can do pretty well. I don't think they want to pick it up first here. They go for the red turn, the far sub first. Two solid heroes that are left open. Pryo playing with it. A good solid hero here. It seems like RQ with the fast response. So they already expected the Claude pick, of course, here. And with the Feather Airstrike, of course, it can somehow munch and chunk the HP of the side of uh, Claude. But have we seen a Lemon Fredrin? No, right? Don't we think haven't. so, we haven't. I guess a good counter for this Claude is actually the Akai. We have, right? we have seen Lemon with the Fredrin. Really? I believe but he didn't I, win. Did he? I, wait, did he? I, 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 it was from a DJY video and he actually uses the Melody no, more of the Fredrin, that's why I, I, I remember he's actually Which using Fredrin, but it's the Yuzhong ISF, it's Psychots with the Dragon and also Yi, pretty much the only you know, viable option available for that mid lane option. So, yeah. Yeah, it's the IISF composition, right? Heave, also the winning roster, winning hero for side of EVE Boss Legends during ISF. Hijume was just unstoppable at that event. RQ, though, with this in mind, what Adida? will they go for? Perhaps they might actually secure a carry here. If not the carry, I don't really mind the Brody. Brody does, you know, Find it's very difficult to pull off a Brody against uh well really depends if honestly the Brody works here. They can play with the killing pressure hey, with the Farsa the proof in the I'm mid lane. It can really amplify that killing pressure in lane and Brody will be able to completely bully Claude. But RQ will need to set their sights into the gold lane. They need to build on this, maybe possibly even doubling down on it mm. in the second phase. But against Yu Zhong and Yiv though, like this kind of heroes is nightmare for Brody to deal with. The second skill is just not enough. Pretty much an instant real world manipulation is a flicker burn for this guy. Let's see if Brass, if Skylar will be able to do the job versus Hijime and crew. Let's see, let's see second phase. They should limit the option for dreams. They're going to Atlas and ban here. It so I expect the Atlas are. and the Franco perhaps can be banned out for the side of RQ. Meanwhile, EVOS Legends, same question. Are you going to limit... um? The option for Vin is it gonna be will we see a Kaja ban perhaps here? And realizing that now RQ will have that first, first phase. First phase, Kaja ban. First phase. Oh, yeah, you're right, Kaja has been banned. So hey, Evos Legends, the will they ban the Franco? I expect the RQ to ban the Franco, but it's gonna be Evos Legends here. They will ban the Franco, so RQ should somehow Thorns now change remain. his focus, Your perhaps ban out the jungler. I was about to say, the jungler ban should come through. There you go, Lancelot. I think it's going to be a Grok ban or a Kadira ban for EVOS. Kufra, that, perhaps. Yeah, oh, yeah. Kufra is very... Uh, it's a comfort hero for Vin. He's been pulling up some crazy stuff with that hero, but... I feel like Grok and Katira works better against this kind of composition with Claude and Yujong coming at you, or maybe Katira with the dive in towards that real world manipulation. But the thing is, with Katira, you want you might want to have a synergy, like someone that can actually lock someone, especially that Claude. But Kaja is gone, Franco is gone, so that's why I feel like it's gonna be Grok ban. It might be a rock ban or it I might be to my Kufra, right? It's going to be the right Kufra gone. here, ban out. So, again, EVOS Legends somehow asking Vin a question. What are you going to play here? Perhaps that Grok can be now the, the, yeah, the only option available here. And <laughs> EVOS Legends has already an answer for that Grok, right? We all know what it is going to be. It's going to be the Diggy, right? So, a very good... Uh, Force there from side of Evos Legends. <laughs> pick up the Grog. Oh, pick up your the no, RRQ with the reverse psychology. They know that Dreams will most likely pick up the big diggy. They will pick up the pick it up themselves. Question is, do they want to go for the Hilda now, Evos? If oh. they really want to stomp on the diggy, if they want to force the My time God. journey, they need to get a little bit more aggression in the early game to try to you know 
Tank Shut the Diggy down technically, right? Make force him to do, force him to pop that time journey. What are the heroes here are possible for Evo Sledges to take? Like you said, the Croc, but I don't think you want to nope, double down nope. on CC. Estes perhaps. Ooh, out sustaining our Estes RQ. Barats. Does that work here? Oh, you're absolutely right. Those two heroes could definitely work here, but they go oh, for the wow. Angela. Wow. So not the Estes and the Akai. Um, not too sure about wow. the Akai pick here. Wow. Doubling down on the CC like we mentioned, but it's disengaged. <laughs> not that same kind that we would expect on the Croc. So it is going to be the Akai in the jungle and Angela roam. I guess a little bit of a I shout out for Evo Legends path. to their former captain, Rex. Why didn't they pick up the Esmeralda? <laughs> what? The Esme here. I. They pick I up the Arlet, but I, I would prefer the Esmeralda. Is that. Wait, magical damage? Uh, yeah, I think. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I would prefer the Esmeralda over the Arlet, but it seems like they want to add crowd control, right? So, uh, very good. Um, uh, Engaged tool. So what are you saying, Mirko? Like the yeah, Akai pick is bad because there's a lot of CC that Akai has that can be countered with the time journey. But the thing is, once you go in as an Akai, once you get knocked up, that's an instant instant time journey too. It doesn't have to be the heavy spin. It has to be like what's kind of damage that can make the Tiki pop that time journey. So I think I kind of like the approach here from e Boss, but the Angela pick is out of nowhere. This is probably the first time that I've seen Angela in MPL, but already one pick though. Let's see if the win rate is going to be 50% this now or it will stay at 0% as El Clasico Game 2! Best of 5! But we're going to go into the pause, seems like. Welcome will we? Will we? It will be a pause. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the drafts again. I like the chess match between um, Pangduk and as well as Agi, right? They, I feel like they know each other well, and that was the chess match that we witnessed. But back again here, Chefin. This is your time to shine. This is your, um, this is your field here. My field? Yeah. <laughs> this is the crowd. Nah. You're usually at the crowd, right, with Rashi regular season. Am I? Okay, but so I just want to remind you all that you can go with your date here. Use the code MPL date as we're trying to troubleshoot the problem that. This team has. Um, just wanna tell you guys, to be, please be patient because we're definitely trying to fix the problem here. But from the draft, I feel like I'm definitely le leaning towards Evos much more than RQ, especially with a reactive pick like Diggy. I feel like the one who pulled the trigger first usually wins. Usually, right? And you're right. A lot of them. Um the, the ways to counter a Diggy could be just like a Hilda aggressive early, forcing the time journey, or, or overwhelming the Diggy with yep. a whole lot of CC, forcing him to pop the time journey anyways. But that will mean that Evo's Legends need to pull back. They need to execute it perfectly. You guys can execute the in-game tickets right now perfectly. Redeem the codes. Utilize the codes right now. I would usually don't go for the first code, because usually that's the first one that's taken. Go for the one that usually nobody reads. Bottom Which right. One? No. Uh, bottom right onto the, like the, the middle. middle. Middle, bottom yeah, right. Middle, middle. Middle, middle right. Or maybe reverse psychology. The fact that a lot of people think, oh, the first code will be used right away. But maybe a lot of people. Just scan all the codes and redeem it, right it all at once. Oh, exactly. that, that, that's, a, that's, a, <laughs> that's a tough job to do. Buy, to wait. Buy 15 phones, right? And then redeem it on all 15 phones. That's an option? That's For an option. the in-game tickets, I think it's worth it. Yeah, why not? Right. Especially if you get the Samsung The playoffs points. of MPL Season 11 is going to only happen once. You're right. Right? But these are in-game tickets, not Season 11 tickets, Connie. <laughs> in-game <laughs> tickets. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I can see here the, the expression from Rafe is still a very, very calm, very, very collected, because still 1-0. It is a trouble, but not the end of the board, as I said earlier. But what is that? What does that say, Mirko? The Suru all in Kafarsa? Oh, never mind. <laughs> but you're missing out if you're not coming here in GX4 Arena. A lot of Kingdom, a lot of Evos fans in the building. Wait, they actually in the same area. I've seen. I see Evos jersey in in RQ stand. Is that Evos jersey? There are some Evos players. You have a sharp eye. You do have a sharp eye. Uh, here we got some Shepin. real MPL dates. No. No more of the, whoa, whoa, whoa. Of the fake MPL dates that we saw in the regular season, Gandhi, the one that went viral, you know? 
the whole cheating thing about Yigi. Was that was that you, Chefin? Am I? Am I? Am I getting caught here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, here you are seeing the Lar in the back with Pendragon and Firasik and Coach Agi and Taxum who are in the back talking. And hey, we got more MPL dates in the building, man. Chefin's Kryptonite. <laughs> Chefin's Kryptonite, man. My oh, God, why man. is dating um, your Kryptonite? You want to? Because he's single. Do you mind sharing? No, I want. I want him to elaborate. What why are you putting me on a spot, Connie? Why are you putting me on a spot? We have the downtime, all right? We have the downtime. It seems like you need to share as well. I'm not interested in girls yet. Whoa. Whoa. Yet. I said yet. It's okay. not the time there to actually go. go for it, okay? Okay, there right. you go. So yet. You confirmed, the yet ladies and gentlemen. The big part. It's the caps lock yet. Oh, okay. no, there you no, go, no, ladies okay. and gentlemen. If you guys were ever wondering, <laughs> confirmed right <laughs> in the MPL. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, even more MPL dates. If you guys want to join in, I would say buy tickets, but I believe it's sold out already. But hey, maybe you can still go and check it out. Maybe there's still a few more tickets because there's a one, there's oh, 1,000 plus. 1,000 plus. 1,000 plus. plus tickets. Oh, look at that. In the background. There's um, a cameraman dancing. dancing as well. You see, the cameraman, not only is he a sniper, but he's also a good dancer. Shout out to our cameraman in Indonesia, man. Man. The best in the business. The, the best. best in the world. The best Ooh. in all MPLs. There you go. In I the say that man. with confidence. Wow. I think a lot go. of people agree. If we're talking about the goat of MLBB, it's Filipino, but a goat of cameraman, we got to give it over to the MPL Indonesia Woo. cameraman, man. Cameraman, man, indeed. Hey, it's a, it's a young guns, right? Being the future, the future of MLBB. Future of MLBB. It's, oh. There you go. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Free tickets for Wait, everyone for the MPL Indonesia Season 11 awarding session tomorrow at 4 p.m. Jakarta time. So go ahead and check it out, ladies and gentlemen. The free tickets for the awarding, I believe. First team for the first team awards, the MVP for the regular season, rising star. Best coach. Best coach. What else am I missing? I Best forgot. talent. Best and, talent. And richest talent. I don't okay. think we have a richest talent one. It's only you who is on the run. It's Arashi. <laughs> it's only Arashi. He oh, owns the man. building. And the most sexiest caster, I believe, it's Chefin. Whoa. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, we are still having a um, downtime here. Composition-wise, EVOS oh! and RRQ. Oh, They're expecting a baby. It's not a baby alien, it's the actual baby. There you go. There you go. Like, so, Connie, when are you having babies? What? When are you having babies? When am I having babies? I will not have a baby because technically I'm a man. Well, okay, you touched the question quite uh, badly. When there. are you having a baby? You guys are questions. Anyways, <laughs> let's move on to the, again, crowd. We're still waiting on the troubleshoot, ladies and gentlemen. Please be patient with us here. We have a family member from one of the players here playing on stage. Evo's an RRQ. We got the support of the family, man. You can really see it. It's the family buff. Family buff, especially for Pai. His dad mm -hmm. loves Barats, and he wants to go pick Barats to win. Ooh, we're gonna go straight into the game for Evo's versus RRQ Brands, picking up a sprint instead of Purify or instead of Flicker. Oh, he's oh, already so so low. That fadeaway basic attack almost taking him down there. Forcing a flicker already very early on, and this will mean that Clay will have a, a pretty good advantage into the second minute. Oh, it's an interesting matchup, right? It's Angela and Diggy. We've never seen this before, so it's both kind of a reactive pick, but Angela can do play a bit more aggressively, aggressively than Diggy. So in this case, there's going to be much more independent uh, players, like because there's not much gangs, there's not much engages that have been made in the early game especially. Yep, and let's talk about Clay here, right? Why is he opted for that full time here? Very clear the heavy spin, but top side, oh my god. You can see the bullying already now with Brody. Oh my god, and then even behind their dreams is going to be targeted down. Has the flicker to get out right now. And it won't be the kill just yet, but Clay will be able to find the range. Hijime getting blocked by the wall, not <laughs> able to help this gold laner. Brands still trying to farm the best he can, but RRQ with a solid lead early on already. 
very solid. Right, and take a look at this. RRQ already munching. The gold shield turret top side. Scholar is having a feast already. Now that should be a problem. Tons! The heavy spin catches Lemon, but will not commit onto a fight. Lemon, though. Whoa, what? <laughs> There's a wall. I'm a flicker. Ow. I don't care. Okay, there you go. Brand's up with Blazing Duet. Now on the Skylar. That's going to be a kill picked up by Dreams. The Brand-centric gameplay. Three members up top. And RQ, this is where it might be a mistake. They are doubling down on gold lane control, but they are not able to secure the turtle. Evo's legends are able to win in that department as well. Oh, this is a messy, messy early game, Ghani. The fact that there's just too much hope right now, we're seeing, and two kills already. We're seeing the effect of that Diggy and Angela pick. You see that Diggy did not rotate towards the objective take. Instead, he chose to pressure the gold lane from Evos Legends in Brands. Knowing that Brands is definitely important to reckon, especially with this plot, and he will try to pressure him. Look at Albert on Fredrin, waiting. The reverse time gets placed down. The wow. feathered airstrike as well. All for the roamer, though. Here, taken out. RRQ putting some pressure down again in the top lane. Going to be able to take the first turret down. This will give the Brody so much more room to really snowball. But look at the timing of when he gets the turret. Is it possibly too early? It sounds weird, but usually you want the gold cannon minions to be gone before you get the first turret, right? So that you can actually lane swap over. Let's see. Let's see. Will it be that impactful? But also, peep that Taz is ab above one level ahead of Albert. So let's see here in that turtle fight, what will happen? A little bit late on rotation here, it seems like, whereas Taz, he's more objective-centric in that early game. He has that pathing in hand, and it seems like he was able to execute it. Here, Lemon now, semi-targeted here, will not come in on towards anything just yet. Both teams here will look for the next agenda in the map. It's gonna be the turtle. It seems like RRQ, they're the first one in that party. Okay, Lemon are going to get chunked for now by Psychons and Dreams. Now they're going to be able to get some more HP from the minions there. Vin now rotating to the team with Brody as well. Black Dragon form going to be popped into the back line as the time journey gets baited out. That's what they needed. And Taz now will have to raid as the Petrify connects onto two. Evo's Legend! They collapse, but they lose out on the turtle. Psychons still hunting. Going to be able to find an owl in the back. That's the Diggy taken down. Albert now onto Psychos, looking for a re-engage for the side of our RQ. As Lemon is going to be able to dive onto Dream. Psychos escaping with a furious dive. Lemon not able to utilize the resets properly, saving the final slash. This is the trouble of Evo's composition, right? The fact that they have Dreams kind of being at the frontliner uh, in the early game just doesn't make sense. You have to put Toss in frontline, and even if you do put Toss, he's your jungler, he's your retribution taker, he's your objective taker. So, it it's a lose-lose situation if you actually pull off, uh, if you put Toss in front of you, it's gonna be hard for you to take objective, Whoa. but Grant's getting jumped up real low with the better x strike. He holds on to the PMI, just dodges it with a sprint there, and he catches the wave with the Blazing Duet, places the Battle Mirror image behind. Well played. Very good at this play again here. Now it's both teams just creating punches. Take a look at the score line, it's three, uh, three, three. And uh, well, the gold lead is very, very much hangs in the balance. Now it's gonna be Brody here opting for that BOD for his item. Hasn't been collected yet though. And it seems like with all the tenacity here, it's gonna be uh, Eleven is gonna build Dominance Ice first. With that Hero Fury Hammer, he just wants a little bit of penetration, attack item, and it's after that, it's just full item. So, a very um, similar approach from the side of Yu Zong, where he opted for that Thunder Strike, right? And then he will build full defense. Bottom lane? But Claude, bottom lane as well. Psychos forced to use the Yu Zong. Our guard, Petrify, Lemon, Chain CC, but he's going to be able to find the resets right now. He jumps back in, but Psychos with the Furious Dive now, and the help of the Heavy Spin will be able to pin Lemon down. Dreams gets the kill. Albert now looking for the Brazer's Wrath, will be able to find Psychos, but look who has joined the fray. It's Ejuman with Clay now running away with the Wings by Wings. Albert dashing out to safety. Evo's Legend, do they come out on top in the trade? Psychots for Lemon. Well, it's, it's an ESP for an ESP, but RQ has the objective to take in mind. Albert will try to execute his retry over Toss, but Toss has the heavy spin. Let's see if he goes for it. Reverse time. Gonna be able to bring him back right now with Taz will just concede it over. RRQ with another turtle in their hands. 
very good um, execution again. Your top side though. Oh, Will it be the main focus? Let's see. Okay, battle mirror image at the sprint. Done. Gets him out. Done. <laughs> very uh, simple uh, escape and maneuver there, but still top side here. Very well defended by the side of RQ. A thousand gold lead here. About to see and witness. It's, again, Evos Legends, they have the chances, their chances to turn and dictate their price. They do not want to get driven, but whoa, Hijume. Whoa, whoa. Nice pickup, man. Hijume with a great read. As Skyler pops in that torn apart memory to clear in the wave. They're rotating towards the XP lane now, trying to utilize Brody to get those sieges underway. Well, with the information as well from that real world population that isn't in play. It seems like our healer not afraid to fight him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, don't overcommit on this one, man. Hijume has not yet. Um, that real world relation isn't active yet. I did say that our wants to play reactively with Flynn with the time journey, but in this case, Evos has been playing reactively instead because they don't have the push, and this is how it went. Flicker out already by Dreams. He needs to be very, very wary of his positioning now. The Battle Mirror Image also by Brands as the Siege will come through for the sign of our RQ. With a tier 1 down below. Now turn apart memory though onto Dreams. He's gonna be able to find the fade away. Assassin comes in with a heavy spin, but it's gonna be the time journey to respond it. Lemon now with the final slash, putting him back. With the Battle Mirror Image placed down, Brands is still gonna be able to survive for a bit. RQ are hunting them down. Hijime kiting away, getting out, but the reverse time brings him back just a bit. RRQ with so much value in this play. Hijime versus Clay. Both of them not wanting to commit, but Psychots was able to get a trade with a turret up top. Five seconds until the Lord comes, and this is probably the, the opportunity of RQ that RQ needed to actually get the Lord. Toss is still trying to go to the Lord pit, but it's gonna be a free Lord for RQ unless Albert messed this up. Hard guard. Let's see if they can steal it. I don't think that was the plan. reason. The plan. Vin now gonna be targeted down. The Furious Dive even now onto the back with a petrified place. Then Vin will fall, and the hard guard gives Psychots enough sustain to back up. It's Lemon who, whoa, goes in there with the Lord taken and with RQ already backing off. Wow. Interesting play. Yeah, the positives though. Hijume and Brands, the main carry of Evos, is still zero death. So Dreams might be in trouble, and there you go. Hard to play an Angela against a Farsa. Yeah, a good um, response, but Skylar here will be wow. chunked. It's very low. Evos Legends, they didn't win that Lord, but they were able to equalize and even win on Trey Tazdal. Wow, well played. Retri, he saved it for the last second, right as the reverse time gets popped. Then he retries and dashes out with the movement speed. Nice one by Taz. Very good display of mechanics as well. But the mid here from side of RQ was taken down. So again, uh, Evos Legends, they have more map, more ground to play around with. RQ though, take a look at them. They do not care. They're now basically already with the invade here, trying to target the top side. But it seems like Psychots will read this one out. Our guard is there. Torn apart memory. Not going to be used oh by Skylers. Hijume is caught now with the reverse time as well. Pops in the RWM. Now Taz will be stunned up as Skyler picks up the kill and sieges down the tier two. Evos need to respect this, but Dreams will be able to flick her out just in time. Oh my god, the torn apart memory almost, almost got him. Meanwhile, Brands though, it's always like that. Brands has just been farming. Really waiting for that power spike to hit. And when it does, will it be able to get Evos the dub in these team fights, Ghani? Well, he's still staying. Well, the thing is, Albert, the brand can play this aggressively because he has that global presence of dreams with the hard card. So he can just dash in, dash in and dash out with the sprint as well. He can get um, out of the team fights easily. Hmm, looking at the items here, interesting, right? Already Golden Staff Corrosion, and as well as DHS. So, technically, Brands is already ready to fight, to fight 5v5, 4v4. It seems like now it might be the chance to show that items off. Albert being the frontliner right now as Taz is going to be engaged on the final slash, isolating him from the team. He's saving the heavy spin, he pops in the last second to disengage as EVOS Legends were able to clear out the mid lane. So they are actually able to withstand that mid-game power spike that RQ has for now. Yeah, for now, and as I said earlier, if Taz continues to open the map for EVOS Legends, it's gonna be hard for them to actually take objective. Once you 
get to the 50-50s and Lord, Tasu will be very, very low getting chunked up by a lot of damage coming in from Finn especially and Clay. So he has to have a lot of magic defense here, like double like Radiant and maybe Arena. That might be the case. And yeah, Vin with the yeah, we're right with the Empire Age, right? It's it's proven a um, very good for now, right? Seven is his name. Heavy spin just instantly nullified. Let's see here. This is where Vin should shine most here. It's somehow negating and relieving all pressure from the side of Taz for Albert to perhaps take the Lord comfortably. It's gonna be tough here with that heavy spin, but let's see. Execution-wise, though, top side will be carried by Angela. Oh, RWM, Skyler is so, so low. This might be it, man. That's the hard guard placed down already. Brands. They're ready for it. Brands out to the back with the blazing duet. Skyler 1 HP, but Clay will fall. And the Lord gets resetted. Taz will fall as well, but it's all good. Psychot's even reading where Skyler is. He finds the kill back. Now Lemon in the midst, gonna be melted down. Brands will be able to dish out the proper damage. That's the power spike they were waiting for, and it delivered. That's your king of marksmen of Indonesia, everybody. That's the reason why he's in C games. And Brand's first game MVP, and it's looking like second game, he wants it too. Goodness me, EVOS legends. It's an AOE party, right? Blazing duet. You got the Furious dive, you got the real world manipulation. And it seems like team fight. Sure, you have the diggy. Take a look at the instant replay here, right? It's a good flank. Blazing duet and combined with the dragon there. Ooh, it's an AOE party again. And besides of that, even Angela joins in the fun with that hard guard. But what an execution. What a structured plan. And that was GG. You gotta shout out the one who started it all. It's Hijume. Hijume. With the revolt inflation just burning all the flickers away from mm -hmm. Skylar and Vin. And there you go, Brands free real estate going to the back line with a blazing duet. It's just damage pouring in also with the hard guard. More survivability. Easy, easy ulti for Brands at the time. Also, just a fun fact, right? He was with the dragon, with a dragon skin here. Oh, Ijume burst it oh, down. Oh, no. oh, Ijume! Wow, pops the RWM to survive. That was well played, man, with a hard guard as well placed down. They aren't able to utilize the Lord fully to find any more turrets, but that could have been so bad for them if they lost Hijume. Yeah. Good calculation from this man who's very underrated. Yeah, we've said, said this over and over again. We kind of overlook how Hijume plays in a lot of games that we have as he has the Divine Cliff right now. Big, big item pick here, especially for Lemon, Albert, and Skylar presumably will pick up a defense item in the future, we can see here, but actually no, it's color, glass cannon. Exactly, and it seems like here RQ, though gold-wise, they're not really far behind. Skylar here already on his way towards his last item. Here, uh, BOD already in check, Blade of, Blade of Despair, Malefic Roar, and as well as Hunter Strike, and that wind of nature here, so. Damage-wise, he is also ready, but it's just a matter of positioning. France has a better, better uh, hero that is just so mobile. And with a 204 score, with the Blazing Duet, and already prior items has been collected. It's just very hard. No stopper here, it seems like, from the side of RRQ that can just cancel out that Blazing Duet. That can really soak in the damage also. I gotta say, RQ, they need blade armor. Yeah, I like what Evos is doing right now. Just nothing too ordinary. Just try to play reactively because you don't have all the tools, the tools available to be able to play aggressively. Toss is the only frontliner, like the real frontliner of Evos. They have to be careful on when to engage and when to pick team fights. RQ is definitely still in the game as it's only 1k gold lead so far. But remember, this is where RQ's comp kind of falls off. Well, not entirely, because they still have Clay. Skyler, though, his damage, his presence will not be as powerful as it was a few minutes before. Yeah, definitely as you have Hijume, as you have Saigots with the Black Dragon form, just the dive is just too much. Also, Brands with the Blazing Duet and uh, presumably Wind of Nature. It's got to be hard for you to evade all that you have to somehow somehow fight an answer to that, but what is the answer when you the only thing you have is uh, the time journey to kind of beat you up a little bit with the shield, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a little bit of shield. What are you going to do about it? 
What you gonna do about it, Gani? How do you deal with it? You know what? How do I? <laughs> I'm still like looking for the loophole as well here. RQ, mm, very tough because they need someone that can soak in the damage as well, and they need to somehow stop the flanks from Cyclops arm. Again, France. Let's see, Cyclops already moving in. Okay, they're already doing so well. France now with the blazing duet onto the back. Oh my God! Oh Finn! What? Oh my God! The alarm bombs are massive. Finn placed it there, knowing some sort of engage was coming. France did not expect that. Well, what was that <laughs> placement, Vin? My God, the genius! Wow. <laughs> I did mention that they need a stopper. I expect the crowd control stopper, but oh, the information will take down Vin indeed. I expected a stopper that can cancel out the Blazing Duet, but bombs will do, man. The bombs will do. Well, I asked, what are you going to do about it? So maybe that's the answer. That's a clip worthy right there. It's just going and just deleted with the, with the rapid bombs from Ziggy. It's just insane. And Brass has to build the Athena shield right now, right? There's no way he's not going to build one. And right now he's been building glass cannon. As you can see here, the only thing available for him is that top boots, which Holy. is not enough. Not enough at all. Definitely not. For the airstrike, also stealing with the purple pop brand. Just not having a good time right after that. Man, those alarm bombs. I completely forgot. You know, Vin actually went for the impure rage, right? So yeah, he's building damage, man. He's waiting for that. And he got it. I can't believe he got it. Goodness, Ark, you know the, how the table has turned. And it seems like now they're playing their pace here. I, lo I like RQ. They do not go force a fight while they have the Lord. They do not have the position as well. Bot side will be taken care of by Arlet. It's going to be a two wave push here, it seems like. Well, but let's Vin see. And Skylar has to be careful with the real translation of Beachman because, as we can see earlier, it's just very, very punishing as France. Oh. That Tina is going to be there. There you go, some defense already, but Taz is going to be melted down. This might be it for RQ as they look to Siege. Base turret number one, taken down in the top lane. Clay with the wings by wings now as the real world manipulation gets placed down. RQ looking for a play. Lemon with a missed final slash will not be able to catch anyone here. And Evo's Legends live to see another day for now. 5 one four game for Clay so far. It's definitely a good KDA for mid laner, for backliner as Slycos. Single weather airstrike to that much damage and Vin's gonna place the bomb all over the place for Eva to deal with. The only one that can attack it is Icon and Taz, and Taz is not in the building. Arc is teaching again. Oh, Brand. Oh, oh my god, everything placed and used, but he's still gonna be able to bait out a whole lot. Psychos now jumping in with the Black Dragon form. Oh, dodging away from the Torn Apart memory with the Black Dragon form right as he comes out there. Evo Legends able to defend that bottom side base turret. The micro plays come in handy for RRQ and EVOS. Psychos, knowing that iFrame is there, just abuses it to perfection. He knows that the stacks are there for Skylar to abuse, and the damage is going to be able to take him down. But no, I have an iFrame. <laughs> you know what was interesting here from instead of RRQ? RRQ, they managed to turn it around, not by the marks and by the two birds, right? They equipped in their composition. The Owl and the Farsa. Again, a very uh, slow but sure defense here, right? And I really like that RRQ. They're not moving hastily. They wait for the right movement. And yeah, this time around, we don't see or not seeing Brands jumps in with a, with a threat for now with that alarm bombs in check. And the game, the stream starts at 1, and right now it's already 3, with 2 games has not been played yet, so it's gonna be a long day, long day everybody, for us casters here. <laughs> also for the players, man, remember this best of 5 series is going to get really tiring for them, right? Fatigue comes into play, but so far both teams have looked pretty on point. Just a slight mishap here and there. RQ with more control on the Evolved Lord. Evo's Legends looking for that opening. This Taz is going to be consistently healed up, sustained back up. Does RQ really want to go for the 50-50 here? They have the time journey to take that heavy spin away. And look at what Taz and Dreams are doing, right? Taz taking the alarm bombs, Dreams healing him up. Okay, what I, what I want RQ to do right now is just stall, stall, stall. They know that the slow push is there at the bottom exactly. lane and do a penny. 
It's gonna be Angela defending because Angela has the global present and Taz is gonna be killed. Uh oh, for the airstrike and wow. everything popped and used. Let's see, Taz, will he be able to find the opening? He won't be. Albert secures it. Psychos in the midst right now. Was that's Clay with the winner's function what? buying it in time? Brands walking all the way in the back. Gonna be able to escape with a battle mirror image as Hijume is still alive. So poking them out slowly but surely. Psychos buys the winter here. One member down and the Lord over to RRQ. Evolved. Will Evos be able to defend this? Wow, not to lie, that was a good attempt by Evos. This, the 50 v 3 is just not there, and right now, Evos will try to defend without Taz, presumably because they're gonna rush this Lord, knowing that it's gonna be 5v4 if Taz is not there yet. It's gonna be very interesting indeed here. Item-wise, it's gonna be the Holy Crystal, Divine Glaive, and Glowing Wand for that far star here, Clay. Wow. Oh, wow, Finn! There you go. Well played, man. The reverse time, bringing it back. Hijume now in the midst of it all. Popping the real world, but Blation as Albert loses the immortality. Brands very, very low. Has the immortality. Two members against the world. What? That's going to be the damage. RRQ. They will not go down like this. Wait, Taz buys a bit more time, but it sounds, it looks inevitable. They will be able to equalize the series one to one. Well, it's El Clasico for a reason. One to one, RRQ strikes back. They don't want the White Tigers to win it. They don't want White Tigers to advance as they will try to extend the streak of them going to international tournament two, five times. But that last play from Vin, man. What if I use a diggy and pass it off as a Kaja? Delightfully devilish, Vin. Flicker reverse time. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very good uh, comeback from the side of RRQ. Remember, in the early game, it was similar as game one, where EVOS Legends, they were the ones who got that control, who really dictates the pacing, the tempo. And take a look at the fans, man, and they're enjoying themselves. It's a e good equalizer here. And what happened was, it was just RRQ getting the domino effect that they need after Bronze taken down, it was a shutdown. And suddenly, Brands and his teammates were at a total disconnect. It was actually the like, like a flick of a finger. Evos Legends, they lost the control of that game. It was actually RRQ after the kill. On towards Brands, what they were able to do was just slowly but surely getting more ground, gaining, forcing skirmishes, not team fights, because Again, a lot of AOEs that can be given from a set of EVOS Legends, so they prefer it to be a pick-off, they prefer it to be 2s perhaps 3v3s, but 4v4s and 5v5s might actually favor the side of EVOS Legends. And that was the, I feel like, the difference maker. EVOS Legends, they weren't able to, sure, they were able to dictate that early towards the mid, but after that, they weren't able to switch transition into a, a, a more meaner game plan i expected them to be just more more brave Reactive more board. bold sure he got the bold uh, they went bold they went in bold and then bronze get the shutdown but after that it was just hesitating after hesitation after hesitation from the side of evos legends which rq saw it oh my god evos legends they're now playing it full of hesitation. Now let's take control, let's claim it, let's go invade the jungles, let's force because, and that's what happened, right? RRQ, they were still just, again, with, with that same quality, they were just able to reclaim. I like that quality. I think it makes sense though, the hesitation, because the win condition from the draft is just harder to execute for EVOS Legends, because there's only one instance where Brands goes in with that Blazing Duet and Hardcore combo, that makes EVOS's composition make sense. Other than that, just the time bombs and the trap that Vin set in that push is just, wow, that, that is a 200 IQ play from Vin. And, you know, it makes sense. Hesitate, hesitate, hesitate. And it bites EVOS in the back. It really does. It I really think does. really the micro adjustment as well from Vin, right? Because early on, they were able to bait the time journeys really easily <laughs> with either a heavy spin or yeah. a black dragon for him. In the end, Vin, he just stayed composed. When the Black Dragon form came in, he just waited it out. It was chill because he already had the items to properly react to it, right? Early on, maybe he can get bursted down, but later on, 
No, it's all good, fam. And that's what he utilized to save it, so that when the heavy spin comes down, when Brands tries to take him down, the time journey gives him the added sustain to bait Brands over to the alarm bombs. Those alarm bombs really hurt, and it you will we'll see it. We'll definitely see it. I don't think he gets the most damage done here, but I really want to know the number. I really want to know how much damage he did, because he was able to one-shot Brands, bro. Well, <laughs> it, it's ironic, isn't it? It's alarm. It doesn't make you wake up. It makes you sleeping. And we're going to see the highlight here in a second. But uh, before that, the items checks for RRQ versus EVOS. Anything stands out, Gani? Yeah, of course, Vin, right? You mentioned why the alarm bombs hurt, right? Take a look at the items here. Magic power in that Enchanted Talisman. You have the Glowing One and the Divine Glaive. That hurts a lot. With the Radiant Armor, it adds more oomph. It can withstand the damage from the side of Hijume a little bit. And Dreams, a very good uh, display. But Albert displayed a mean Fredrin. I got to give props towards Clay too. I mean, the two birds, like I mentioned earlier. The Owl from the Farsa. They displayed a good, good, good hero. Good mechanics as well. Clay, with the Feather Airstrike, they were able to find it, right? But... Let's talk about the AOE party from side of EVOS Legends first, right? Why they got the mid and the early. They were able to utilize all these um, ultimates, right? Real world population, blazing duets, and as well as the furious type and the petrify. With that in mind, they managed to control more often team fights, but it's just the two birds that they were able to find here, <laughs> the Farsa and the Digi. Not killing two birds with one stone, killing the White Tigers with two birds here, uh, Chef and, and Mer Merkel. So again, the Farsa and Diggy, I feel like the Farsa has more damage than the Diggy, but I might be wrong actually seeing the items with Divine Glaive and as well as the, what item, the Enchanted Talisman as well. I think it's well. gonna be Diggy. Yeah, it's just damage is there. And there you go, It's the carry is gonna be Diggy, right? It's 106,000 with the rich guy also, Skylar. But man, the two birds were just somehow unstoppable with the also very reliable Albert. I feel like Albert actually still might get the MVP, seeing his Ooh, performance. I don't know about that, man. I feel like Vin, Vin. Vin deserves the nod as well because damage dealt, I don't think, the, I think this is kind of a overrated stat for DK because as long as you build damage, you poured all the bombs. By the way, the bomb is a rabbit, by the way. So you drew that wrong, Gani. You're a bad drawer. I'm just, it's, it's a drawer. Time bomb. It's called drawer. a time bomb. You're a drawer, Goni. Artists store artists. things in you, man. But oh artists. my god. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, that was a uh, very good exchange, a good series, right? That's a sign of a good series where EVOS Legends, they got the first game. We saw instant, instant readjustments from the side of RRQ. They know their mistakes in game one, they, they reset it, and in game two, they displayed a different, different. Um, approach from the side of Ark, and that was also the way. Sure, early game, it's still EVOS Legends there. It's in their keys to success, but this time around, RRQ, they were able to not just withstand, they were able to overcome, outplay EVOS Legends, and that is also needed in that game where in that gold curve, you can see here, most, it's just not stable, right? Until what, minute number 13, I feel like it's very unstable. Let's go back and forth from RRQ, and then Equalization, yeah, EVOS Legends equalize, and then EVOS Legends gets it, and then RRQ equalize. But after one play, they shut down earlier, it was just RRQ snowballing. And after that, it was very, very tough for EVOS Legends to make a play, because remember, Taz, when he jumps in, there's Diggy again, right? The, with the, the, the time journey to negate, to nullify that heavy spin, and remember, Hijume, he's on a Eve. Remember, playoff, win rate for Eve, very, very low, right? Very hard to pull off that Eve. Meanwhile, on the other side, you have that Farsa with the wings by wings that somehow very hard to catch. Even though your friends or teammate has the Black Dragon form, it's going to be very tough because once they're winning, Clay will not show on map until he knows that he is safe, right? So again, a very tough opponent here. Yi Farsa, that is also why. I prefer the far side, and there you go, the two birds, one of the birds actually will claim the MVP. It's going to be Clay, 718, 88% KP. What he facilitates was that feather airstrike. Again, to zone out the members and be building Holy Crystal, Glowing One, Glaive, that's 
lot of magic power, a lot of DOTs. And take a look at the heat map as well. He was everywhere for the first five minutes, mostly in the mid, of course, as an anchor, acting as an anchor and looking to just somehow harass the gold leaner as well, right? So again, in game two, different story as game one, where game two, in that mid game, actually RRQ, they were able to find the success. Here in the early game, it was very back and forth, the switcheroo of the gold laners, right? Here and there, back and forth. Here though, we see Clay's positioning, very good, very, very um, efficient. Why? He can bait, he can somehow force EVOS Legends to overcommit. And that is, I feel like, a difference maker here. I feel, I feel he is um, now learning not to be a positional mid laner. Here in this fight, you can see Scholar survives Brands. This was the first Blazing Duet, right? Very good. But second time around, it's a different story. You can see your top alarm bombs was just so much to handle. And after the first Lord taken down their top side, it's just this is the part where EVOS Legends were in crumbles. They weren't able to defend again Clay. Perfect timing on that feather airstrike. Because nobody was a threat. He popped that feather airstrike. And Cyclops was a little bit late to the party. And game two. RRQ, the Kings of Kings. They are able to equalize in that game. EVOS Legends and RRQ back to ground zero, right? Same level, but now they're looking for two more games. Well, I think the mad scientist is a bit mad in this kind of uh, composition, right? They know that, uh, well, no, no. Diki was the reactive pick towards the Angela pick, so that's a good job from RQ. But the thing is, every time EVOS try to engage in a fight, they can't because there's just too much damage that has to be tanked by Toss, the front line. He's the sole tanker of EVOS Legends, and every time Time Bomb is there, the Feather Airstrike is there, RQ just wins the fight before it even begins because the HP bar is just not there for EVOS Legends, and I feel like that's the highlight of this match. Yeah, the poke, the range, like Gani mentioned, two birds killing the White Tigers, and that's exactly what happened, Gani, right? I feel like right now, this is the moment where EVOS Legends can make proper adjustments. I feel like there, they were still a bit, you know, they were still experimenting because they can't afford to experiment. The Angelo pick is something that we have never seen. Yep. In Season 11, they try to utilize it. It worked for a bit, but then after them going in for too much, getting too confident, and then not respecting the Diggy damage, you saw what it can do, even bypassing, going through, melting the heart guard. I would have never expected a diggy to carry RQ in the late game. <laughs> You're right, that's a very interesting story. And to add to that, you remember the player that also pop popularized um, Angela from EVOS as well was Wrecked, right? What, three seasons, if not two seasons ago, was actually Wrecked that somehow, sometimes, it made other teams ban the Angela out. So perhaps that was an homage, paying homage to Wrecked in that game. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out for the side of the White Tigers, but now it's do or die. It's looking forward to, you know, again, set the tone, gaining the lead, getting that match point. So no more paying homage. They need to focus and readjust again. EVOS Legends, that Angela pick didn't really work out to their side. So again, give other heroes two dreams. I think well, when, right yeah. now they can afford it. That's why. Exactly. Yeah, because as this, uh, as of right now, two games has elapsed. It's a best of three right now, but we're gonna see a remix call to Ooh. a guest here Whoa. from Gear from Bleed MPL SG. Ooh. Let's throw it over to our hosts. Bagus, hello. Wow, ini dia. Ini kita pakai bahasa Indonesia apa Inggris ya? So. Uh. Bisa, bisa Indo. Oh, bisa Indo. Oke. Okay. menarik sih. Tapi gimana sih keadaannya untuk MPL Singapura sendiri, untuk gear juga di sana? Uh, menurut aku... Uh, bagus lah, bagus. Baik, baik. Baik, 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 baik. Bagus, ya. bagus. Ya. Nah, tapi Gir, kalau misalnya membandingkan nih uh, the difference of the MPL in Indonesia and Singapore, what are the differences? 
uh, MPL Indo lebih agresif tapi di Singapura itu lebih kayak aman sama defensif lah jadi nonton MPID jadi lebih seru kayak gitu Oh, lebih seru ya, seru tapi ya? kalau ngelihat El Clasico, yeah. RRQ, dan EVOS Legion di match kita yang pertama ini, kamu ngelihatnya gimana sih sekarang kan lagi kejar-kejaran It's really competitive for RRQ and EVOS Legion, how do you see the first match and especially game 1 and game 2 gear? Uh, the team fight is very oriented, like the team fight looks very exciting ah. then very, oh, both teams very strong Oh, katanya tim fight. tim fight kedua tim sangat keras dan kedua-dua tim ini katanya strong dua-duanya ya, Bude. Ya yeah, betul. And kalau how do you see the maybe is there any difference from the culture or the journey or, or the lifestyle in Singapore and Indonesia? Maybe the pro player has different culture or different teams, ya? Yeah. yeah. Uh. In, di MPL Singapura kita metanya ikut-ikut Indo sama Filipina sih jadi kita nontonin MPL-nya MC di belajarin kayak gitu. Oh seperti itu. Tapi ya Gir, kalau di saat ini kamu di Bleed dan di MPL Singapura Bleed menjadi salah satu yang menjadi tim yang kuat. Top two. Nah ini gimana kamu lihat prediksi teman-teman di Singapura mungkin yang akan menuju MSC 2023 dari Singapura? Uh, kita lah yang ke MSC. Oh, <laughs> amin ya. But how about Indonesian team that will represent us here? Can you give us your prediction? Uh, uh, my prediction is, I think Alter Ego and Onik will go to MSC because they are very strong team. Oh, Alter Ego dan juga Onik katanya diprediksi oleh Gir yang akan masuk ke MSC 2023. Yeah. But who is the most exciting team and for you to face in MSC? Can you give us a team or a country? Uh, Onik. Onik. Onik Indonesia. Onik Indonesia yeah. katanya. And Gear, one more question, last question for you. Could you say any message for the fans in Indonesia or the team in Indonesia? Uh, uh, terima kasih buat uh, mendukung kita dan semoga kita bisa uh, melolos di Messi. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, please. Terima kasih Matur Nuwun dan selamat berjuang untuk babak playoff untuk beli tentu. Terima Dadah. kasih sekali lagi. Well, there you go. Thank you Bleed Gear for the interview. He said that it's Onik and Alter Ego who will be representing Indonesia in CK I mean in MSC 2023 in Cambodia, which makes sense, right? Alter Ego, a very Kind of shaky performance against RQ, but a win is a win 3-2 and they're on their way. Just one more step to secure that MSC nod, but the wall is just way too high in Onik. But before that, we gotta have a match to decide whether it's gonna be Onik or it's gonna be RQ or EVOS who will challenge the loser Ooh. of Onik versus Alter Ego. Well, you know, so far the pro player predictions have also been pretty cursed, man. Flaptizi, I believe, said it was going to be Onik and BTR who makes it to MSA. BTR got knocked out. And then, um, I forgot who it was. Uh, Oheb. Oheb, right. He said Geek and Onik will make it to the Grand Finals. And yeah, no, didn't age really well. <laughs> well, it's, there's a bias there, but uh, this one I'm not biased for. Okay. What this is, is actually good. What? It's Dunia Games! If you buy in-game items, you can get free quota, free, free data, three gigabytes. Damn, yeah, yeah, check it out, right? This is the perfect timing. There's a promo from Dunia Games for you, up to, you're right, three gigabytes of quota every time you buy items or vouchers. So you need to check it out, but also you need to make sure that it's for Mobile Legends and using Telecom Cell. So hurry up and buy it on duniagames.co.id or they have an app called the Dunia Games app. So you better guys, you guys better check it out and you gotta, guys better, you know, tell Shepin here to also use this app. Oh, I already used it. He's what I want to tell you guys though, liar. if you're uh -huh. using, what? What? <laughs> if you're using a different provider than Telecom Cell, what are you doing? 
throw that away. Use the best yeah. in the business in Telecom Cell. But of course, it's game three. It's best of three right now for RRQ versus EVOS. It's gonna be a long day. It's gonna be a match indeed. Let's see EVOS Legends, the mad scientist trying to, you know, start one of his experiments in the playoffs. I honestly feel like the Angela could have worked, right? I mean, it was working for a while, but it felt like, here, EVOS Legends. I feel like they were playing really well up until they started winning, and that's when they actually <laughs> stopped playing well. <laughs> that, that's a weird observation there, like, the fact that they started losing after they were winning. Yeah, because okay. the way they were playing was so disciplined. They were always trading on the map. They were really outsmarting RRQ yep, almost yep. the entire game. And then suddenly they when they finally got to their power spikes, they're like, you know what, let's resort to our instincts. Let's just go in. Let's just fight. <laughs> let's just forget everything that made us so successful in the early to mid game. So it looks like they're still ticking to their guns is the Joy and the Fanny Band for EVOS Legends. The two mobile heroes and... Wow. Wow. Proper respect, man. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> A bit, a bit too much respect, I would say, but if you want to play those kind of heroes like Atlas, if you want to play those kind of heroes like Yu Zhang, like oh, it's definitely come in handy. But now I know. I understand. I understand why EVOS banned the Diggy out. Go ahead, explain. They want to play the Kadita. All right, Dreams can play the Kadita. They want to make that option open. And again, RRQ, if they're able to locate that Kadita, they should somehow perhaps ban it out in second phase. Yeah, yeah, the Kadita is a solid option, a hero that EVOS Legends have found so much success with. Remember, ISF, one of the heroes that gave the, the Philippines so much trouble was that Kadita always destroying the proper front to back. But the Kanja here is going to be banned out, leaving the Kadita wide open. The Claude as well, though. Yeah. Now, this is where EVOS need to pick it up. I think. You know, picking up another hero here would make sense for Evos, but you're up against RQ, you're up against Skylar. You may think, hey, you it's easy to. to counter him on a Beatrix, on a Brody, on a Melissa, but do not give him Claude. And I think <laughs> Evos made the right choice. Well, don't forget that this Claude has been banning M4 in MSC against RSG, so it's a proper respect given towards Skylar. And we have a comment from Professor KB himself. What I hope for RQ, what I hope for with RQ is that the fit here is only one thing, that RQ will come back in M5 even stronger and even farther than just being in top three. That's my hope for RRQ. Whoa. M5, we're talking M5 already. Are we foreseeing that low-key Kabe said that EVOS Legends will win this match? I that's, don't know. I guess that's his prediction, <laughs> okay. right? Okay, okay. Let's see, let's see here. The two responses, though. It's going to be the same picks, right, from game two. It's going to be the Fredrin and as well as the Farsa. The MVP for that game will be picked up again. EVOS Legends, now what Exorcist will they go for? Dragon. It's going to be the Yu Zong, but wow. this time it's going to be the Yeev. So will not pile that Kadita. I wish RRQ will ban it out later because seeing Vince's performance on that Kadita, not usually a good performance. The micro adjustment made by EVOS is already really good though. Like banning on the Diggy and going for the same draft, the Diggy was literally the, the reason yeah. that Factor, yeah. it did not work out for EVOS. And RRQ, I feel like they should have made some changes. I feel like going for the Farsa there you go. and Oh, and nah. a Diggy. I thought Farsa and a Yuzon would be much better for RRQ there, but we've True. never seen Lemon play it. Wanwan Wan into Claude, not a big fan. Yeah, yeah, that's why Claude is an S tier gold laner uh, right now because I Melissa, Wan Wan, it doesn't really matter. You, you're, even if you're losing in a lane uh, in a few minutes, but you still have that blazing to, wet, blazing to wet to clear the lane easily and you can go into the back line straight away without any care in the word. And, and you can RQ, get out of the crossbow tank range so easily. Yeah, just go back with your BMI. And RQ banning the Lolita once again. No, not once again. It was Rance who actually banned the Lolita for EVOS. Not in game two, though. It was game one. Yeah, so again, yeah, perhaps it's going to be EVOS Legends now banning a hero towards... Uh, then again, we might see uh, just full respect here. Uh, oh no, own. it's going to be the Arlet. I expected the Franco. It's going to be the Arlet here banned out. And perhaps RQ still might commit on towards a hero. No, they might, uh, again, banning... They might ban out the Lancelot again. I think they're trying to just force Lemon on a hero he's not comfortable with, right? Oh, Arlen ban, Lancelot ban comes in from RQ. Do they want to go for the Lapu ban here and basically force Lemon to play something 
There's, mm. there's other healers that he's comfortable with, though. Like Min Sathar? Aedith Min Sathar? Might, might be, but... Uh, he did not really in terms of just, meta, Yeah, though. in terms of comfortable, there's still Aedith, and there's still... Wait, Trizla, yeah, Trizla. But in this case, Trizla is yeah. kind of a... It's a bit of a trouble to play against a 1-1, one -one, right, Mirko? You're a 1-1 player yourself. It's hard to actually um, play Trizla, even if you go in with the, play, uh, with the penalty zone. The second skill is just there to bail you out, and that's a free crossbow tank. And Evos, what will they ban here? I think it's gonna be a Roamer ban. They so can't go for Roamer ban, you know, just respecting Finn. Maybe a Franco, oh, like we saw earlier. And yeah, it morning. is gonna be the Franco here. Now the Kufra is up for grabs, though. Do they? Are they really concerned with the Kufra though for Evos? With a Yeev, RWM, Yuuz on with the Black Dragon form. The Kufra can work here, but I think going for something a bit more reliable in a way you can engage is a much better option for RRQ. And remember, with the Diggy ban, it also sets up for like an Atlas pick for Evos. Kadida also, the hero that you tried, or you said early on, hasn't been banned out by RRQ, Ghani. Mm -hmm. Kadida is a no-no for me, just because of the Claude. But let's see if for that's the case. For Evos, Kadida for Evos. Oh, for Evos. Yeah, for Evos. Which one, one man? Order. And there's no setup. Okay, it's gonna be Akai, so... Far okay. Side. Okay, so... That's what I expected. They want to go for the jungler before the roamer because we've discussed that the roamer is the uh, question here for RQ. So they're still hiding their cards. I like what Bangdo is, Bang is doing whoa. here. So Evos still has to pick a, a roamer and a jungler. Will they go for more of a sustained calm like maybe an SS Parats, like you said earlier, just like Alter Ego countering that one one with more more sustain? Will that will that be the case for Evos Legends? You want to know what? This Akai is actually still a flex. It can be played exactly. in the roam position. Ooh. Vinny can play. Is this skill one his first skill? Can cancel the blazing wet. Yeah. Something so. <laughs> That's gonna be a different story though now with Martis and Minsitar now. The one one might be I don't know, somehow challenged, right? With the Minsitar, with the Martis. But that Akai now, it's gonna be the question. Will it be Rome Akai or will it be jungle? Let's see. The last pick. I should not know. This is pretty tricky, man. What Virgin's flex, Akai's Sloki flexed. You know what? I might be crazy here. Does Raphaela work? Not too sure here, honestly. Looking at the composition. The, I understand why you say Raphaela, right? Giving a little bit more movement speed to maybe get out of the King's Calling. Yeah, I prefer the disengage, but Matilda is not an option. Nope. Oh. They go for the Lapu, oh, so indeed. There you go. That, what, that, that's what you Akai said, Akai Flex. Gone. Yeah, it's an Akai Flex, it seems like. Into Rome. The Heavy Spin is going to help him a lot in these skirmishes with the King's Calling as well. It's a proper source of disengage away from that King's Calling. And with the Lapu, like I said, it was not banned out, and it is one of the heroes that Lemon is comfortable with. And also, a bonus is it's meta. Ooh, it is meta. That's one of the most important thing. but comfort above everything. And again, it's a best of three, everyone. It's a do or die. The one who loses this match will go home without any kind of prizes, without any kind of Tickets to MSC. Let's see if RQ or EVOS will take the, the first step towards MSC. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, do, let's see the Land of Dawn. Game three now, in full effect. Game one, EVOS Legends strike first. Game two, RQ equalized. Let's see the conclusion for game three. Let's see who gets a match point. Ladies and gentlemen, EVOS Legends and RRQ. Welcome, welcome to the Land of Dawn for game number three. Ooh, it's 1-1 one, one in Claude, Mirko. 1-1 one, one in Claude, you said earlier. The 1-1 one, one might have an edge in the early game, but once that Blazing Duet is there, once that DHS and uh, Golden Staff is there, it's gonna be trouble for 1-1, one, one, and he has to rush. She has to rush that Wind of Nature to be able to withstand all the damage coming in from uh, that Claude. Well, it seems like here Vin will opt for the tenacity build, not the con uh, emblem, not the concussive blast emblem. So he's looking for the more of a uh, safe, safer and as well as tanky um, option here. But it seems like it's going to be dreams here also on the ten tenacity emblem. You know what? I personally feel like the Minsithar. When we're talking about Minsithar, I prefer him now on the EXP. Mm. If you really want to just give out the if you want to really want to extract the potential of that hero, but prove me wrong, uh, Grant. 
uh, dreams prove me wrong. Well, like, I do uh, see your point here, but from my experience, Minsitar is not much of a trouble in EXP in laning, but Dreams has to pull off the flicker there with the retribution from Albert. Perfect time as the total is still 30 seconds, though. Your retribution, your retribution will still be there when the objective is there. See here again the trade between Sakats and Lemon. Uh, usually, of course, it's going to be Yu Zong has the edge with the spell vamp. Lemon now needs to be careful. We'll just focus on clear though. So, again, both teams now in game three, it seems like both teams are slowing down their pace, slowing down their tempo. They do not want to go in hastily. And it seems like now with the first turtle, Lemon though pulls the first trigger. Uh oh, might have been a bit too early though. The Bravest Finder did. Just a bit of damage onto Psychot. Sans was able to evade onto that, and the Black Dragon form comes in now. Albert's gonna be zoned away. Finn does have the heavy wow. spin, but he's gonna be caught in the Petrify right now as he pops the heavy spin to disengage, giving Evo's Legends much more control over the turtle area. Hijume, oh, almost a steal there. Albert still saving that red tree. This could be it. The battle right now is both the real world inflation and wow. the Feather Airstrike comes down. The Appraiser's Wrath isn't able to save him. That secures the turtle, and it's a double for the Sea Games Indonesian representative, Psychots. Well, that's on Lemon, right? That's on Lemon. The initial engage was a bit too early, as you yeah. said, Miracle. And after that, just diving into his set, basically just going in 1v4 without any spell fight whatsoever. Like, it's recipe for disaster. Yeah, it's a waste of resource, right? I mean, the, the turtle was barely touched, and then he popped the alt for for two tanky units, for Tazan as well as Psychots earlier. So that's and he a, didn't get a stun. He didn't get the damage done. Anything, right? They didn't even poke. So uh, somehow, or perhaps adjustment needed there to uh, coming to this next turtle. But RQ now. Yeah, they lost that trade, they got that, they lost the fight, they lost two members, and they lost the mutual objective. They need desperately now compensation to somehow equalize on that gold area. Bronze already, three minutes in, collected the DHS. So, again, very tough here already for Skylar, perhaps, knowing now Dreams and as well as Akai will be in that top vicinity. Ooh, retribution battle is gonna be insane, man. Like the fact that Mardis has the mortal coil, but the thing is, Finn also has to have his pin. Finn will eye for a chance when the mortal coil is already used. He's gonna try to pin Taz down when the objective takes comes down to it, and pretty much secure the 50-50 or the lack of it for Albert. We're gonna see here fourth minute into the game with a 1,000 gold lead. So far, they haven't really been able to push the tempo further. Wow. But it's just given a given, right? They're both waiting for the neutral objectives. And it seems like here, both teams just, again, Bot lane? slowing to... Oh, is it close? Almost, oh, almost. Magic Worship is enough there. Talking about late game, perhaps that will be enough damage there. But now, it seems like now with the Lord up, Psychot's recall, RQ will definitely step on the gas. Let's see, though. Evos don't have a dragon to play with. That's on cooldown. RQ, they can play with their cooldown too with the Bravest Fighter. Now up again. Lemon utilizing it, but it might actually not be pin. used here with a heavy spin popped in. Lemon gonna be able to find the Bravest Fighter once again onto the back. But it's gonna be Taz who tries to look for the play. Lemon all alone here is able to flicker out, and it's well played. He baits and he zones Evos while RQ takes the objective. Well, unnecessary, a bit unnecessary, right? From Vin and Lemon. I know that he needs to zone away all the members of Evo's Legends. As you can see here, Psychot's actually going for a split push and getting it done in the bottom lane. And he could have done much more, oh. Lemon and Vin, but no! Wow, okay. Good rotation there from uh, Clay to cover to deal with the last minion. Well, it seems like looking at the items here, it's just all standard for now, right? Ice Queen's Wand, First Force that I've Eve, Clock of Destiny already built from Side of Farsa. And of course, DHS and on its way is Golden Staff here for the side of Claude. Meanwhile, Wan Wan, Corrosion and DHS should be their main focus, should be his main focus. But apart from that here, of course, uh, the guy here opted for a Radiant first item here, realizing that there's Hijume, there's Eve on your opposing side. You want to somehow reduce that DOT, that DPS sort of um, attack. It seems like burst damage though from side of Farsa is still a lot for Hijume to handle half HP. Top side though, 
Looks like RR Kill. They might collapse here, looking at their rotation. But nope, it seems like they just also want to play it safe. Interestingly enough, Dreams bought a single dagger there, so I like the approach there. The roamer is not always full, you know, full defense mode. He had to somehow deal damage a little bit, and it's just a just a very very minor item. But I really like the those kind of minor changes. Changes indeed here it seems like, but in the mid side it will somehow be the main focus here from side of RRQ. They're still behind 1,000 gold and the structure bot side has been taken down. It says somehow RRQ again needs compensation, man. They need more space and also they need more gold. Perhaps they might find that compensation in that lower fight, in that turtle fight. But take a look oh, at them and again Lord. wasting the previous fight. Let's see here, Taz can be brought back to the team. Has more to coil play with an Albert wins the retreat battles. Taz is going to be collapsed on right now, but Brand onto the back is able to find a massive blazing duet with Psycho still surviving for some time. Dream bringing Clay back. Lemon with no bravest fighter is going to be chunked quite low here. And again, Arc, you are able to secure an objective, but Lemon, did he need to use that bravest fighter into the mid lane? Did he really need to, or what do you think? Well, use it at the, uh, in the tunnel at the right time, but from what, what we've seen so far, it is just... It, do, it doesn't seem like Lemon really uh, calculated all that hard. As I said earlier, he's a very reactive player, but the calculation is just not there. I agree. I think he was... his intentions were uh, good, right? He wants to perhaps clear faster and also perhaps catch a player or two. But after, <laughs> after Brands just pops the BMI, it's just done now. Again, RRQ is still in defense mode. Bot side might be their main prio now, but reinforcements are coming. Let's see the will a fight breaks. Oh, wow. oh camera wait, what? almost. That was a kill on Clay. Clay. Hijume and Dreams. Wow. I think that was like the Clay already popped the bird and he just stands there trying to poke inside the bush and just gets punished by Hijume not knowing that the whole e boss is there, and that's an easy, easy kill for Hijime. So shout out for him knowing that the spell is not there for Clay. He has to be careful from now on from that kind of potential bush threat from e boss legends. Well, item wise, again, right? Adaptive crossbow here collected. <laughs> but, oh, a fight might break loose here. Mirko. Dreams still right now with the King's Calling. Actually, Lock and Skyler down, but the damage will come through anyways. Dreams, Paul, and Brands. Trying to do the same thing onto Vin now with a blazing duet on him. He soaks all of it in and he's able to survive. A good pickoff for RRQ right before the tour of the Lord spawns into the game. Wow, 103 from France so far and 204 from Hijime. So the main damage dealer is a okay for Evos Legends on the other side, though. Already one death from both of the mid laners and the gold laners of RRQ. 6 3 and 2k gold lead. This is a good time for Evos to push the tempo and try to get the Lord. Again, try to abuse the fact that Lemon is going to be much more reactive. Let's see, let's see here. It seems like Hijume on a Eve. Remember, we mentioned multiple. Oh, Lemon pops. That one is good. Wait, he pops into real world inflation, but he instantly cancels it there. Just trying to utilize the anti CC. But Hijume now with him down, it does feel like RQ will be able to push the tempo. Evo's Legends. I think they might have to concede this one. It's a bit too risky to throw their lead. But no, Vin pops in to conceal. Looking for Dreams right now as he brings him back with a heavy spin, even the flicker. But Dreams is flickering what? over to Skyler right now with the King's Calling. Bidding out the win of nature. Skyler now in the midst of it all. Going to be engaged on as well. Slemon comes in to follow it up. Stun cancelled out by Psychots with the Black Dragon form. 1,000 gold lead left for Evo Stigus as Lemon gets the stun down on Psychots. Albert going to be able to jump in with Brands now with the Blazing Duet. Going to be able to dish out so much damage onto Lemon with a decimation now. Vin, poke low. The Lord is very, very low. Let's see who wins the 50-50. It's going to be Taz Woo! who walks up, steals it, and gets out. Evo playing a risky game but coming out on top. Wow. He is unfazed, Jeff, and my goodness, he does not care that his teammates... Yeah, he finds the decimation kill. He walks into the Lord and finds the retribution in time. Let's take a look at the replay here. My goodness, he's seen here, blazing duet. And take a look at Taz here. He provides cover for his teammate. He walks on towards the Lord, finds Vin as well, helping Yves to pick up the kill. Just click the retribution. No problem, I'm ahead out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ahead out. 
and Lemon once again. That one a good that one was good initial engage, right? Getting the Yeef, but unfortunately I feel like he cancelled it a bit too early there and getting uh CC'd uh -oh. by Lemon, but Vin, ooh, that's a big resources burn as Albert will try to clear the lane as uh the clear the load as soon as possible, but Evos will not try uh will not let it go just yet. Look at the goal, Ghani. Taz is ahead of Skylar. Yeah. I mean, Taz, I mean, Evos, right? Even though it's Loki a low kill if you compare it to game one and two. But it seems like here, Evos Legends, they're doing the right things macro wise here. Now, take a look, all the inner turrets oh. taken down. They're looking for a baser, but don't be greedy, Evos. You have been in this position before where RRQ find the comeback. So, slowly but surely, remember, Vrans is on a Claude. He can somehow whip, find just the right opening. Let's see. Brands still using the BMI. Lemon already in the midst of it all. Jumping in with the Lapu. Albert gonna be hooked back. Finn gonna be spotted in the bush right now as he looks for the goal. He looks for the go. Brands still with the Purify and the BMI is able to kind of wave from Finn. Even dealing damage while he's at it. He was the one CC'd. But Finn's the one who falls. Evo's well played. He didn't even pop the Purify. I was looking at the Purify just waiting for Brands to pop it. But he just uses the BMI. Oh, Brands now. Oh, 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 Brands. Oh, so, so close. Almost. That was a bit too close for comfort. Well, there's no reason to, to pop the beer fire, right? As long as you're dealing damage, getting the shield from, BMI, from the Blazing Duet, and as long as you're confident that you're still gonna survive, the purify just doesn't matter. But the weird part is from Vin Mirko is just the overcommitment. He wants to pin the brands no matter what. Even yeah, exactly. burning the flicker, that was very weird interaction. And again, RRQ, a lot of overcommitments, and they have to tone it down. He really needs to tone it down, right? Again, I mean, what's crazy, Ghani, is the fact that he didn't use the purify and he got out of the heavy spin. That's I feel like that's calculation, right? From Brands. Very, very intelligent play. And now he has collected his uh, Malefic Roar, right? More problem for RRQ to take care of. Oh, another opening. Let's see. Again, wow. Good baits by Evos. Time and time. Able to get these big ultimates out. And it's the Enhanced Lord that is up. No heavy spin on Vin. That means he's still going to be a 50-50 no matter what. So there's no pin. There is no shoe way for Toss. It's going to be harder for Albert to execute this. But he's done it before. Won it now. Is it the time to go for that right now? Look at the brands. It's gonna be able to go down and oh my god, another hook from Dreams. Reading it out perfectly as Albert jumps in with a taunt. Just to put more pressure down on the Lord Pit. They're not pulling it. They're just standing there menacingly facing each other in the eyes. Albert though, gonna be hooked once again. If that strike comes down to the back line, but Psychos jumps in with the Black Dragon from his Albert gets melted down. Lemon with Bravest Spider. Brands with a steal on the Lord and Lemon will be bursted down as well. Evos Legends, they took every single dub in that team fight and they want the end brands with an aggressive BMI forward. Wow, wow, again. Evos knowing when to go and when to not go. Knowing that Vin is not there with the heavy spin, but they want to end? He has the heavy spin now. The Vetrify locks him down with the Furious Tide. The Pope comes in. Vin's still holding the heavy spin. And he finally pops it up. But it's only onto the Roamer with the King's Calling. Plays down. Vin and Skyler won't be able to move right now as he drives flickers forward. Onto Vin. Chasing the lone <laughs> panda down. He gets the shielding. Whoa. But the slow. He's able to dodge for now. He says goodbye to the panda as he takes him down up top. Bottom lane base turret falling as well. Evo's Legends with a 9,000 gold lead marching down. Icon still has the Black Dragon form here. Let's see if he's gonna pop it up. Toss trying to go in with the Retro Queen. Dude, Skylar knows that the threat is there. Popping the Inspire, that's also a big resource. Just burn, and Evos again. Just cleaning all the turrets available for RRQ. Not a dub for the taking. Well, it seems like now, again, RRQ, they can find another day, though. It's a 9,000 gold lead. Check out the items, right? Hijume with the utility build. Also, semi-utility build, right? Ice Queen's one, glowing one, but he, wa he wants a Divine Glaive as well. He wants to penetrate his enemies. And of course, taking a look at Claude. Very smart animization. I like it. When the nature rose gold, why? Clay can be a problem for this guy, but another engage happens now. It's only on the Dreamstone. That's the Roma right now with the crossbow tank popped in, but it's gonna be Vin. Brands in the back line, looking at the damage, and even the base 
with a BMI. Everyone was focused on to Brands. He buys enough time as Psychots now will be able to wreak oh. havoc. But somehow, someway, it's Brands with a double kill. Lemon and Clay. The two members are left standing with the Tigers. They keep going. They hunt their prey down. Clay gonna be able to stun two members down as the mini waves crashing in will mean that Evos takes match point. It is brand centric indeed, but what are you gonna do about it if he actually plays it out? 507 on Claude on his power hero. This guy is definitely worthy to be taken in Z Games. Oh my. Goodness, EVOS legends, they were able to just find and suffocate RRQ in this game. What happened? Well, again, Captain Psychots displayed a, a very intelligent Yu Zong. He's able to just somehow zone the members away with the Black Dragon form. But I also want to note that Claude, I don't think now RRQ can let go of the Claude now. Sure. They were able to withstand the pressure last game. But this time, it's a, it's a different different, uh, different case. Martis was a, also a problem. Very hard to contest mutual objective for going up against the Martis and the Claude. Now, no one really can, can really stop the Claude. Sure, you, that was the task of Akai. But in that game, what happened was, Akai was, the heavy spin was forced earlier before Brand steps in. So that was a very good play from the side of EVOS Legends where they bait out the heroes, the resources from the side of RRQ. Then Brand shows on map with that blazing duet. And at that point, you have no stopper. You have no one that can, one, cancel out that blazing duet, two, can really stop, uh, can really soak in the damage at that point, right? It was at that point, what? 7,000, 9,000 gold lead. That was a little bit too much where the damage output from the side of EVOS Legends were greater than the de defense input, the defense items that were collected by the side of um, EVOS Legends. So again, very good display of macro and micro. It was a rather quiet game if you compare it to game one and two. But usually in that game, the amount of intensity, the mindset, was just burning at that point, right? Because you would rather go in action-packed without thinking, right? But in a slow game, in a very, very controlled tempo game, that's where usually you use more of your brain to not make mistakes, to also somehow be better than your opponent. Again, RRQ in this game, I see still disconnect, right? Game two, it was slightly better. It was better. There was no disconnect in game two. I feel like, sure, a little mistakes here and there. It's normal. But the disconnect was, again, evident here for us out of RRQ, like in game one, whereas the chemistry weren't really, I'm not really feeling the chemistry here. Remember, Barca is more prio in this current patch, right? For more than one reason. But Hijume on a heave in this game actually creates more impact than the Farsa did. Remember in game two earlier, it was Clay on that Farsa who grabbed the MVP. But this game, different story. Why? Evos adjusted. They also were all just the Yu Zong man. Right? Yeah. The Yu Zong, the draft earlier. The you guys Diggy Ban. The Adrian. Diggy Ban. The Diggy Ban, sure. But then you can respond with a uh, Farsa and the Yud Song instead of the Fred Drain, right? Exactly. That is a very good option here. Well, a very good approach, perhaps, should it be, should we enter the game next game? We should enter it, but 16 minutes game time here. It's gonna be the Farsa and Skylar here not having a good time, right? See, Farsa, Clay, good stats, but his teammates were, I don't know, very hard to come by here to follow it up to keep it up. Meanwhile, Psychots on that Yuzong. Check it out, man. 417 on the Yuzong and Hijume hopped off. Again, France deserved everything here. It's gonna be a very, very interesting match ahead. But what happened more was that game was just easy, right? This, this combo here is very simple. I'm gonna keep it simple here. It's a Cloud, Yuzong, and Yi. Remember, this is the composition that also brought EVOS Legends to the ISF Cup, right? Yif, Hijume, Yu Zong, and Claude with the Beatrix, of course, Lear. Very simple, but 
very effective, right? You don't need to go crazy. Yu Song, particularly single-handedly with the Black Dragon form, they, he was able to, Saikas was able to more than enough withstand, open up map, providing the damage, soak in the damage, providing crowd control as well. This time around, Mirko and Chefin, Psychots is the provider of the family, right? Of EVOS Legends family. He's able to provide every, little bit of everything. Damage there, crowd control there, sandbag there, right? And also with the help of positioning, the Yves positioning, he was able to just also help with the real world population. Claude, good engage, right? When the resources are not there, when all of the cooldowns from the side of ROQ were already, already put out. Then the Claude jumps in. Take a look at Brands here being the executor in this game. Rich Guy and the carry, of course. Meanwhile, the jungler from ROQ. Albert will be the sandbag, but Hijume will be the forgotten one. MVP, I gotta say, sure, Brands deserves it. Yeah. But, I mean, thankfully, right, all of the members understand that they need to debate the Feather Eye Strike. They need to bait the Bravest Fighter. They need to bait the Heavy Spin. And that is just, that makes Brance's job easier. Yeah, it's hard, man. I do agree that Brance is the MVP. It's a perfect game, right? Zero death, most gold and most DPM, GPM. It's just insane. Like, the fact that you're a Claude too, and it definitely enhanced by the fact that the other members of his teammates popping off. Psychots, I want to give it I want to give the you know shadow MVP towards Psychos because I haven't seen a single blunder for this guy in Yu Zhang and also Hijume. Pretty much, the, it's just all of Arki's tension cannot be placed towards a single guy. Just Yu Zhang going in with the Black Dragon form or re real world manipulation and just placing the wet too. It's just all over the place. The attention cannot be um, focused on a single guy, and that's why Brands is able to pop off with this power hero. His one of the best heroes in the game for gold laner, Mirko. I'll give you the real answer as to why the Yuzong wasn't picked up by RRQ. We haven't seen Lemon play it at all. That's the thing. Uh, when it comes down to his hero pool, it is there's a lot of heroes, a lot of cheese picks. But when it comes down to the meta, he's very limited. Lapu to Rizla. Edith. I won't say that's meta. <laughs> Winsathar, probably. Well, I guess but you can he see here the gold curve. Very, glue. very stacked. And glue in there. Yeah, the glue is there too, because he used it earlier versus a 1 1. Did he get the W? No, he actually loses, but it's still a very good sewing, right? But in this case, a lot of mistakes from Lemon, a lot of mistakes from Vin being too reactive, being too. Like, the micro is not there, calculativeness is not there. And yeah, again, I said this over and over again, it's always tone it down, just tone it down a little bit, and oh, yes! Give yes. it to the man. Yeah. I want it. Yu Zhong, 417. He, again, like I said, he's the provider of the uh, of this game towards Evolves Legends. Giving a little bit of everything in that game to facilitate, to provide for his team. And well-deserved, right? Again, this, why, this is why the draft. Uh, RQ, they should prior that Yu Zhong. Maybe. Yeah, you're right. We mentioned it as well. Lemon perhaps is not really um, comfortable on that um, Yute song, perhaps. So that is the loophole that EVOS Legends, they were able to exploit that fact, right? And again, it's uh, GG destroying the RQ's backline. And again, a very good execution from the side of the Psychops, right? Heat map, take a look at this. EXP, 5 minute 10. Focus on towards the EXP, but not do not forget the mid lane. You need to ra rotate to help the mid lane, right? With the Yuzong, you need to be very active. And let's take a look here, Sheffin and Mirko, what happened in game one and game three, rather, to recap. It's gonna be a very, very interesting indeed. Here, even from the first total take, right? It's uh, already favoring towards the side of EVOS Legends. And man, Psychops. Either he's in the back, you blink, he's in the back, you blink, and then he's in the front, right? With the Yu Zong, with the Black Dragon form. Very easy and very, again, he's just everywhere in the map, right? He's always ready. Human form, Dragon form, he does not care. Here, Yu Zong can see him trying to zone out the members. Again, Yu Zong, Dragon form already, looking for targets, looking for. Who can I provide now? Right, is the question that you know, Psychot's asking himself. Who can I provide now? Is it my mid lane? Is it my uh, 
gold lane. Or is it just me wanting more here? Very good setup here. The Petrify connected on towards the right target as well. Distracting and that passive was just a sublime, sublime assist for Brown to take down. But ladies and gentlemen, that is game three. Match point for the White Tigers. It's two to one. RRQ, they were able to equalize in game two. The question is, where is there still? Oh, do, do they have the spirit now? Orashi is somewhere right now, shaking and shivering. Just, oh, oh my God. One more okay. game and I'm out. <laughs> Looking for Orashi right now. Can't seem to find him. Unfortunately, but it's fine because he can always just grab here with grab car or grab bike with a 90% discount code. You guys can too. Hey, even grab some snacks with grab food, right, Chevin? Yep. You do it a lot at home. You grab food. Or do you grab something else? I actually uh, do grab food, but I haven't been using it much recently because there's too much food in, the, in my home. And you can see here at the booth uh, in the stage in GX4 Arena. Again, if you want to come here, go get it with Grab. 90% discount. And if you want to win MLBB Hero skin, also get ready for the Grab Challenge on March 18th. For more details, check out grb.to slash MPL. Also, the promo code to MPL IDX Grab. grb.to slash MPL. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're perhaps intrigued more, if you, in, you're, you want to know more, right? Scan the QR code below, moi. All right, wah, wah. check it out. Let's reset here. I can't wait. Let's. Uh, I want to feel the vibe of El Clasico. This is because this is potentially what we're about to see. It's going to be the last game of one of the teams, right? It's going it to be, be one game, one last game for RQ if EVOS Legends is able to squeak this out, ladies and gentlemen. Again, it's two to one now. I expect changes, right? RQ, please, oh please, Arashi, pray so that your team is able to find their jam, their rhythm, because it's like it's like game one. I see no connection in that fight. During team fights, even during turtle takes or objective takes, they need to fight, figure out a quick recipe, quick formula that can stand because, you know, again, we mentioned it in the pregame that EVOS Legends, they're low-key a structured team. They know their structures. They know how to execute their game plan. You know what their structure is? What? Brands. Brands-centric, right? Protect brands at all costs is their way to go. If not, I got to say, I'm saying it right here, this is going to be the last game. If RQ does not find their rhythm. What do they do now? They want the Claude, but they need. do they need first pick? Do they need to maximize that first pick? Well, I need. I think. I need. I think they need to chill. And the only way to chill here is to download Max Stream. Whoa! <laughs> it's a top that has a lot of uh, original shows here, and you can see here also there's also a Max Stream booth in GX Bo Arena. So there's a lot of exclusive original content, like there is love in the game, love coach with Rachel, the one belief, rush, ah, the Wonder Kid, Ooh. and Gony, Call Ak Express. Call Ak. Call Ak. You know, A C K, Cole Ack Express. But it's Cole Ack with a K O L A K. Don't miss out right. on cool and exciting shows. Watch only on Max Stream. Check Go it out. Download it. Check it out. On your Samsung phone right now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be game number three. Game number three. Yeah. Into man. game number four we go. Game numero cuatro. Fun fact Fun. Alter Ego, how they beat RQ was three to one in the series. So right now, RQ really hates the number three to one. I guess. So, what's next, Gani? What's next, Gani? What's next? Yeah. It's game four. Game numero cuatro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, two to one. EVOS Legends, all they need to do now is focus. All right, they tend to somehow also get overzealous. They need to believe. Yeah, they need to get conceive overzealous usually. And then oh. achieve. Believe, conceive, and achieve. They need to be the samurais. They need to make EVOS look like average blokes. Average blokes? I like the, I like the like the term there, but man, your term. What? Okay, the first game, I voted for RIQ. Second game, I voted, voted for EVOS. Third game, I voted for RIQ. It looks you like are it's, the curse. it's contagious, Mirko. No, I am, so far, I am mere blessing every single team I predict in the town prediction. I did not want this to, to happen, but it is happening. Alter Ego, I predicted in the town prediction for them, 
they won against BTR, and then again against RQ, and then uh, Evo's beat Geek, and now it's Evo's beating RQ, so Mirror Bless is on full effect right now. We'll see if RQ can break that, because hey, man, it's gonna be pretty tough, Ghani. Oh, it's very tough, right? It's looking at their composition, well, looking at their situation here. Bangdok, come Bang on, Duk. wake up, all right? Come on, bring wake your up. team together. So that in the light of dawn, it can translate through. So, Evo's Legends now, it's... Look at Browns, right? He's cold. He's cold, all right? Game recap, though, it's a little bit of a landslide here. I expect, again, from the drafts, right? A Claude ban should come through. Just that. That, that just makes more sense. Uh, uh, and if, except, RRQ is on the blue side. Well, yeah, that's the exception. Or maybe, just want to have a swag points, just want to have a style points, just don't bend the clot and leave it to Skylar and try to counter it. <laughs> that might be a recipe for disaster, but at least you get the swag points. But let's see here. I'm going to give you guys a spoiler. I'm going to pick RQ for this match because, yeah, I want to end this <laughs> as soon as possible. So there you go. It's a Sheffin curse and Mirror Blast somehow. I don't know how we swap places, Sheffin, but here we are. RRQ game number four. A lot of adjustments need to be made here, not just in the draft, but in how they tackle the game, how they execute their game plan, because, man, Lemon on the Lapu, his signature pick. There was a lot of miscalculations, like you nope. mentioned here, that he needs to refine in game four. If that doesn't happen, Evos might just knock RRQ out. Here it is, the draft. RRQ do not take first pick. Still Evos with the first pick, and <laughs> there is still yeah. no Claude ban yet. Adjustment made for Evos with a Diggy ban, as in game number three, but will RRQ also adjust with a Claude ban is the question here. I do think that's one of the keys to victory for this game. You've seen how brands can pop off with the Claude, with the right support in Hijime and Psychots with the MVP Dragon there. Send it to you by Samsung Galaxy S23 series. Oh lordy. The confidence. There's always a thin line between confidence and arrogance, Connie. And what do you think it is? That is called uh, obsession. Right? Obsession, okay. So you're touching the question there. <laughs> obsessed. If you're, obs you're an obsessed person, you will do everything every time. Well, let's see. Claude <laughs> just respect. Again, three games in a row here. Given towards Eva, sure they can defend and win that first game. <laughs> But RQ now, they will switch it up. It will still be the Forest sub, but now not the Fredrin. They will secure the Arlet. I expected the Yu Zong, but they will pick up the Arlet. I'm telling you, man, he doesn't play the Yu Zong, and the Yu Zong is still wide open for the taking for Eva Evos. Because the thing is, Arlet Yu Zong is a skill matchup. So far, I would say Psychots has been outlaning Lemon. So picking up the Yu Zong here would make a lot of sense. Why not? Just stick to the plan, man. Real world inflation had so much of the team yep. with this comp already and with the far side of the enemy team. I don't see why they should change. I really don't. Like, there's nothing from the side of RQ right now that forces Evos to change their drafts. It was on my uh, board right earlier. Claude, Yu Zhong, and as well as Eve, the, the CYY effect in first phase. Oh, three no. games, they have collected that. And now this time, RQ. Okay. 1-1, one, one, carry, Brody, which is it going to be? It's going to be the 1-1 one, one again I'm, against the Claude. I am really worried that Nasi Udu or Bangtuk will be the next victim here. Oh, uh, no. What victim? M4. What victim are you talking about here? Well, oh, you know what? You know who cares? I'm, I'm not. I'm not a big shot. Like even if I, my uh, my Instagram is off, but <laughs> oh I don't really God. care. He's uh, doing it. He's well, doing it. Like, yeah. Estus not banned in M4. Ah, chill. Transform to Adi. If Claude is not banned here in MPL ID, what will Bang Duke transform to? Mas Duke? I mean, he was Nasi Udo back in the day, so. Well, Mbak yeah. Mbak Duke. Mbak Duke. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna be the second phase, and it seems like it's the Minsetar now banned out. Uh, very interesting, why right? Dreams were. I don't know, his impact on that Minsetar game wasn't really evident, but I guess it. Creates a nuisance for side of one. One Evos Legends now. What will we have? In Go for the same pants, no? Like the Franco and the Kufra or the Atlas. Franco and Atlas now, I think, it might be the option for Evos Legends just to nail mm -hmm. Arcus Hero Pool for Vin down. 
it's definitely an option, but the first one to pick here is going to be RRQ. So let's see if they're going to pick the Roamer first before EVOS, or will they hide their cards like usual before this and try to pick the Roamer in the last phase, letting EVOS reveal all their, all their cards. But I was going to say, like, why not pick up the Lancelot a... themselves here? Ban yeah. another hero, right? Usually they ban out the Lancelot here. Pick up another hero. If they go ban... for the Lancelot here, Evos can pick up the Kufra, and that's so much CC. I mean, so much okay. dashes okay. to play with. But it's a single target, though. Like, what I mean is the that the bouncing ball, mind. The bouncing ball only will, uh, you know, counter either Lancelot or that one, one but it doesn't matter as the Lancelot is going to be banned as in the usual matches in the second phase, there's been a lot of Lancelot ban here. I believe it's just because of how uh, capable Toss and Albert is on this Lancelot. What is it going to be, Gani? Atlas here, Franco. Franco. I only see Franco here again. Um, a Franco ban just makes sense, right? I mean, it worked out for EVOS Legends when they were banning out the Franco. Two games in a row. Three games, yeah. Two games in a row. One did not work out, but one, they managed to fill it up. Not the uh, Franco. Perhaps they're eyeing for I another hero here. Oh, it's going to be the higher Busa, though. So they expect a change. So RQ, actually, now they can pick up the Franco. Ooh, look at this. Evos legend. An actual Evos legend. In the M1 lineup, Donkey here together with the, one of the global. Mio players in Indonesia, Pastol. There you go, watching. I wonder who they're rooting for here. Uchi, I wonder. RQ with a Lolita pick up here. Evos Legends with the response. Up against a Lolita. What do you want to go for? Do you want to go for a Kufra yourself? I don't think you can go for the Franco here because of the Lolita picked up already. Yeah. Kufra, mm. Franco, Grok. Grok. Grok is an interesting pick. Grok works. Rockworks, right? I mean, not much options left here on the board. This is going to yeah. be Martis and Grog, because just to nullify all the easy CCs coming in from RRQ, but let's see here. But whoa, oh, they're going to stick to the gods in Franco and Akai. Oh, yeah, I like the Akai pick, but the Franco pick here, oh. We've seen how Franco did against Lolita back then with Beloisky using it. It doesn't really work as much but to be fair though like the composition is just all over the place for a kick at the time i believe so this time this time around dreams might be pulling off something that's unthinkable final Let's pick see. for rq what is it going to be anything he picks will not be able to contest any neutral objectives unless they go for a very very I would say if the Akai gets picked up, the Benedetta is a solid jungler that can actually have a lot to say in the neutral objective contest with the mobility oh, yeah, as well. I no, it's the <laughs> Frederick. Should. Bit too risky to pick the Benedetta, you know. Frederick it is, is a big always, risk, yeah. but it is always the standard pick. What the Frederick here against the Akai? Well, it just comes down to like how they're gonna exhaust that heavy spin before that 50-50 begins, just like the other game. But this time around, it's tossed with the Retribution, so it's not going to be in the front line that much. Wind will try to, I mean, the Dreams will try to tank that much damage for uh, EVOS Legends, but we'll see if that's the case in game two. Oh, game, game number four, I believe. Let's see, let's see, ladies and gentlemen, the Heroes has been set. Potentially the last game of the series. Remember, RRQ, they are in the hot seat. If they fail to win this game, they we'll will go home. go home. Their run for MSC will be gone. Land of Dawn. Let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The Land of Dawn. RRQ's last hope is in this game. Will they equalize or will they fall for the first time in four seasons out of Grand Finals? Let's see if they'll actually go for the MPL ID throne or make their own throne instead in their gaming house. So far though, RRQ in the back foot, two to one. EVOS Legends might be eyeing to close out this series, but right now looking at the pathing here, Dreams, very, very trying to pressure the goal lane here. 
Of course, of course, here, looking at the rumor, of course, he, they really want to somehow get and pressure the gold lane. But it seems like, again, with the uh, emblems here, Vin and Lemon opting for the same emblems, right? Tenacity, so again, they're heavily relying the damage from Clay and Skylar. Sure, Aubrey can dish out some damage. Wow. Oh, good hook! Good hook, Vin brought back already. That's a lot of HP, burns out for Vin. Pop to regen, though. Is it worth a flicker for that play? Ooh, might be not, actually, but Grants definitely having more, more having better time with Whoa. Uh, that flicker burnt out. But Grants, man, like the micro plays, the side steps, and the ways that he played the last tax in his back to prevent the stun is just insane, man. Like, this guy deserves the CK stun for sure. Yeah, give him style points, man. The flicker hook doesn't really matter when if it's taken down, but give the points. Now, it's again, quite slow two minutes here. Not much of uh, action to per se. But it's gonna be the turtle now already. Oh, heavy spin popped. And it's on to Albert. The Fury's time to follow it through. Albert taken very low. Actually might be taken down here. First blood over to the White Tigers. Evos, Legends, as they look for the turtle now. Taz has the red tree. I don't know about this, man. Vin with the Moonlight Blast gonna be canceled out. He flickers forward, finding Taz. Wow. Lemon jumps in, and that might just be the steal coming in, but Psychos is there. Vin is the one who takes it for RQ. Psychos wanting to find a kill now, jumping onto Vin. But that's gonna be the damage coming through once again for the side of RQ. What a steal, what a play. Yeah, no one expected that. The fact that you don't have any retribution and you still wanna go for it, and in the end, you get the turtle, you get a kill towards the jungler. My, that was a really good shot call. That yeah, was a very good, uh, again, execution, good chemistry. Again, EVOS Legends, I'm gonna honestly say chemistry because it seems like that is what RRQ is lacking for the past, yeah, past game, right? And this time round, RRQ, let's see, let's see. They are moving on towards the top side. What they need to do now is looking at their situation here. Oh. Again, very slow pace. <laughs> oh, if Dreams gets that hook, well, give him another style point. Style point, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say like, what, what is he gonna do with that? But Hijum, hey! Forced to for forced to use the reload manipulation. Doesn't really need it though, as Taz actually cancel it out. But still, more of a safety point there instead of style points. Well, looking at, at again, the talents. Ooh. Told you. Okay. Told you. Let's see if the chef and curse is real. Okay, it's only if we, let's see if this uh, will extend to four. As right now, RQ with that turtle just now moving on to an 800 gold lead. Not that big of a lead, but any lead is fine for you at this point. Like, you don't want, you don't want to have uh, a disadvantage game for you in this kind of situation. Two to one, and you have to win in this position. Toss! Final slash and everything with a feather airstrike Yikes. too. So ultimate's burnt out. 14 seconds for the turtle. That will be proper time for RQ to set up here, but that's a feathered airstrike and a final slash wasted too. How long is the cooldown on both those ultimates? Well, I think for now it's around wow. 30. But oh, bloody hunt. Everything used, and there you go. Bottom side, they weren't able to find Taz. Top side, they are able to find Skyler with Finn. Taken very low. Nimina Blast is charged in, but. I don't think that's really going to be able to do anything except for buy some more time. Emos Legends weren't able to siege the turret down, not getting a single hit onto the turret shield. And RQ, do they come out on top in that trade? I think they do come out on top, but that's an intelligent play from Evos, man. The fact that they really know that the heavy spin is not there. And also, it's a Franco. You're going to uh, most likely lose that roaming or securing position. Um, from Vin, so they choose to go for a gold laner pick, but that was that was a big gamble. Like all the ults poured in, all the flickers poured in. In the end, it pays off a little bit. That was a huge gamble, right? Still here, everything still. I feel like can the balance here. Very, very a steady, very even game. Evos Legends, they do not want to go crazy in their match point here. It seems like they do not want to go for the gamble, quote unquote, plays. Oh my oh, God! Stun. Beautiful on to Vin right now, but it's gonna be Brands who gets locked down. That's a kill over to Evos Legends. Brands trying to run away right now, but it is Lemon who picks up the kill with the final slash. Evos still able to do some damage control as they clear out the waves. Dreams, that hook will be sidestepped away from by Clay. And meanwhile, Psychot, always this menace in the other side of the map. 
just taking an objective for his team. It's two times right now. Lemon has been letting the turret go very, very early in the game. Just not the, not clearing the lane first before he goes towards a cross line map gang. Is that, a, is that a bad thing, Connie? Well, looking at it, right, they were rotating as fire towards the south side. What was oh the goal? God. The goal was to get the brands, to get brands, right? They did. They did get brands, but fortunately, for side of Evo's Legends, there's compensation. Cyclops claiming that structure bot side means that perhaps Evo's Legends will can play around that bot side wow. area. And that means to be careful here from set of our kill. Because with that in mind, Arlet now needs to take care of that lane. Last turtle here will go up. It seems like Evo's Legends do not want to give Albert the perfect turtle in this game. I don't know though, Lemon has the final slash. He can't actually say a lot in this team fight, but a bloody hunt comes down, beautifully placed onto Lemon to stop that final slash from happening. And that's going to be an easy, clean turtle take for Evo Legends, finally getting one on the board for themselves. The Psychos clears that bottom lane. Dreams is waiting in the bush. Albert reads it out and gives Skyler a bit more space to farm and cut the waves. Brands, look at Brands just having an easy time, but Psychos! Wow! Read that perfectly! He pops the Fury Dive in time, and I think he might actually be able to escape because of that. Now with the Black Dragon form, he does. Beautiful deny, but up top, it might be a solo kill. Brands versus Lemon. We've seen this before. Purify oh. by Brands. No reset on the Vengeance from Lemon. Toss trying to follow it up. No? Okay, but still, Brands getting the turret very, very freely without any kind of compensation for RQ. Yes, there is a trade, but the trade happens when you're pouring a lot of resources towards your EXP laner, towards your uh, that Cyclops Yuzhong, in the end Cyclops didn't get taken down, so I think that's a W for EVOS once again. Another dub indeed here, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna be a very, very uh, tough battle now for the side of EVOS Legends. Oh, well, EQ, because now two stuck turns. They can, oh, catch. Another beautiful catch right now. It's a blazing duet. Goes behind over to Guardian's Bulwark. The Numina Blast is going to be cancelled out as the BMI comes down. Skyler will be able to maneuver all around, but Hijabe falls before the weakness points can be popped. So no crossbow of Tang, just a trade. Hijabe for Vin, definitely still worth it for RRQ. Good response. Right from side of RRQ, they were able to see the opportunity where, yeah, no bloody hunt. It was on towards Vin. And Hijume, he was caught there, isolated and taken down. A very good um, transition from side of RRQ, who lost a member, betrayed it for a worthy, a more worthy hero. Let's see here. How will Evos manage the lanes? They have Yujong, so they have a bit of rotation there with the Black Dragon of Com form can catch up in team fights real fast so that's a plus for them in late game in terms of late management but we'll see will our RQ be able to catch up to that you know force error team fight there you go dreams of the flicker onto clay and an iron hook to seal his fate that's the mid laner taken down mid lane turret tier one gonna be taken down as well as brands just places some damage back onto Albert sure they're gonna be able to find some compensation here with dreams falling but Hey, if you're Evos, you'll be happy with that trade. Happiest yeah. ever. Happiest ever. A turret and a kill trade? You'll take that any day. It's a mid laner too and a roamer. Toss still has the retribution and fast. Brands can still pop off as he picked up the course of side. See here, our here. They're stepping on towards a fight here, it seems like. Toss though. Uh oh. Once Final again. slash already. Black Dragon form now used. To open up the map as Lemon is going to be poked down. Feather Ish right comes down as Taz pops in a heavy spin. Right now, going to be able to push the pace. And Taz wins it out. Oh. That's a cancel as well. On the non blast. Crossbow oh. with Tang is ready. It's going to be popped, but it's only on to the frontliners. Taz buying a whole lot of time in Evo's Legends. It's a two for one trade. Two kills for the Lord. Brands now kiting Lemon away as he jumps in with a vengeance. Jumps in with a final slash. Oh Lemon, God. let's see if he does it. The damage comes through. Brands. Wins it out, a beautiful play by Evos and Dreams with the conceal as well to get Brands out. Once again, Evos getting the better trade and right now they're not gonna rush the Lord as looks like RQ will just clear this up real easy because there's not much resources. Look at the ult, look at the spells from Evos Legends. They're just gonna let this go and trying to make you know, another compensation there in the bottom lane with the turret. What a calculation earlier, but wow. another hook lands. They will not commit on towards the hunt yet. No! 
Numina Blast on towards anyone. They're but chasing, they're chasing, oh they're chasing. God, what? Why did they chase? They chased into a real world manipulation. Skyler is down. Cyclops is running wild in the back line. Playing with the wings by wings. Able to escape. RRQ in shambles. What, what did Skyler just do? Wow, wow, they miscalculated that again, the overt commitment play. Oh my goodness, now they're defending here, tier two. All taken down, Baster is left, Lord at 90 seconds. Taking away at the items already, right? Here, Farsa, quite behind here if you compare it to Yiv, where of course the damage from Yiv will be greater. 1-1, one, one. already the items, but no good opening so far, right? Win, win, Wind Talker has been collected. But again, they need that Three, opening to two. activate this one one where actually Claude is just independent, right? 4-1-3, items done. UBS gold here, players gold. 9,000, almost 10,000 here. He is an, on another level. Rich guy brands. Rich yep. guy brands. As said, but West Gold trust in gold, but man. Brands is definitely the one to trust, but Skyler, what was that? I think he's been watching too much Suicide, Suicide, Suicide Squad. So he's taking that literally, and right now, Brands is definitely trying to make something happen with a lot of resources in hand, but Albert. Seal play. Seal right now, Brands getting out with the BMI, the final slash only onto Taz. Who has that spin? Oh, oh, oh. Taz actually takes him out of the real world inflation. This could be bad for Evo Legends. A lot of miss. Communication there in the fight, and RQ capitalized with the chaos that they were able to force onto Evos. Lemon jumps in. Oh, final slash not connecting there. Brand's able to get out with the BMI. Very good reaction play there. Oh, feather airstrike to poke it, um, to poke Claude away. Lord is up though. Desperate play. Free play here, free Lord perhaps. Let's see what will Evos do to delay the take. Let's say it's gonna be Psychos right now. First it oh. down, Brands coming in. Marwood Nature saves Skyler for a bit. Fan gonna be pulled back. And that's gonna be the kill coming in. Brands picks up the unstoppable. Angel Man, will he be able to steal this one? No, he will not. RRQ want to stay in this game, want to stay in the series and in the playoffs. Ooh. This is the weakness of the Franco Com. It's a hit or miss. And once you didn't start with a really good hook, and you gotta have to somehow engage with other tools, it's not gonna work, or it's harder to work, as you see there, Psychot's going in with the Furious Dive. Unfortunately, not a single one of our human members is getting knocked up, and that spells trouble for EVOS. They cannot collapse, especially Brantz, he's been playing very, very safely, still has the Purify, and you know what, Brantz, he hasn't finished his boots yet. Oh my, nah. good catch. Wait, but will they collapse? Nah. He's not gonna use that bloody hunt, there was no one to actually follow it up. That could have been massive. But Evo's Legends will have to defend this. Another hook goes out. Level spot out. Not connecting, but look at Taz. Slowly but surely, and look at Brands. They want to try to build somewhat of a split push, I believe, here. But RQ is most probably going to be able to read that out. They're already rotating down below. Brands, he's staying a bit. Wow. Wow, he's staying for so long. Now Skyler's on the chase. Let's see, 1v1. With a nature, both already. Brands will lose this one out. Oh my god. A good comeback there, a Skyler with the Wind of Nature play. And now, with 30 seconds down, it Ooh. might spell trouble for inside of EVOS Legends. RRQ, they're able to find that loophole that they need. Fortunately, Rans were all alone but outside. Not he had the clear. Purify. He didn't use it. The Purify takes away the weakness points, right? Exactly. Why didn't he press that one? And why was he... Oh my god, I don't know. Panic. Tier two. tier 2, yeah, Tier 2 now taken down. It's gonna be 7 seconds on that Lord. See, this is the thing, right? EVOS Legends, they lost a member, but there's no Lord to play around with. So again, Forza of us EVOS Legends. Meanwhile, when RRQ, they uh, got kidnapped per se, or got picked off, there's always a Lord to play around with. So that's just so unfortunate for out of RRQ. Now, all they can do is, of course, doing the invades here. But even that, right? Taz is there to deny that away. Still equal in gold, but 400 gold lead for RRQ. But in terms of map pressure, also equal. So it, it depends on how they'll on the push and how they'll camp pit out. And Dream's looking like he's, he wants to go for a flank here. A, a Dream's original flag. 
no flank. And again, looking at the items here, it's just, it's just very much standard, right? Yeah. DHS, Malefic Roar, Golden Staff, Corrosion, Wind of Nature, Force out of the pod. Meanwhile, 1-1 one, one here. He might opt for a Rose Gold Meteor, actually, mm -hmm. seeing his uh, item here. So he wants extra safety and extra shielding. Let's see, though. Will it come through or not? Will it come clutch or not, right? Now, RQ, it's going to be a very equal game. Lord, though, this time is going to be up. Let's see the execution turret-wise and as well as, I might say, gold-wise at this point, right? It's very equal. Yeah, it's a harder job for Dreams to land the hooks here compared to Vin. Can play much more reactively and with a cut and get with a moment blast, it's easier. So right now, Dreams has a lot of burdens on his shoulder. Trying to make something happen here. Vin, conceal play already popped. A bit too early, maybe, here. Zemos can still make a way inside of the Lord Pit. Vin has been spotted. And now it's going to be very hard for Vin to look for a position again to look for those Numenon Blasts. Mid lane going to be shoved in by Evo's Legends. Divine Glaive bought by Hijume. Lemon, what? He jumps in. Lemon again with a play. But it ends up being a play worth it for Evo's. Clay, the Purify is down. Black Dragon form gets popped. Lemon down. Sheffin and Ghani. I'm already bored of uh, talking it out, man. Like, Lemon once again. Final slash to to remember, I guess, and not knowing the potential members of Evo's Legends. Whoa, 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 whoa. Four people, Brass being oh, way by. Oh. too brave here. Ben, it ends I up being a yeah. great bait. Yeah. Hey, Inspire already with the Wind of Nature already and, and a man back. advantage. That should just be Evo's Legends now with a massive advantage. Whoa. He utilized it perfectly, but my goodness, does Clay have something to say about it? Albert walking up once again. Taz, no heavy spin. Oh, oh. my god. What is he on? His team underperforms, but Albert will be able to steal the Lord. Walks up like a Chad, takes it away, and says, we're here to play. The young prince denies the Lord. And EVOS legends now are forced to defend RRQ. Let's see now, will they be able to defend? Well, EVOS Legends, will they be able to defend RQ? Will they be able to end the game? With Clay, with Lolita, I gotta say, they have this potential, right? Made number eight, minute number 18, EVOS Legends though, their high ground is also very, very strong. So it's not an easy task for RQ to penetrate the base. It's harder here. Ben, might be charging for a blast. Brands holding it off. Taz now to be able to dash Forwards, that's the final slash connecting onto Taz already. Psychos, Micromanic Waves, Brand's doing the same thing in the bottom lane. Mid lane base turret has been cracked wide open by the Enhanced Lord right now as the real world inflation comes down to take them and he's over. Taz gonna be able to pin two Whoa! members down, bring them back right now as Vin is gonna be melted down. He's fire, oh my god, what a hook from Dreams! Vin will fall and it's a double for Brand. Psychos with a Black Dragon form, running Skylar down, isolating oh Albert as Brand is still able to pop the win of nature. 3-4-0 for the Tigers. Wow. This is G -G -G, Clay, and as well as Skyler now, the left one no. standing. Let's Skyler, see. will you do it? Let's no, see, okay. no, he will not, of course. But this might be it. Let's see, 20 seconds on Lemon. 20 seconds on Vin. Will they be up in time? That's the big question. RRQ, they're thrown is at risk. Brands with a battle mirror image, only one base turret down, and RRQ can let go a sigh of relief. No commitment from Evo's Legends to end the game, but the crowd goes wild for this game, for this series. Wow, intelligent placement of feathered airstrike there, man, from Clay. These little things just helps the game much more. RRQ managed to clear, managed to clear the lane and see another day, and if that were not the case if they actually got the hook towards Clay, it might be a different story right now. So, shout out to Clay. Shout out to Clay, indeed. And take a look at now, it's another reset. 30 seconds though on the next Lord again. That should be their main agenda. With RRQ, early on, they overcommitted on towards a fight there. I don't understand why. And after that, EVOS Legends, they went for the kite. They made and they win at the fight here, so understand. So, need to be careful here. Hijume has played a huge role in winning team fight sports out of EVOS Legends. His positioning is also just 
skill spends his skill resources skill management has been on point right let's see here RQ though oh, they, they rush wait no time they rush his bottom let's see they wait no time to again secure the Lord when spots Taz out black dragon form being used and RQ they will not commit right now Psychos still with the Black Dragon form, paid it out. Now it gives RQ some proper time, but in the mid lane, it's still gonna be Brands trying to create a forced error within the team. Psychos still as the frontliner. He drew it, chunked down by the Feather Airstrike. The Dimonon Blast gets charged in, but it gets cancelled by Taz. Psychos with the first time. The Bloody Hunt gonna be able to lock Albert down as the Lord comes oh! down, but it's still gonna be Albert somehow! Stealing it, saving the day for RRQ. The Flickers come out to disengage. How does Albert keep doing it? Albert again and again bailing RRQ out of the fit and right now they have the Lord, they have everything they need to actually make the siege and end the game. Three webs are pushing in. RRQ's dream to go to the grand finals is still alive. Not done yet though. They need to end the game. It's a full on 5v5 here. Let's see the offense and defense. What can Evos do? Dreams with the bloody hunt now. Flick right back for Brands! Comes in with a follow-up, and it's a collapse! Once again onto the back, but the crossbow attack is ready. Skyler dealing so much damage. The Lord still gonna be micromanaged. Look at him, it's Psycho still surviving for so long as Brands is gonna be trapped down. Skyler with him to play. One for one, Vin for Psycho. Both of these teams are still in it. Skyler buys the immortality to hook only onto the mini waves. Dreams now zoned away. Mini waves crashing into the base. RRQ looking for an angle. Jumping in. Taz gonna be able to find a knockup right now, but asking the purify built into the kit of the one one. Dreams not able to find the iron hook. The feather air strike as well. Not connecting. Skyler onto the base. Not able to get more than two hits. Oh. Taz looking for more. 22 minutes in, and we are still here. What? Holy moly! They're still able to defend this one, Sheffin. Well, it's a classical for a reason, man. <laughs> Two to one, and right now, gold doesn't matter. The map pressure is on our RQ, and it's definitely Dreams' burden to make the hooks, like the miracle hooks so far. It's been doing a pretty good job. That flicker yeah. bloody hunt to Clay literally no, saved. Clay. Is that the Clay? No. It was the Clay. I don't think so. I think it was mis misplaced. He actually laid on doing the bloody hunt, it ended up going to a different target. It was the clay. Oh, it is? Okay. Never mind that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, let's see here. RQ and EVOS. Another reset. Minute now. A long minute to the next Lord. Will it be the last? Will it be not, right? I mean, EVOS Legends. The determination, man. That defense was also a good one, right? With the flanks. and. RQ now, let's see here. What will they brew up next? Twice a contest, right? Twice it was being contested. Ooh, okay, so but Albert, they, he's just been such a Chad, man. With the retribution, so on point. Doesn't really matter, and item-wise here, oh, take a look at the items, man. One, two, three. Three immortals already on left side, so that is that means Three active immortals for the left. Two active immortals only here for now as the Lord finally spawns. Definitely would have preferred if Psychos go for a winter trench and indeed instead for uh to counter against the one one, but damage. Nice. Oh my goodness, flicker in the oh. midline, it's it, midside. Uh oh, Dreams is down and now it's Clay. Who's gonna be able to take him down? Look at Brands. You wanna pull off a penny? He wants to pull off a split push, but I don't think it will work out. Yeah. Lemon reads it out, he rotates up top. Let's see if he can make it work. He's trying to make the play. Lemon is going to be able to jump in onto him, but he jumps out with the Battle Mirror image. Now Taz is with Hijume. Taz, crossbow tank ready. Heavy spin gets popped in with the Winter Truncheon as well. Oh and god. oh my god, that damage coming in almost takes Skylar down. Taz will fall up to the first skill. Top lane as well. It's a 1v1 still brewing. Lemon is taken low. But Brands needs to recall RRQ again with a Lord. Lemon is hunting him down still. He's walking him down. He wants to find a kill, but does not find him. He builds the Guardian Helmet here, so he does not really need to... Okay, he still recalls, but he can just walk and heal up. But with this Lord, Mirko Sheppen, I gotta be honest with yeah. you. We might 
no this way. might be the last push, right? Taz is still 40, 39 seconds in. Lord is already marching the mid side. It's just one straight push. Let's see though, will EVOS Legends defend with just four men? The only saving grace was the flicker from Dreams, but instead, the flicker is on the cooldown, so you cannot go for one one straight away. This time though, Hijume, reload manipulation might be big. Side cuts. The oh, winter truncheon by Psychos right now. The Blazing Duet comes down with the real world ablation as well. There's no way. Dream still holding the Lord off. Beautiful micro management, but a lot of resources have been utilized already. He's going to be stunned up, but he has the flicker to get out. RQ oh. Lemming to be able to find a final slash onto two members. Psychos in the midst of it all with a furious dive, but it might just. Be it for Evo's Legends and Dreams Falls. Evo's one by one, they crumble in this game. Now the heavy spin comes down from Taz, but RRQ, they equalize in game number four. We're seeing game five in the series, baby. Best of one, here we go. El Clasico going or go home. It's the ultimate match, it's the ultimate. El Clasico today. Holy moly indeed. Take a look at the crowd. Both RRQ and EVOS, they are going at it. Two and two, and what a play from RRQ. They were able to just slowly but surely again, just by time, slow it down, tempo, control. Lemon made a couple of mistakes, but I feel like at the end, that final slash he really got is final. Fun. He got, he paid the retribution. And that is a good, good recovery, right? From the side of uh, Lemon, which just increases the morale of RRQ and EVOS Legends this time around, they weren't able to find the comeback. Has taken down there also creates a um, imbalance for side of Evos Legends. Four taking on five members plus the Lord, technically six v four. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Who will go home? We're about to find out in the next game. Oh man, Albert, Albert, Albert! Like surely, surely in terms of momentum, in terms of like timing and all of that. Like saving the game, it it's gotta be Albert, right? Give him, no the Give him the MVP. Give him the MVP. Because if they actually it's not up for debate, if he actually didn't execute those retries, like it would have been over. RQ would have been in the in gaming gaming house right now. <laughs> well, not that fast, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it would have been GG. That's the point, right? Holy, Albert literally saving the game, saving our RQ. Oh my God! Again, ladies and gentlemen, that was game three. Game four. Game four, rather. Sorry. Man, that match, all the series was just, it creates me, a, it's created a blur, right? Game four, it's two to two. Back to the best of one again. Best of five now. Which team do you support? They need it now. Show your support through the live comments, all right? They need it now. EVOS or RRQ? RRQ, man. I, I honestly don't know who will take win. Now it's just a coin flip. It's right? anyone's game now. It's, it's back to a best now. of one in My a 2-2 two -two series. That lead, it's gone completely. And wow. RRQ again, man. I just got to give it to Albert. That was Albert. That was all Albert. Thank you. The retry from Albert. Oh, you. my God. Gave RRQ like four more lives in that game. It gave them the game. I'm actually kind of tired right now. No wonder. Uh, I wonder if uh, all the players are actually feeling the same right They're now. They're feeling much more tired, yeah. man. Yeah. It's just... And it, it's always an intense game, right? And finally, best of one. It all comes down to it. It all comes down to it. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, now though, it's gonna be, uh, see, the item builds, all right? The item builds is taking a look at the total kills. It's 14 and 15. Very, very tight here, it seems like. And I gotta give it to Albert. But again, I feel like Clay also did his part, right? Uh, with the feather airstrike this yeah. time around, Vin, right, also providing a lot of utility. And yeah, I mean, Clay was just unstoppable. There was this one moment where it was for sure Evos has the numbers advantage. It was like four to two, and Albert got a good stun, got a good ton towards the feathered airstrike, getting four, getting two there, and Brands and uh, the mid laner from Evos, Hijume. 
forced to go back and Albert just another thing doing the impossible doing all the 50 50s available and right now Albert might have to pull off another miracle again if RQ keeps up you know playing like this if Lemon keeps on playing reactively like this it might spell trouble for RQ and Albert has to save them once again Evos though they might want to bank out on that brand's investment still. A very solid game, aside from that 1v1 with Skylar, which is very, very questionable. As you said, Mirko, he has the Purify, he has the Wind of Nature, which, if you actually micro it out, it might be Brands' game, but in the end, Skylar gets the better of him. Skylar did get the better of him, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, that was game four. And what happened was, right, it was RRQ just slowly withstanding, taking the L controlling, trying to dictate, dictate, but when contesting neutral objective, especially when we're talking about the Lord, it was there's one man with one finger that has perhaps the retribution here, Albert's retribution. The button is this big, all right? That is the very big button. Albert just clinches that retribution battle at a very good display again of poise and calculation that the young prince from Indo has shown us. And the ladies and gentlemen, that was game four. Let's talk about the post game here, all right? It's gonna be Brands, gonna be picking up the rich guy and the carry here. Still. Still, right? Yeah. It does not matter. And Sandbag, of course, will be that Lolita, and the forgotten one will be Fredrin. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? I'm just gonna, I wanna just wanna enjoy Mobile Legends for game five, all right? So you're not gonna cast? I'm still going to be casting, but okay. I do not <laughs> want to care who wins because I feel like both teams here deserve, but it's not going to be Albert. It is going to be the I I I disagree with this. Uh, I, I'm sorry, man. I usually don't want to say anything when the MVP comes up, but this this is Albert's one. I will I will give it to Albert, ladies and gentlemen. This, I, I want to say Albert. There is no way it's anyone else except for Albert in this game. I'm sorry, man. It was... <laughs> Come on, what what does the man have to do to get an MVP? Albert deserves that one, and I'll give it to Albert. I agree, I mean, without uh, his retributions, without his... Uh, it's Albert or nothing. There's no way, like, come on, man. He saved the game. He literally took the game, and he said, this game is RRQ's. Albert, give it to Albert, no. Yeah. I agree. We're casters, by the way. We're not supposed to say that, and we can see the highlight here from this game. Impact player, Albert. The other Albert take us through it. Well, the other Albert will say that in this game, it was very back and forth in that early, but it was actually Evos who strike first and claimed victory in the control of the maps. They managed to take down more structures, which means they were able to have more playground, right? RQ though, a lot of mistakes here, especially from the MVP himself, made a couple of blunders that, that might just cost them the control, right? Thankfully, RRQ, here are our kill. They are able to find the smallest window to turn the game around. And that was what happened after, of course, Albert's multiple retribution. Lemon then paid a retribution himself after a somewhat of a reckless early game. He's able to find his jam in that mid game, in that late game as well. And it was just a matter of death timers right at that point. One member taken down might cost them the game. And that was also what happened with Taz taken down. The timing was just not perfect for Zadavi Vos Legends. Lord was taken, that was a 6v4. That timers were just a little bit too much. They're overwhelming, overwhelmed, RRQ. Man, it's always the sea of 50-50. It's always the one who wins gets all the glories. The one who wins always, oh my god, MVP, Albert, carrying RRQ. But the other one, Taz, he might get flame in social media oh, after this real. if oh my God. Evos actually loses this game, which maybe it's true, maybe not. We'll see in a second. We'll see. Wow. I'm already, I'm really tired, man. Hey, don't worry, hey. man, because the players aren't tired as well, Sheffin. But you got to keep going to see who the best is. And we are here to deliver that for MPL Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to go for a break, break. I believe. Yeah. A very much needed break, and yeah, we're signing out for game four. Let's see who wins in game five.
Dan terus berlari Terus ke arah puncak tertinggi Ku takkan berhenti Hanya sampai di sini Kemenangan abadi menanti You know we won't miss if we unite our focus And if you haven't Jangan lah engkau menyerah Kita akan bu- 
terus berlari terus ke arah puncak tertinggi ku takkan berhenti hanya sampai di sini kemenangan abadi Welcome back to Ultimate Classical Game Woo! 5. The decider who won, the one who wins, will go to the lower bracket finals, and the one who loses will go home and shadow dreams, I guess. Shadow dreams. Their hope will not be continued in this playoffs. We'll see if Dreams gets his dream shattered, or maybe it's RRQ here. Evo's in RRQ. Evo's had the lead 2 to 1. They had the lead in the game too, but Albert was like, no, no. No, uh, uh, you want a lord? No. Not a. Not at all. No. No? Good boy. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, it's back to a best of one. Okay, what will two two. we expect, right? RQ, they were quite shaky in that game, I must say. The only stabilizer in that game was Albert, right? You mean Lemon. Oh. <laughs> he got lemon. the MVP. He got the MVP. <laughs> You're right. But... But Halbert was the one who stabilized that game. MVP, sure, we have to move on. Right? Have to yeah. move on. But in that game, Albert deserves MVP in the English desk, uh, in the English casters desk at least. Uh, he, the, he is the one who stabilizes. He got the retribution when the team needs the most. He also just performs, doesn't really go for the bloodlust killer. For sure on Fredrin, you just need to be stable. You just need to be reliable on that turtle all or lore take rather. It's gonna be a very interesting again. That I expect the same from inside of Albert. Lemon though, on the other hand, sure, he got the MVP, but he also needs to step up his game, be more in sync with his team. Evos Legends on the other side, I expect them to be more, when you're controlling, when you are in control, don't hesitate that much. Sure, it's a, it's a very it's a very important stake, very important game, but twice I feel like two games that they lost, it was because of a hesitation. And that split second, right? That split second decision making was just evident that EVO's Legends, just because of a hesitation, they just lost their control fully, right? Not just slowly or small, great right so again they need to just bounce back and just be more clear in their execution in this last game evos will be the first one to pick let's see if this is the same draft in the last two games another yujong yif and cloud combo for evos or will rrq adjust after their w do you think it's still it still needs an adjustment? Because I think yes. Yes. RRQ is very very shaky. Albert is, Albert is the one who bails him out in the end. And better. even in those kind of situations, the one who is favored to win the retribution was Taz, right? The better he has, the better uh, control he has, the better pressure. Like there's no pressure at all towards Taz to actually take the retribution. Meanwhile, on Albert, it's usually like one v four, like two v four. It's kind of impossible retribution from Albert. So yeah, RQ might need to adjust more. They need to, they need to, and it seems like here, yeah, I'm quite surprised Trying actually, right? We have yet to, to see a side change. Evos though, they will still stick with the same band, it seems like, right? With the- I am the power of light Aja, Valentina. Heart. Perhaps here now, Evos will go and ban the Diggy. Yeah. Right? Before I think this, the adjustments need to be made I now. Choose my oh, they made it yeah. for Evos with the Arlet ban here. So the MVP. Again, respecting the MVP yeah. of game number four. But again, RQ this time, I think they need to make some changes as well, right? Because again, it really feels like in that game, if it wasn't for Albert and his stupidly good retributions, his godly retributions, 
it would have been over, right? There were so many moments where it was a steal that kept them from kept them going, literally. So in the draft itself, early, mid, and even the later stage, it was Evos with the advantage most of the time. Come on, Dexter. There you it's go. It's gonna be the Claude. Finally. Finally. Alright, it's gonna be uh Claude bad. I mean, usually it's just an auto Claude bad, but in game two, three, and four, Claude was um opened. Evos with this. Need some stitches? Wow, yeah. there you go. Finally, they will the pick up the Melissa. Pick Melissa, we've never seen this before, right? We have, we, we have. have yeah. you know. Like first pick, actual first pick, first yeah. face? Yeah, we have. have. We? We have. Yesterday. Oh, actually, okay. we have. So finally, Melissa getting the respect that she deserves. Very, very good in lane. And we have a comment here from Clay. What will happen in the MPLID Season 11 playoffs? Inshallah, we'll be champions. Let's see, let's see. Clay with the uh, dream as well, right? RQ. Uh, they can stick around and use the same. They should, though. Just pick up the. I feel like they will pick up the Lapu here, and as well as the first, uh, the Farsa. Yeah, it makes sense because it's uh, definitely one of the heroes yep. that Lemon is comfortable with, and it also does good work or against some Lisa. Or maybe the glue, glue. I think Lapu Lapu, Lapu is definitely yeah, the better choice here because glue against the Koi. You know the interaction, Mirko and. Me personally, as a coup player, I don't really like playing against Melissa. And another pick for Bangduk here is going to be the Farsa. Still, Clay very, very confident with this Farsa, which makes sense. Like, he, he's been popping off with this guy. You know what? I feel like the Diggy makes sense for Evos now. <laughs> I mean, the Farsa, the Lapu, we saw what Nino was able to do when a Diggy was in well, next to him, literally, with Rassi on that Diggy. Evos Legends can go for it. And right now, I think it. Is it too early? No, no, too early. Is, Way see, the too thing early, is, but... Diggy, if actually builds damage... But it will be banned 100% in the second though? phase. Is it though? There, there's no way Arky lets that go, right? Hermes and as well <laughs> as you song. To live is to trick the Reaper. No Eve, okay. No Change Eve. already as well. Mm, about this, right? It's gonna be very tricky. Has to be Beatrix now. Has to be. Because if the Beatrix gets banned now, no real AoE to force out or to deal with the cult altar but yeah evos have already picked up a natural counter to the beatrix in that yu zong farsa and beatrix if rq picked that up so much backline dying from evos legends already that can force these backliners from rq or even a whole composition if they want to play it front to back all the way back Let's see here what will be the response here i expect them to pick up a marksman here beatrix just makes the most sense it seems like here we're going to do what they are going to do. It's going to be the Beatrix and the second phase. Here we go. I expect them to uh, ban the Diggy here from side of our kill. Agreed. I, I don't think so. I really don't think they so. They need to be able to locate that. Just, let's just see, okay? See, I don't really like the initial interaction of Diggy and Farsal, especially in the late game. Diggy needs to be close to be able to drop that time bomb. And Feathered Airstrike is just one hit can force you to pop mm, that. Makes sense. Uh, what should we call it? Time journey. I but think actually, yeah, there is in the bigger picture there might be some uh, you know scenarios where Diggy does make sense, but I still do think that RQ does not need to ban to ban Diggy. Do they want to go for if it's not the Diggy, Vermis Estes? That's a combo that we have seen before. It's gonna be the Franco ban though from the side of RRQ right now. So again, Diggy Estes. These supportive heroes are still up for grabs. If this kind of pick off heroes is banned, right? Kaja and Franco and RQ decides to ban another roamer or another hero and Cho gets up open. Like, is that an option for dreams? So, like, I don't like the, Cho in, right? don't like the Cho in this meta. I don't like the Cho in this meta. He's never picked Cho in this meta, you're right. In season 11, he's never, but season 10, good Cho performance. It, yeah. it really depends on your skill ceiling, right? That's why a lot of PH players have uh, been. Very, very... Exactly. PH players can pull it off, but Heidi players, I don't think they can pull it off. The only one who is phase. comfortable is Keyboy. Only Keyboy, and somehow he, he doesn't even play it. That says a lot, right? They want to go for it. Oh, Evos. I tell Evos. They were the ones, they are the ones who Hello, is going to ban the Diggy out. There there you go. Go. It's going to be the SS there. ban comes through again. They do not want to go for the combination of the Call Altar and as well as the Blessing of the Moon Goddess here, it seems like. Evos, though... What are they going to ban? I feel like a Kufra ban just makes it makes the most sense here from side of um, Evos. 
or if this is a rank game, it's Lolita Lolita ban. Yeah, Atlas, Atlas ban. ban. Yeah, Lolita, but Lolita is gonna be okay. The so Atlas is for open. Queue. It is. Yeah, Atlas just just makes the most sense, I guess. But it kind of feels like it's a bit too straightforward, isn't it? I think it's solid, right? Up against a Paramus, Evo Legends will most likely be going for a composition that clumps Clump, up together. Yeah. So RQ can make that adjustment. We know the Atlas Fatal Links to a Bennett's Rage, to a Feather Airstrike combo <laughs> can be Ravis Spider as well. crazy. And yeah, the Atlas, surely enough, gets picked up. And so far, it is looking really good for RQ. Well, the only option here, I think, is Mardis and probably the only... Lancelot can also Oh, play yeah, that, that does make sense. But the Roamer, though, that's the big question here. Like, the Diggy's gone, the Lita's gone, so there's no, like, counter-engage potential. Florin. What will they pick Florin? Oh, very dangerous. Really? Um, I don't think in this comp they want to go for a Florin. But hey, if they really want to double down on that healing, that clumped up team fights, then sure, some sustain against an Atlas. Oh, the Akai, bro. The Akai makes sense here. Yeah. Yeah. Up the Akai jungle. Right. And oh, Anita. 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 Okay. Anita. Anita. Double it down. Okay. What? It's gonna be the Lancelot. Wow. So you predicted it. Not the best win rate here, 33%. And Kadira on Dreams. He has not been playing this hero a lot because it gets banned. It either, it either gets banned or when it doesn't get banned, the, st the situation just does not call for it. But we'll see RRQ, one more pick for the jungle area. What will it be? So, Assassin does make sense here. Or, But see the downside is, <laughs> it's a cold altar. He should. It's going to be a standard veteran for Albert once again, looking to recreate those retribution takes again. Let's see, let's see indeed, ladies and gentlemen, who will grab the last game. Both fans. Fan bases here, Kingdom and as well as Evos Roar, Evos Fams. They are exploding right now, literally. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mirko, welcome us to the portal here in a bit to witness and find the conclusion of the El Clasico lower brackets MPL ID playoffs season 11. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is it for the finals, lower brackets, RQ and EVO's legends. Only one team can move forward to the next stage to face off against either Onik or Alter Ego. Welcome to the land of dawn for game number five of the El Clasico. Game number five again. Win or go home, it's looking like. RQ got the better draft in a sense. Like you have the Atlas, you have all the options available, especially against a cold altar, it just disables you so much. And I feel like that initial feathered airstrike from Clay is gonna be huge to kind of pop up that cold altar or anything that Ephos is trying to do before this. Let's see both mid laners here up for a purify, it seems like. And well, with dreams and side cuts. Kadida and Yu Zong, that signifies the petrifies, right? Notorious here, both uh, heroes. So it's gonna be, it's gonna add more somehow layers to the crowd control that both of this hero can give. It's gonna be a very, very um, action, well, early game centric here, forward side of Evo's Legends. Do note that Atlas here, somehow his impact pre level four is non existent, and this yeah. is why at first blood. Was gonna say that, Gunny. Was gonna say that, and you put the words right in my mouth. The only thing that Atlas can do in uh, before the level four is just disengage and try to deal a bit of damage. But in this case, Human Dreams has a lot of tools to actually burst him down, and it's an Atlas with a support emblem, so it's not gonna be tanky as tanky as if it is with maybe a tank emblem. But in the top lane here, it's been a chess match for Eleven and Psycho. It's very, very um, patient in taking the lanes. See here again, it's going to be a very, very uh, slow start again. Atlas will seek that level four ASAP to again just be that impact, give that impact, right? So now it's going to be a very slow, but turtle is up, so we might see some action there in the top side. Here too, bottom lane, there's a fight. Bennett's Ooh. range going to be popped in. Skyler going to be able to win out in the trade here against Brands, but. Wait a minute, up top it's Taz. Evos. 
who secures the turtle. Evo's legends here need to be very careful to play around the Melissa. Even the snipe, I believe, connected there. That's why he's that low. Yeah, he has to recall here, and it's not, it's not, it's not a big deal, you know. One v one loss. As long as you don't, as long as you don't give the goal towards Kyler, is a okay. Especially when in the other side of the map, Evo's legends actually managed to get down the turtle. Toss, good job on the retribution with Thorn Wars. I feel like this is also the thing that uh, makes Evos much more dangerous Oof. in objective takes. And with that Thorn Rose, a lot of damage towards that objective. But Vin has to be really, really careful once again. Oh, Beautiful Fatal snipe. Links. Fatal Links, the Mirror's Passion. Dream still able to survive. Wow. Oh. That passive really helping him out there with a the sustain. Any other roamer, I think it would have just been him dead. But here, Town Prediction, hey. KB has moved. I am still with Evo so far. Well, well, it seems like, again, it's just... That play, actually, I feel like Dreams baited that Fatal Links, right? He knows that uh, Atlas might pull off the uh, Fatal Link. And there you go. Got baited. No Fatal Links now for the next 30 seconds. Again, it's going to be very slow early game. But he's away here. Let's be careful. Feathered Air Strike with the Purify comes through to get him out safely. Interestingly enough, Taz goes towards the EXP lane much more than gold lane. Might be the pathing of the jungle that makes him do that, but I feel like Brands definitely needs some help here. Even though he was supposed to win the lane, in this case though, just like just before, he actually won level down and got capped by uh, Skylar's as Beatrice just now too. And E Dreams might be looking for a gang towards Skylar. Yeah, he might here. It seems like your Evos Legend still slowing. Down their tempo, looking for the right opportunity to perhaps claim control in the early phase. But Taz here needs to be careful. Not sure what he used, and Lemon once again very, very early. Finn getting taken down. Oh, the damage comes through though. Lemon's gonna be taken very low right now with the damage as well, but it's gonna be Taz who secures it. Two kills over to our Evo's Legends. It's a trade. Two for one, technically, but the bottom lane. Ark, you are going to be able to push that tempo, get a, getting a lot of gold into Skylar's pockets. Brand's doing the same thing, but remember, Skylar's there farming up the gold buffed minions. Hmm, need to be careful indeed here. Ark, they find compensation in that gold shield here top side. There's a, there's a, this, they, they decide to switch as well. So Yu Zong going to the bot side. It's minute number, it's over minute number five. So I guess they want more somehow. Sure, they want more security, right? Top side 2v1 here, the Lapu. Lemon here seems to be the main focus the, from the EVO side. It's 3-0 with both teams uh, getting the total, but instead the gold lead is not there. It's just 300 for EVO Legends, 100 for each kill. Like, this is what makes Ark you could always know when to get the gold, especially Albert with the farm. Nothing mm. just yet. Albert almost getting tossed on a taunt there, but Finn or Dreams might be eyeing for a cheeky cheeky pick. Clay has a purify though. He needs to play very slow. And he does. He just used the rough waves and now wow. it actually might be just a bait. Clay perfectly played and Albert with a proper response to take Dreams down. First kill. RQ are on the board. You know what I like though? He actually, he knows that when a uh, Clay is not going to, a uh, Clay is probably going to use the pet uh, purifier, but in the end, he actually didn't use it. But Psychos, no way you're getting away from that. Yep. There you go. Well, it seems like it's going to be another structure taken down as well. A very good uh, proactiveness there, there from the side of Vin. Flicker, concealed play was also made there. Flicker, fatal links. Psychops didn't even have the chance to go and pop that black and black black dragon form. Turtle is up here, the last one. Who will get it at its stance? It's still one to one. Neutral objective wise, who will get that last turtle? Let's see. Should be favoring Taz with the puncture, with the stacks. But look at Dreams. He's zoning Clay away already has been. Jumps in with the perfect match, looking for an opening. Clay still able to zone wow. away, and Taz wins the retry battle this time around with the stun by Lemon, not able to connect. Evo's Legends will be able to equalize a bit. Taz looking for Skylar there with a the puncture, but the goal lead is still in the grasps of the Kings 1000. Oh, 
let's see here what will they brew up after that turtle take here what will they translate to dreams here trying to harass lemon in the top area and it seems like rq they also just slow down, slowing down their tempo here. Not much of an action-packed game, but Albert moves on towards Yujung, and perhaps he wants to bait that call alter. Oh my god, so much damage to Bennett's Rage and the Appraiser's Wrath. Brands though on the top side. He's gonna be able to survive a gank there from Clay. Mm, so far, Evos has been forcing the mirroring from Yu Jong towards the Beatrix, but Dreams might be in trouble, and he is in trouble, getting taken down by Skyler. Another kill, 2-0-0. Zero, zero. That's an, another gold for your gold laner. But so far, Yu Jong has been mirrored by Skyler, or uh, it's actually backwards. Yu Jong wants to get matched up uh, with the Beatrix from Evos. So, how long will this last? When and why? That's a good question, right? Top structure now, taking down RQ. They look for another structure here, perhaps. The mid, the inner turret now is gonna be the target. It's not looking good for EVOS Legends. They are starting to lose grass, man. RRQ, championship mentality, let's see. Fatal Links now still intact. Well, no, it's still on cooldown, rather. Ooh, 2k gold lead for RRQ. They're sitting in a very comfortable position right now, especially the turrets. They're basically untouched. Meanwhile, EVOS Legends already about three turrets down in top lane. Already base turret left. But right now, with that wave minion, with that um, pressure from RRQ, will they be able to secure the Lord here and end the series? There's a possibility. Taz getting knocked up now by Albert as he is able to utilize the puncture. Vin is still having the flicker and the fatal links. Wants to hold off. It comes down to Brands again. Very brand centric. Vin with the fatal links right now, but it's gonna be bursted down just a bit by the call alter comes down from Hijume. Now it's an all-in onto Brands, who's gonna be killed by Skyler. He's still able to disengage as Psychots dives into the back. RRQ with a phenomenal performance here in this team fight. They all survive and Brands dies. Brands dies and not the perfect opportunity, but it is an opportunity 5v4 right now for RRQ. Has to watch out for Thassa's Retribution as he has lands out. He can weave out through all the CC, throughout all the damage from RRQ, but it's looking pretty bad for him. Taz with the puncture, getting out with a stun now with a flicker. Wow. Lemon finding it. Taz gonna be chunked very low. He's still able to escape for a bit. Phantom execution as well. Wow. No way he gets it. And yes, he doesn't. Albert is the one who gets it there. Psychots able to find a trade. It's a two for one as Skyler flickers forward. Psychots, he's gonna be gunned down. Skyler finds a mega kill. Okay, I thought Dreams was actually getting the Lord there. That's why I scream out loud. But and again, Same. Albert, <laughs> very, very safe. And Lemon, finally the reactive plays pays off as he pretty much gunned down Toss to low, low HP. And Dreams, once again, might be forced to use the ult. Oh yeah, the Appraiser's Wrath, Bennett's Rage, everything. The ult comes down. Dreams can escape, but so far in this game, that's, oh this Kadena hasn't really been able to create a good impact for the team for the most part, Ghani. Well, this is going to be a very interesting um, defense and offense here. RQ, their city is at 4,000 gold, right? And with this pressure that they're building up, it's going to be a question to the side of EVOS Legends. Will you be able to withstand the pressure? The uh, Renner's apathy there was just also, you could also deal damage, and the turn in the mid will fall for the side of EVOS Legends. RQ already looking for the inner turn in the bot side. That signifies that Magic Sentry for side of EVOS Legends will is also playable. So they will need to be careful here. RQ. Looking very, very convincing. Interesting itemization from Lemon there. He chooses to go for Radiant Armor instead of a Athena Shield. I believe he wants to debuff the opponent instead of just surviving on his own. Granted though, I think, to be fair, um, Lemon is definitely not the target for Dreams, not the perfect target. So he might, you know, just think, oh, you know what? Dreams not gonna go on me. So let's just kind of deb debuff their uh, ma magic attack for my teammates. It's going to be a very, very tough and interesting battle here. 
uh, four side of the boss legends looking at the items they're, they're far behind melissa seven thousand gold beatrix is already at 10k that's not a good sign if you compare it also farsa here and fairness equal but remember better airstrike more range mobility you can argue that fairness has more mobility but then again more all around right farsa so with that in mind Clay has that edge in this current matchup, considering that his team is leading 5k. So 20 seconds here for the first Lord to spawn. I see no play for out of Evo's Legends to contest. They can gamble it, but is it the wisest move? No. Right, so they should just focus perhaps more on towards a uh, defense rather than a gamble to contest and Lord. But it seems like their rotation here they might look for a contest. Oh, EVOS Legends, it's tricky because they don't have a real tanky member, so they have to kind of make a very, very massive skirmish or getting Dreams to a good position to be able to get some good damage towards Arceus backliner. So it's definitely a tough job indeed, but we'll see if EVOS will pull off a miracle just like Albert did in the previous game as Arcu, very, very patient. In the Rotary Battles, it should be Taz, who has a bit of an advantage here. Albert with the taunt and the dash, not connecting. Taz still there, and then RQ decides to reset the Lord completely. They're still micromanaging the waves, utilizing the lead that they have built up. Brands is two levels below Skyler. Gold should also really favor this gold laner, Skyler, compared to Brands. For one moment, as long as Brands is able to free hit, it is disastrous for RQ. That's why they're always reading, trying to find Brands wherever he is, and he is the main target. If he doesn't, if RQ doesn't find Brands, they do not fight. See here again, he set up. It seems like you have both teams here, just in the Lord Dance here, just taking it slow. They do not really want to commit on towards anything before they have clear information, right? There you go, that's information. Vin is in the mid. Melissa is also in the mid. So let's see here. Already engaged, perhaps, but no one's really pulling the trigger because no one is really opening the map, the fight just yet. Huge man with a Shadow Dreams. Stampede. Taz already jumping in right there, but Dreams finds the rough waves, and that it is. That is it. They get one pick on the board. That's the Atlas that has been dictating the team fights for RRQ down. Dreams is taken low, but he does still have the passive. Slemma now is going to be able to pop in the Bravest Fighter, but Taz gets into the flanks, is able to dodge away. Psychots takes the damage from Lemon. Now it's going to be Taz who's locked in, but has the Thorn Rose to escape with the Cole Alter coming down. Hijume is actually baited in by his own team, and he's left to die all alone. Yeah, this is just the difference in gold, man. Like The fact that Dreams already got, got a pick, and it's a 5v4, and RQ still wins it. Yeah, Dreams is in the bottom lane, but the thing is, RQ just way too ahead right now. Lemon might be eyeing for another oh. zone toss. That's the Thorn Rose and the Phantom Execution. Lemon's gonna be taken very low right now with Retribution onto him. Vin looking for the play, but Brands is still able to survive. Skyler dealing so much damage. Evos need to respect this. Vin with a perfect match. Taz looking for the opening, but it will just be Albert who takes it away. Evos Legends forced to run, but Dreams gets sniped down by Skyler from downtown. And Clay picks up the kill. 6-1 for Skylar so far. Perfect game. Another beautiful Renner's Apathy getting the job done for Albert. The icing on the kick of that team fight. And right now, Evos will try to force to defend this without any, without minimal high ground potential here. No Yves, no Farsa. The only thing that they can rely on is Brands with his Inspire, with his models. So we'll see if Brands can pull it off this time around. See here again, it's going to be another offense for the Kings of Kings. Looking at this uh, as it stands, right? 6,000, almost 7,000 gold lead here. Evos Legends. Uh, looking at their composition, I've got to say they can. They are able to defend this one here. But then again, RRQ has the flicker. No, the, the fatal links, right? No flicker, but the fatal links. Let's see how will Vin open this up. And the feathered airstrike too is going to be such a hassle to deal with for Brands. At this point, RQ definitely has way more to say, knowing Evo's Legends don't really have that wave clear presence that they did in the previous game with Yves. Taz with the puncture, trying to just clear that wave. Evo's Legends will give that top lane away. 
They will instead clear the other waves. Now putting the focus down, Brands needs to be very, very careful. Places the muddles, but RQ can still engage and they will just give it up. Again, the high ground control not present for EVO's Legends. Very, very patient right now, RQ. They, could have been, they definitely could have risked it, but this is game five of playoffs. If you don't win, you go home. So they'll take it easy and Finn might be eyeing for Fatal Links. Oh, Taz is actually gonna be able to bait so much. Dreams. Clay no feather airstrike, very low. Psychots with a black oh. dragon form. But RRQ with a proper disengage. Evil Sludge is not given the chance to look for that opening. Two base turrets here taken down. So with that Lord, it wasn't really to just to end it just yet here, it seems like. You're right, Vin played it disciplinedly here, does not go for the crazy perfect match and a Fatal X combo, but this time he has Flicker. I think things might change. And he's flanking too? No, no, he's not. Okay, he's I thought not it's the too. key boy flank, the original key boy flank, but it's turns out he goes for uh, the front side inside, instead. So Lord is about 30 seconds right now. So far, RRQ, if, even if they do lose this, no, actually, if they actually lose this, it's going to be final because if you lose the team fight in the Lord, it's going to spell for trouble because there's no one that's going to defend those turrets. And if one turret, if one lane is going to get, you know, pretty much taken down from uh, from the auto turret to the, towards the base turret, the other turret becomes weak as well because you don't have that much pressure. You don't, you don't have that much map own to actually defend that. But right now, RQ is still standing strong with nine turrets available. Evos, only one. God, let's see here. It's still a perfect game for RQ, you're yeah, right, yeah. in terms of turrets. Oh, Taz. Oh, that was a mistake, but no one punishes. Taz doesn't have the puncture. He missed it, actually. Mm, let's see here again. RQ with the setup, right? Yeah, it opens a lot of bush, a lot of map control. Taz struggling to penetrate towards that Lord area, and no one is helping to open things up. Perhaps Psychos there is ready to pull the Black Dragon form. Let's see, though, what will it rule up? Fatal Lanes, Nibiru's Passion, Taz is down! Dreams looking wow. for the back, but Albert, Breathed Albert and Albert spots it out, stops it from happening. RRQ with a massive lead, Evolve Lord into their hands. Oh, oh my god, Americo Sheffin. This might be it. Yeah. This might be it, is the dynasty of RRQ. Still that strong. Taking at the items here already. One, two immortals no, in hand. That and, is bad. Oh my god, that's an all waste. Let's see here. Two wave push. Let's see. Many waves in the mid lane. Micromanage. Finn looking for the fatal links on the conceal as well. Immortality being built by Lemon right now as Albert is able to zone them away from the mid lane base turret. Evos. How will they defend? Can they defend? Psycho! Oh, oh my Lord. god! What was that damage? Clay with one shot. Taz buying some time with the Phantom Execution. He's in the midst of it all right now. Pominical Alter is RQ. Look for an opening. Dreams of the Petrify in the rough waves, but he will not be able to find anyone. Evo somehow still able to defend, still able to micromanage. Taz with the puncture once again. That's gonna be Brass still free it is! With his fire brands! With the damage and the go away today! to dish the damage out onto the back. Albert in shambles, RRQ in shambles as they walk back. Das oh. will fall to the impeccable timing from Clay's feathered airstrike. Oh. When it looks over, it never is over. Evos and RRQ push to the limits. Wow, Brands, shout out to him, man, playing safe to the last minute. But the thing though, Finn is very, very indecisive because of Brands' positioning. He knows that the key to victory for EVOS Legends is Brands. The only thing that can bail them out to make that miraculous base defense is Brands. And Finn doesn't want to go for a fatal doesn't even doesn't even go to, want to go for a three-man fatal even if Brands is not there. Oh, 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 look at the damage still though, Brands. Mm. Does he have any defensive items, Gani? I don't think so. Now we need to check. There oh, go. there you go. The Athena was just built. So Clay, the Holy Crystal in full, full effect, right? Instant replay, though. What happened was, was take a look here. RQ hesitating again. Not quite sure. Vin Brands, Flicker. Bro. Oh my goodness, Brands just free hitting in the backside. Perfect timing on that Inspire as well. It just, yeah. RQ was just yelling, fall back, fall back. 
there in that base. But still, though, if we're talking about, like, lead, if we're talking about, like, who's ahead, it's still heavily favoring RRQ. It's just another reset here. 20 seconds in the next Lord. I think it's do or die. You it's, know, it's always Evo's do or die. Legends needs to um, contest this. If not, I don't think they can defend again. Ooh. Can they? Can they? Perhaps with Rans, that was the perfect scenario for Evo's Legends, though. Well, Will they be able to pull it off again? Before this, we said that this was it. Like, there's no way this just... No the only thing they can bail him out is Rans, but it turns out Rans just does wonders for Evo's Legends, but this time around, RQ. They want to get this Lord as safe as possible, and Lemon might be eyeing for another early, early previous fighter just to get Taz down. Bot lane, though, the web pressure, the web pressure, as always for RIQ, still nine turrets available. Another homework for EWAS Legends to do, so let's see who will be clearing that minion in the bottom lane. I don't think they can set anyone. They just need to clear it when it actually crashes into the base because it's way too far if they want to push it out. Remember, RQ still have nine turrets to play with. They have all the turrets remaining. Evos are in a position where it's forced errors everywhere. Lemon with a stun. Taz with a disengage. Phantom execution to the back. Taz looking for an opening desperately, but Albert isn't committing. Black Dragon form popped in, and now it's desperation for Evos Legends. The Lord is resetted, and RQ can play with it again. Evos need to reset, need to wait for the cooldowns again. Wow. Even if RQ has the advantage there, RQ knows that they have the better position, but Lemon goes in with another Bravest Fighter trying to shoot he's away Taz and Hijime. Yeah, he's low. He has to find another creep to somehow... Melissa is bot side. Use the spell fam. Yeah, Melissa is bot, and this is might be... Yeah. Yep. There There's no way. Taz looking for the opening once again. Has the Thorn Rose. The Call Alter saves his life. Evo Legends can see. Dreams looking to steal, but a miracle will not happen here in the Lord Pit. Evos are banking on a miracle to happen in the base. Oh my god. Again. Evos Legends, they are going to. They are in the position of defense. Take a look at the. Change of shoes here, four side of Fermis. He opts for a roam now, favor he adds in their composition. So two roams here, it seems like, for EVOS Legends. They understand three. that they're behind. Three roams. Oh my, no. Two roams. Oh, three, Yu Zong too. Wow. With the encourage. Oh, oh he just Fermis, sold. Yeah. <laughs> Fermis just sold his shoes, so well, only thank two. thank you so much, Ijume. <laughs> the switch, all right, the switch area. Will this be the answer, though, to defend? RRQ, the kings of kings, looking for the end. The Kings looking to prolong their dynasty with Onik. Taz, wait, Clay, RQ are not going to be able to utilize this for Jeez. now. The Evolve Lord is all alone. If another Airstrike comes down, Hijime is taken very low. Taz is still able to buy some time as Lemon pops in Bravest Fighter. Taz with a puncture. Lemon with a stun. Taz forced to back away. No further Airstrike to play with. Dream's going to be caught there by Albert. Psychos now with a black dragon form onto the back with a back to fire on the Skyler and the rough waves, but Skyler somehow is still able to defend. Oh! Three man fatal links onto Brands now dealing some damage. The Lord still onto the base. He may finds the kill back. Brands is free hitting. No way! The Tigers have defended again. This I is. I have no words. The game for the edges. The ultimate classical. Gold doesn't matter anymore. RQ still has nine turrets. Somehow, some way, Evos, the White Tiger, still How? holding on to the base. What is going on? How have they done it? Let's a miracle is an understatement, but there's a fight going on as the replay comes in. No, there's not. Okay, Skylar here. He gets away, but the fataling here does not connect onto the Melissa, where it. Oh my God. The call altar, man. The call altar. Hijume. Hijume was also the MVP there to help his teammates. Finn got the three man. What more could you ask for? He got the three man. God, oh my God. Well, you gotta combine the act of that three man fatalings with a proper follow up. But I think Finn doesn't see that all the members of ERRQ doesn't have the resources, or even Skylar is not in the vicinity to actually punish. So that's why Brand is still able to live on and deal the, that, amount, that, that amount of damage with the Trinity build and the Inspire 2. Evos, what more do you have? What tricks are left in your sleeves? 
Even oh. the real-time win probability doesn't believe it. <laughs> Man, what do you think about this game, ladies and gentlemen? It's still going. We're going back to a half an hour game, it seems like. Now with the Lord, though, it's going to come up. It's going to spawn. RRQ, man. RRQ. Danny Boss. What is this game? Hijume was clutch with the cult altar. Brands was even clutcher, if that is even a word. It is a word for this game. For this, this game has literally created a new word. Exactly. It's He's even clutcher, right? Uh, the free hitting, the positioning, the timing that he pops off was just needed for inside of EVOS Legends. EVOS fans, they are now still roaring. Okay, not gonna lie, I'm not worried about RQ taking the Lord, as in, I think that I believe they can secure the Lord with ease with the wave pressure in the top lane. But the question is, still remains, how do they end the game when Brands is playing really, really safely in the back line, trying to wait out for the Finn, Fatal Links, and oh, there oh, you go. Oh, 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 that's the window. A blunder. That's the window. Finn, no flicker, no Fatal Links. Instantly, Evo pull the trigger. The Black Dragon form onto the back line right now with the Bravest Fighter popped in as well. Brands with the go away. It's still going to be Lemon doing some damage right now. Psychos is able to CC Albert. 50 50. On the Lord. Here it is. It's oh! Boss! Who secures it? And Evos, they start roaring, they start pouncing on their prey, waiting, waiting and waiting. 28 minutes is when they strike. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Evos Legends at their peak. RRQ, one window, they saw and they seize it. They it's, managed to force oh. a fight. They managed to find the right targeting. And let's see, 3v5 with the Lord. EVOS Legends looks to end the dynasty of RRQ. The kingdom has fallen one by one. The members will fall as well. Versus Albert, next no is Lemon. EVOS have done it. They have taken RRQ down. Miracles! Miracles! After miracles! The White Tigers! Oh my god! The Kings! Tasting the taste of despair right now! They have everything that they need to end the game! But they cannot close out EVOS Legends! It's the team of Legends! Ladies and gentlemen! This just in, RRQ's kingdom has fallen. I repeat, this just in, RRQ's dynasty kingdom has fallen. RRQ have gotten the better of Evos in this season in two legs. The third time's the charm. The fans believe it, and Evo surely believe it. A miraculous defense, a miraculous steal, a miraculous series for the Blue Tigers. We're, we're speechless. Until Ladies and gentlemen, a performance of yeah. the ages. After um, um, almost two years, it's going to be confirmed. It's not going to be Onyx RRQ Grand Finals. It still can be Onyx, but we, he, will not be accompanied with RRQ. Nine turrets to zero. Wow. For the longest time, too, they hold on to that nine turrets for a long, long time until their last moment there with a toss with retribution when it matters. Before that, it's always RRQ winning it out. RRQ with the pressure. All of it goes in their favor, but toss, clutch. Oh man, the emotions are just pouring in, even as the fans. I am shaking. Ultimate classical, ultimate classical. Ultimate classical, truly. The El Clasico best of five that we all want to see every single time. An El Clasico that will go down in the history books 
as one of the best. And Evos takes it. And we're going to see some parting words from... Where is Lemon is the question. What? Where is Lemon is the question. Oh, wow. He's not on stage. I... You what know I what? do know is, the mere blessed still stand strong. We're gonna see some parting words from RQ right now. Thank you, Bat. Kingdom yang udah support kita di MPL Season 11 ini. Sorry kalau hasilnya mengecewakan. Uh, terima kasih juga buat MPL Season 11. Dan sampai jumpa di Season 12, guys. And there is the parting words of the four members It's been a while since we... RQ. Listen to a parting word from Team RRQ, Shefin. It's I, been a while. I gotta say, man, like, I think Lemon should be there. Like, you lose as a five, you win as a five. Maybe there's some outside reasons that I don't know that makes Lemon, or maybe he's just, you know, trying to get, try to take a Wii or something. <laughs> but. I heard he's yeah. sick. Oh, he's sick? Okay. There you go, that's the reason, I guess, for RRQ Lemon. Not in the stage, but again, this goes, goes to show you that miracles do happen if you hold it on for so long. Tonki witnessing the triumph of EVOS against RQ. Finally, EVOS managed to secure that top three and might be going to MSC for the first time in a while, getting that international stage ticket. A legend witnessing a legend in the making. Confirmed, confirmed indeed. It's a uh, man. I have no words. I don't know what to say. Evos legends. It's the stuff of the legends. It is the story that you would think is just legends. It's not true, but Evos have done it. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. You see, this kind of game, I do, I'm honored to be able to cast this Same. game, but as, you know, I want to see it as a fan, like, how does it feel to be an EVOS fan right now? And how does it feel to be an RQ fan? Just all the hopes crumbled in the last second, just the very last second. Gotta say, I'm having goosebumps right now, seriously. Same. <laughs> One oh. of the best games, one of the best series is with the emotions, with the stakes, with the pride of two of the biggest orgs in Indonesia. And it comes down to a 30 minute game, Ghani. Three to oh two. Perfect, perfect conclusion. Perfect. Host, take it away. Tiga besar untuk saat ini. Setelah hari yang kemarin keren, mungkin apa yang soal lakukan ke anak-anak sampai hari ini mereka comeback super strong untuk match kali ini, Soa? Ya, nothing tulus lah kita berusaha ngelakuin yang terbaik. Kita berusaha semaksimal mungkin karena kita juga baru lolos playoff lagi. Jadi kita nggak mau sia-siain kesempatan yang ada lah. Ada hal spesial yang kalian lakuin gak sih semalam untuk mempersiapkan hari ini nih? Lebih ke arah jaga mental sih sama paling gue jadi badut lah buat nyenengin anak-anak. Oh, Tapi ya kalau kita bandingin dengan regular season, sempat bertemu juga dengan RRQ. Tapi di dua leg kalah juga. Tapi hari ini bisa memenangkan hal tersebut, uh, uh, pertandingan playoff. Seperti apa nih? Ya player gue... Uh, coaching staff gue semua kerja keras lah buat playoff kali ini, jadi gue appreciate lah sama mereka semua udah kerja keras semaksimal mungkin. Nggak buat RRQ doang, bahkan sampai ke grand final insya Allah. Ini menarik sih, mungkin AG juga muncul di sini. Semua orang penasaran kira-kira untuk... Wow, <laughs> langsung rame banget. Bentar, ini kenapa AG langsung digendong-gendong? AG, coba kamu ngelihat anak-anakmu di playoff ini seperti apa sih AG? Uh, speechless sih gue. Kemarin kalah di Bantai Amonik 3-0. Tapi hari ini mereka main dari early game-nya 
sampai late game mereka nggak nyerah sih. Irlinya bagus, emang ada nggak disiplinnya dikit ya. Cuman semangat sih mental mereka gila. Gak ter kita juga pulangnya malam kan kita istirahat langsung. Ya pokoknya bagus lah. Anak-anak gue wow, sekarang. Wow, tepuk tangan. Dan ngomongin untuk match selanjutnya ya. EVOS Legend ini nanti akan bertemu di antara Onyx atau Alter Ego. Mau ketemu siapa? Mau balas dendam kah? Pilihannya sulit ya. Mau ketemu nanti yang kalah aja. Uh, sudah jelas ya AG ya. <laughs> sudah pasti kalian di final lower bracket nih. Tapi mungkin kita boleh tarik ulur ke belakang kalau... Onik sangat kuat, apalagi kemarin baru saja dan juga yeah. Alter Ego juga. Jadi historinya dua-duanya tuh ada untuk AG. Mana sih tim yang di babak playoff ini performanya mengerikan atau di luar ekspektasi dari AG sendiri? Ya, yeah. kalau saya mungkin nggak bisa jawab polon AE ataupun Onik karena saya nggak mau ngedoain orang kalah. Jadi biarin mereka aja siapa yang turun kita siap lawan. Uh. Oh, performa menyeramkan maksudnya? Menyeramkan. Paling serem. Itu onik lah, 3-0 kita. 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> Oke, okay, dan mungkin ya ini dia Evo Sejar. Mungkin ada pesan-pesan untuk Evo Spam sih. Dari tadi nih, tas Udah. dari game tas, yang pertama. Tas, juga. tas tuh tadi sampai terharu banget loh. Tas El Clasico kali ini apakah berbeda dengan regular season sampai kamu benar-benar terharu? Adakah sesuatu yang ingin kamu sampaikan atau mau ceritakan tas? Ya yang gue bisa sampaikan ya cuman terima kasih kalian tetap support kita. Ya mungkin mungkin beberapa dari kalian udah hopeless lah ngeliat tinggal satu tower kayak gitu tapi berhasil comeback lah. MPL Arena mana suaranya? Untuk merayakan pula kemenangan, inilah dia. You cannot make this up, even if you want to. RQ had the whole game in their hands, and it was just the right moment. The one moment that the sider toss with retribution just steals it away, snatch it away, the crown from the kings. And the White Tigers right now sits on RQ's throne. Like, wow, man, just a lot of members of EVO Legends perform. But even if we try to point out like one MVP for this game, it's really hard, Mirko Kone. It's actually really hard. Brunt's playing really, really safely in all the Lord fights, in all of the Lord defense. Hijume micromanaging, covering, damaging, going in and out with the Cold Ultra 2. Taz 2. The retribution at the final play, that's just one moment that decides it all. And also Psychos and crew too, knowing when to back out, knowing when to not commit, knowing when to, you know, stay low. Just insane. And what remember, Dreams, even though the KDA was horrible, it is actually horrible. He managed to get some one or two moments where he actually shines. But I think if we're talking about Winkles Link, it's Dreams, right? But it doesn't matter, Evo still gets the W. It doesn't matter who plays bad, Evo it still had the last matter. laugh. Everyone, and I mean everyone on RRQ played it better than Evos in the game, early to mid. They got every objective. They didn't concede a single turret in this game up until the very end. And guess who won? Objectives win you the game. A gold lead wins you the game. Everything that you expect, that you think wins you the game, flip it all over because this game shows you how you don't need any of that. No. Nope. Evos. How, Ghani, how did they manage this miraculous victory? Perseverance, determination, and passion, right? They were able to just hold two, three lords here at this point here, minute number 20. They were able to defend, defend, defend. Man, and RRQ, they were not stopping as well. They tried, tried to penetrate their base here. It's not a good sign. RRQ, they weren't able to just find that loophole, that window that they need. And this is it. Where the things change, where the turnaround. 
claiming three members was not enough. If not, that was enough. They claimed the whole member. It was a wiped out. And ladies and gentlemen, that was the game of the series. I still have no words, ladies and gentlemen. El Clasico, a full best of five. And the king, the quote unquote, the past grand finalists will have to bow down to the White Tigers this time. It looks like it's out of the storybook, right, Michael? It really is, man. Again, oh my god, for the first time in four seasons, we're not going to see Onik and RQ in the Grand Finals. I think Onik, there's still a big chance of that happening because they're just so damn good. 3-0 yesterday against this EVOS Legends who gave that kind of performance against our RQ. But RQ, for the first time in four seasons, they will be knocked out. They won't be able to make it to the next stage. This is something that will go down again in history. Will we see a new champ? Will Alter Ego be able to somehow pull another miracle? Might as well double down, right? Yeah, no Royal Bestie here in the Grand Finals, it seems like. Still, Onik though, favorite to enter that slot. But of course, give it to the man. Ju May. It's going to be the MVP. 75% KP, 319, 6 L3 GPM. He was the lifesaver that RRQ needed. Well, RRQ needed to go home because EVOS Legends, they were the ones that finally get have a chance. They knocked out RRQ after throughout the whole regular season. They were the ones lo uh, always taking the L. Ladies and gentlemen, in a bit, we are going to listen to the mic checks. Oh, we're gonna see uh, how they or the comms, and I'm really interested to see the ending moment of Evos. Oke okay, guys, reset. Ready, 
Rata dia, rata dia. Parsa dulu, parsa dulu, parsa dulu. Nice. Gue lontar, lontar, guys. Atlas, nice. Web dulu, web dulu, guys. Bisa, bisa, bisa. Gue main, gue main, gue main. Komboin, komboin, komboin. Gouldi, gouldi. Sabar, 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 guys. Labu. Jangan jamet, jamet. Gak jamet, bedin, bedin, bedin. Nice. Cabut, cabut, cabut. Orang-orang kita, orang-orang kita. 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 Orang-orang kita, orang Gua gak ada ulti, gua gak ada ulti. Gak jadi kalau gak jadi ini, gak jadi ini, gak jadi ini. Woi, 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 woi. Kalem, 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 kalem. Kalem. Winning moment. You know what? I think I would have reacted harder than that, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. That was crazy, that was crazy. That was pretty mild for a moment like that. For a moment, like, I thought, but obviously they they are still thinking ahead. They still have some more games yeah, ahead. They I might guess, not want to yeah. go too all out here. But oh my god, again, I didn't notice it. But Beatrix Skyler was cancelled by Dreams there down below. That's why he wasn't in the fight. And yeah, I was really just I was tunnel visioning on the fight that happened in the base itself. Oh my god, what a again! I'm so speechless still. This is such a good victory for Evo's Legends. Three two. Hey, if there's a way to win El Clasico, this is a way to do it, man. Knocking your your rivals down. Or no, knocking your rivals out. Exactly, and take a look at the key six success, right? On point symphony of skills in a team fights. Brands and Hijime's good positioning, and as well as damage dealers. I completely agree, where especially in that game, they were just battered, right? And it's gonna be a very, very um interesting here to see. Remember that the Every, every time that he is able to find success is because of Hijume, right? The Faramis. Faramis picked that last game. Actually, I have to say, equals to bye-bye to RQ. Ooh. Goodbye to the kingdom here. So, on that note, it's confirmed that we will have a new grand finalist. No royal bestie anymore, ladies and gentlemen. This time around, Onyx still has that great chance to secure that grand finals, but will not be accompanied by his friend throughout, what, two years almost? Onik Arc, you Onik Arc is gonna be Onik with a new team. Man, I'm intrigued. No, well, Gani, this is the real question. Are we gonna see two new grand finalists? Oh, oh. That, that's big words, man. I, I think, I think, I think, I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen, but man, you gotta talk about RQ's consistency, right? A lot of people yeah. love to bring it, bring uh, people down, but RQ, they've been consistent for many years. They've been top two for a long, long time. Even from, from season one, from MPL as the Plish, this is one of the best team in the league. So gotta give it, to, give it to them, man. So don't bring them down, kind of lift them out. It will eventually happen, man. It will, it will. Yeah, it's always like that. That was the on only the first match, Mirko. You have to say bye-bye. Holy bye. moly. We got another match. All right, this time another around, big one. both teams here will not go home, though, even though one of them then we lose, they will just move down to the lower brackets, all right? So, Chefin, take us. Yeah, with that, we need a break. You need a break, and the players need a break. And for that, we're going to be back with Onyx versus Alter Ego after this. Thank you for watching. Have a good night or have a good day, whatever you want to, whenever, wherever you are.
friend's party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. Mia! I mean, all the time. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. It's incredible. Wait, is that a phone? Look at the performance, the graphics. That thing's a gaming machine. A new challenger. Is that Faker? No that man's a gaming legend. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. And here we go. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. <laughs> my calling. The music of my bow will cleanse their hearts. Supernova to the rescue! Music is the strongest form of magic. UBS Gold. Trust in Gold. Kekompakan menjadi kekuatan. Kehormatan menjadi tujuan. Kemenangan adalah kemewahan bagi mereka yang berjuang meraih impian.
Limited Edition UBS Gold X Mobile Legend Bang Bang. Rayakan setiap momen berharga dengan emas. Main bareng, investasi bareng UBS Gold. Limited Edition Maya Necklace UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Limited Edition Eudora Bracelet UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Limited Edition Bundle UBS Gold Bar X Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Gratis Hero Skin setiap pembelian item collaboration. Tersedia di ubslifestyle.com, Blibli, dan di e-commerce UBS Lifestyle. Halo para pengejar! Kejar ini, kejar itu, kejar! Keep kalem, pasti ada diskonnya. Pesan GrabCar pakai promo YouGrab. Kejar ini, kejar itu, kejar. Keep kalem, nggak ada kata telat. Pesan grip baik ada jaminan anti ngaret. Makin sering belanja, makin banyak poin yang kamu dapatkan. Dapat diskon, jadi untung terus. Bayar belanjaanmu dengan poin yang kamu punya. Belanja jadi gratis, jadi untung terus. Dan untung terus dapat banyak promo. Jadi member Indomaret Poin ke sekarang. Untungnya nonstop.
system is for everyone. Ready? So it all started when I was at a friend's party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. I mean, all the time. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. It's incredible. Wow. Attention passengers, this is the final call of flight. Wait. Is that a phone? Look at the performance, the graphics. That thing's a gaming machine. A new challenger. Is that Faker? No that man's a gaming legend. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. And here we go. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. <laughs> We've got each other's back. Legendary. We're the best duet ever. An enemy has been slain. The melody is my calling. The music of my bow will cleanse their hearts. Supernova to the rescue! Music is the strongest form of magic. UBS Gold, trust in gold. Kekompakan menjadi kekuatan. Kehormatan menjadi tujuan. Kemenangan adalah kemewahan bagi mereka yang berjuang meraih impian. Limited Edition UBS Gold X Mobile Legend Bang Bang. Rayakan setiap momen berharga dengan emas. Main bareng, investasi bareng UBS Gold. Limited Edition Maya Necklace UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Eudora Bracelet UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Bundle UBS Gold Bar X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Gratis Hero Skin Setiap pembelian item collaboration Tersedia di UBSLifestyle.com Blibli dan di e-commerce UBS Lifestyle Halo para pengejar Kejar ini, kejar itu Kejar Keep kalem, pasti ada diskonnya Pesan Grab Car pakai promo You Grab Halo para pengejar Kejar ini, kejar itu Kejar Keep kalem, gak ada kata telat Pesan Grab baik ada jaminan anti ngaret.
Belanja di Indomaret makin banyak untungnya. Kumpulkan cashback poin jadi untung terus. Makin sering belanja, makin banyak poin yang kamu dapatkan. Dapat diskon jadi untung terus. Bayar belanjaanmu dengan poin yang kamu punya. Belanja jadi gratis jadi untung terus. Dan untung terus dapat banyak promo. Jadi member Indomaret Poin ke sekarang. Untungnya non-stop. Party. Mia, can you send me that? Sure. Everyone keeps asking. Mia, can you send me that? Even my French neighbor. Mia! I mean, all the time. Can you send me that? I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. It's incredible. Like, Wait, is that a phone? Look at the performance, the graphics. That thing's a gaming machine. A new challenger. Is that Faker? No that man's a gaming legend. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. And here we go. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. <laughs> Back. We're the best duet ever. An enemy has been slain. 
The melody is my calling. The music of my bow will cleanse their hearts. Supernova to the rescue! Music is the strongest form of magic. UBS Gold. Trust in Gold. Kekompakan menjadi kekuatan. Kehormatan menjadi tujuan. Kemenangan adalah kemewahan bagi mereka yang berjuang meraih impian. Limited Edition UBS Gold X Mobile Legend Bang Bang. Rayakan setiap momen berharga dengan emas. Main bareng, investasi bareng UBS Gold. Limited Edition Maya Necklace UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Eudora Bracelet UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Limited Edition Bundle UBS Gold Bar X Mobile Legends Bang Bang Gratis Hero Skin Setiap pembelian item collaboration Tersedia di UBSLifestyle.com Blibli dan di e-commerce UBS Lifestyle Halo para pengejar Kejar ini, kejar itu Kejar Keep kalem, pasti ada diskonnya Pesan Grab Car pakai promo You Grab Halo para pengejar Kejar ini, kejar itu Kejar Keep kalem, gak ada kata telat Pesan Grab baik ada jaminan anti ngaret. Jadi Indomaret makin banyak untungnya. Kumpulkan cashback poin jadi untung terus. Makin sering belanja, makin banyak poin yang kamu dapatkan. Dapat diskon jadi untung terus. Bayar belanjaanmu dengan poin yang kamu punya. Belanja jadi gratis jadi untung terus. Dan untung terus dapat banyak promo. Jadi member Indomaret Poin ke sekarang. Untungnya nonstop.
Even my French neighbor. I mean, all the time. I'm not making this up. Hey, can you send me that? Everyone. Sure. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. That a phone. Look at the performance, the graphics. That thing's a gaming machine. A new challenger. Is that Faker? No that man's a gaming legend. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. And here we go. Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. Get it now. <laughs> back. We're the best duet ever. An enemy has been slain. The melody is my calling. The music of my bow will cleanse their hearts. Supernova to the rescue! Music is the strongest form of magic. UBS Gold, Trust in Gold. Kekompakan menjadi kekuatan. Kehormatan menjadi tujuan. Kemenangan adalah kemewahan bagi mereka yang berjuang meraih impian. Limited Edition UBS Gold X Mobile Legend Bang Bang. Rayakan setiap momen berharga dengan emas. 
Main bareng, investasi bareng UBS Gold. Limited Edition Maya Necklace UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Limited Edition Eudora Bracelet UBS Gold X Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Limited Edition Bundle UBS Gold Bar X Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Gratis Hero Skin setiap pembelian item collaboration. Tersedia di ubslifestyle.com, Blibli, dan di e-commerce UBS Lifestyle. Halo para pengejar! Wah, saya bantuin ya. Kejar ini, ini kejar ya. itu, kejar! Keep kalem, pasti ada diskonnya. Pesan GrabCar pakai promo YouGrab. Kejar ini, kejar itu, kejar. Keep kalem, nggak ada kata telat. Pesan Grab Bike ada jaminan anti ngaret. Cashback poin jadi untung terus. Makin sering belanja, makin banyak poin yang kamu dapatkan. Dapat diskon jadi untung terus. Bayar belanjaanmu dengan poin yang kamu punya. Belanja jadi gratis jadi untung terus. Dan untung terus dapat banyak promo. Jadi member Indomaret Poin ke sekarang. Untungnya nonstop.
beraksi Jalani ambisi Aku kan menyawakan hari ini You know we won't miss the free You know I'm focused As if you have a loudest We all live Nyalakan apimu Hadapi semua tantangan Hadang semua serangan Jatuh bukan halangan Bakar semangatmu Janganlah engkau menyerah Kita kan buat semangat Yeah. 
menjalani ambisi Aku kan menyawakan hari ini You know we won't miss the thing You know I don't focus as if you have a loudest We all live Nyalakan apimu hadapi semua tantangan Hadang semua serangan Jatuh bukan halangan Bakar semangatmu Janganlah engkau menyerah Kita kan buat sejarah Classico matches in MPL Indonesia history. We're bringing you Onik versus Alter Ego for the closing match of today's playoffs. Day number three, MPL Indonesia season 11, powered by Moonton. Presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy A series, A34 and A354 5G. Official mobile internet partner, Telkom Cell. Official gold partner by UBS Gold. Partners in esports. Junior Games, Grab, Secret Lab, Bleebly, Official Broadcast, Max Stream, Broadcast Partner, TV RI Sport, Partner, Indomarnet Point Coffee, and supported by PB ESI. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, Sans! That's the crazy Sans riding a dinosaur as Adi, the coach himself, brings the dino all the way in, but the other members, they'll have a pretty normal walk-in to G Expo. Here, Hall D2, where we are live with a full crowd. Ghani, Arashi, and Mirko at your service. We're gonna be talking about Onik first, though, as they enter. Man, Onik. Woo! They are something special. The only match, the only 3 and 0 match thus far was done by Onik. This time, though, Going up against two Kages, well, technically one Kage in play, right? Only Udo. But let's see, will that be a factor? Pi! Again, so reliable on that EXP. But Arashi, all right? Remember, one team that wins this match will secure a spot in the MSC 2023 later on in Cambodia. So remember, Woo. this is a lot at stake, but the losing team will not go home. They will go down and face Evos. Oof. I don't think you want to face Evos right now, the way they have been, they've been playing. They don't care about objectives. They don't care about getting the gold lead. They'll just oh. take you down with a My team God. fight. But once again, you guys are going to be accompanied here for the second match of the day by me, Mirko. Gani, right so, here on your screen. And obviously, the man, the myth, the legend, the analyst that's, who's an RQ fan, who is currently pretty sad. Arashi, how are you feeling? All I feel is pain. But it's gonna be Arashi here analyzing for you guys, as always. Despite the uh, unideal circumstances, uh, we, the show must go on. Here, here, here's Onik another. Yeah. against Alter Ego. This is definitely a match to watch out for. On paper, it's a bit one-sided, but keep in mind, Alter Ego has been improving at such an insane rate. If you overlook them, you're gonna regret it, man. The top three teams right left standing, so it's gonna be confirmed that we will not see a Royal Bestie Grand Final. Yep. But when we lose, we remain loyal. All right, that's it. Arashi, if you can't support your team while they're losing, don't support them when they're winning. Exactly. So I'm going to support a team that did beat RRQ, you know, to prove that they are actually better. So there's a bit of a contrast here on the English desk, so you can look forward to that. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. So here it is. We will see Onik versus Alter Ego. Enough talk about the previous matches and the teams who've been knocked out. Now 
it's time for Onik and Alter Ego. Alter Ego, their first chance since season six to make it to the grand finals. For Onik, it's another day at work. It's Onik. It's the Onik that has been in the grand finals three seasons in a row. Top standings in the regular season, top two, four seasons in a row. And like Donny mentioned earlier, 3-0, the only team to be able to clean sweep their opponents in the playoffs so far. Is there that much of a level difference, that much of a gap between first place Onik that went 13-1 in the regular season and every other team? It seems like this part, yeah, right? I feel like the only tier, and that is tier S, in that tier S, only Onik. But I feel like the other teams, tier A, tier B, tier C, but the only tier here, it seems like, tier S team is only Onik. And for a reason, if and only if they can pull off another 2 and oh, that shows levels, all right? That would be crazy, man. And that's the idea, right? You can always have great standout moments, great highlights, but honestly, if you can keep it consistent the way Onik does, it's just not it's enough. Matter. And for Onik, consistency is definitely one of the bigger words here, because they are not faltering at all. Every single time anyone, any team, tries and do something new, they just know how to deal with it, and they haven't looked shaken a single time in the whole season, I think. Also, yesterday, well, you know, sure, maybe they can read out a lot of the teams, but the Sultanates yesterday declared war against the kings of MPL Indonesia season 10. The defending kings right now, Onik. So we'll see. Alter Ego took down one king. Now it's the other. The king that has been dominating MPL Indonesia like it's nothing. I would, that was such... It was a missed opportunity, I would say, for Onik. 13-1, not 14-0, but hey, it happens. Definitely happens. I see you're pretty uh, pretty happy about that, Mirko. I wonder why that is. Happy about what? That is not a 14-0. That is not a, because this guy is going to go crazy if it was a 14-0. He can brag about his, um, real, his football club and his MLBB club in the oh. same way. Oh. Goni is very vocal, losses. if you guys didn't know. What? Gun is very vocal, if you guys didn't know. Very. That's why he's a caster. But, Rashi, take us through oh. right now with the hot topic. That really shows that Udil right now is in the form that he wanted to be back in Season 10. The alter ego that are contenders for the title, even declaring war, being so vocal and confident in the post-match interviews. Well, for Alter Ego, right, the fact that this is just such a nostalgic look. It's an aggressive Alter Ego that has all the tools available. It's the signature aggressive style, and even Udo being a signaturely aggressive in the interviews with his words. So this is exactly what the Alter Ego fans have been waiting for. And looking at their improvements, it's definitely very significant. But is it enough to try and go up against Onik, right? You definitely need some kind of un unpredictability, some X-Factor situations, but in the drafting phase, this is what's going to be so important. In the previous match, we saw that between Evos and RRQ, the draft was so significant in the in impacting the execution in the Land of Dawn. So now, with two brilliant minds behind both these teams, it's going to be very intense all the way since the beginning. The growth, you know? Definitely, no? yeah. Definitely, it's going to be a very intense here, Mirko. Remember, it's also a, somehow a, um, a bragging right, right? Winning this match, oh, yeah. Odil. Right, he was once Akagi, he was once undefeated as well. The only team that went undefeated, right, throughout the regular season and more even going up against his former team, quote unquote, will this will this bring fire in Odil and friends? Or will it intimidate Alter Ego? Knowing their um philosophy, knowing their characters, they don't seem intimidated. I think so, right? I think it's going to be very, very hard to intimidate these guys because they've been underdogs throughout the entirety they of the regular season. They were once eighth in the position, right? Uh, Sixth, seven. They six. were eighth at one point. You're exactly. right. So here it is. A strong statement from Alter Ego. But in the regular season, Arashi, it's been a strong statement and a stomp from Onik. Even in the leg two, not a single game victory as well. So Onik has been shutting down Alter Ego, but Sally Boy and Rossi, the two members you see on screen right here, they have stepped up so much in terms of flexibility, in terms of options in the hero pool. They've just shown that they have what it takes to be a top tier team. And a lot of these teams have faltered, right? Even RRQ were defeated quite soundly by this newfound dynamic flexibility. So Onik definitely have their eyes on Alter Ego. But have they found a solution, Gunny? What do you think? Alter Ego? Onik. 
Onyx solution for what? For, for Alter Ego's new form, right? Like, for example, new form. Sally, Sally Boy being flexible on the assassins and also on the fighters, right? It's a whole different look. Here's the thing about, let me let me um, give you context about Onyx, all right? Arashi, in case you haven't noticed, right? Kyrie can play fighter, assassin, and tank. Right. CW can play a Belleric in the gold lane, <laughs> all right? Keyboy can play the Cho, can play the Diggy, can play the support. So, I feel like it, was, it should be Alter Ego looking for the solution to find this perfect team, the all-star team, I, I might say. Onik, Alter Ego, I'm asking you, Arashi, what do they have in their cards? I think what they have is that wild tendency to just go and make crazy team fights happen because it's no secret that for Onik, it's always calculated, right? We talked about this in yesterday's match. Every single thing they do, you can look straight to the map and see like, okay, this is what they want. There's something yep. on the map they desire. But now against Alter Ego, there's a chance that before they're even ready, Alter Ego will just pull the trigger because Alter Ego does what Alter Ego wants. If they can try and extend and try and turn the pace of the game more in line with what they want, Goni, maybe and just maybe, Onik will get a bit confused. But since it's a best of five though, I feel like there's just so much time for Onik to just adjust and find a new way to try and deal with this. There you go, right? I mean, for both sides of the parties here, you understand their winning conditions. And for Alter Ego, it's been a very big difference from the Alter Ego that we've seen throughout the season. Season 7 to 10, it's the ultimate aggressive Alter Ego. The ones that will just want to go in, they will dive, they will go for the one-dimensional picks as long as they win the early game and transfer that early game to the mid game. But so far here, very calculated, very calculated Alter Ego with Rossi in the midst, Rossi. And for Onik, they it feels like they can do whatever they want. That's how good they've been in Season 11. I mean, keep in mind, this man right here, Sans, has been doing a lot of aggressive maneuvers, and it just seems like he just knows the limits so well, or there's just something about him. People say it's the instincts, but when his opponents try and punish him, he just finds a way to make it work in his favor instead. Right here, he gets jumped on, and somehow, some way, they lose the fight instead. So Sans, not only being one of the main damage dealers, but also being a huge distraction if you're trying to focus on one person. If you try and shut down CW in the late game, for example, Sans will definitely make those plays follow up on the plays from Boots as well. So like Gwani mentioned, the whole team is just so dynamic and so flexible. It's almost like teams have no idea, have no clue what is the weak spot they can exploit here. I agree, and on a very, very, um clear display here on your screen where Onik, you're right, Mirko, they just they will do anything. Sansi with the bait as well, <laughs> man. Last game on that Valentina, he baited multiple times. Sans here baiting Taz on that joy here to just see low HP he knows and godlike. like <laughs> that's a solo by the way, no assist. It's down you, to the wire. Imagine. It's really really good um calculations this guy. And I do want to add this though, right? Perhaps um, the battle that perhaps can make, make Onyx sweat, I'm gonna be honest with you, is you that know. gold lane, yeah. right? CW, sure, he's a reliable gold laner, but if you have seen past Nino's performances, I feel like Nino oh, man. Is, has the slight edge. Nino has been phenomenal, but so has Sultan Udil. No longer the Kage, nope. proclaiming himself and the team as sultans who want to challenge for the throne. Funny enough, both these players that, we show, uh, that were shown on screen, Sans and Udo, they really enjoy playing this Valentina right now, but you have to think that if Sans can be a bit more dynamic using a lot of different ultimates, sometimes Udo, he just, just goes aggressively and wants to do damage. It doesn't matter, it doesn't, really be, it doesn't do a lot of unpredictable things and use a lot of different ultimates, but he just knows what to do, what to do at the right time, and his aggression in the mid lane it's also what allows Alter Ego to be a lot more dynamic in ganking for these side lanes. And along with his team, every time he is in form, every time the game really goes well for him, you do see that there's an instant boost in the whole performance of Alter Ego. So not only is his presence physically there in the map, but also mentally for his teammates, if he gets the Valentina, if he gets the Farsa, that burst damage is definitely a big tool that Alter Ego really enjoys using and playing around to try and ensure that they get the advantage, they catch their opponents completely off guard. The way they were able to force this fight is still so amazing yep. to me. Again, RQ having the evolved Lord, the normal play would just to be 
back off. But if they did back off, this would just be Alter Ego pushing them and poking them down all the way so that they cannot use the Evolve Lord anyway. So they decided, you know what, we need to try to fight this, and it did not work out for RRQ. Alter Ego were able to take the game 3-1 to one against RRQ. This time, though, facing different opponents. I would say much better opponents in Onik, the team that, again, I there's no other words to use. It's the most dominant team that we've seen, maybe even ever, considering how the game has developed, considering how teams have all developed and grown. How the heck does Onik grow more than all the teams that have swapped rosters, all the teams that have swapped coaches, all the teams who have tried to look at them and learn from them four seasons in a row. Well, that's the big puzzle. That's the big question that no one really understands. Maybe it's just pure talent. But for now, let's take a look at the keys to victory for Alter Ego right here. Respect Onyx Kadira being able to be flexed around uniquely. We haven't seen that being the case for a lot of the teams in the MPL right now. But for Onyx, it can go in the hands of Sans or Keyboy. And afterwards, counter Onyx early aggression with the family meta, right? Family. I don't know, the synergy, right? The togetherness. A lot of words are being used to describe that, but if Alter Ego can be in sync and have that non-verbal, almost telepathic communication and have that synergy, maybe those big, crazy fights, they might be able to outperform Onik when things get that complex. Mm, you know what? I feel like the only team that has the, or close to, uh, close chemistry such as Onik is Alter Ego. You're right, Onik, very, um, well known that their chemistry is unstoppable, but I feel like what what are the main keys to six victories here for Sada Onik? For Sada Onik, control the early game like they always do. When they are the ones in control, when they are the ones dictating the pace, right? The neutral objectives have always been secured. They just really know like the roadmap on how they will achieve the victory at every single minute of the game. Along with that, though, limit. Rasi's hero pool. This man was questioned again and again for having very limited heroes and not performing on the engaged heroes. But now, it seems like on a few select heroes, he, perf he performs really well, but only on those select few heroes. So if they can limit that and push him onto a hero that he is not comfortable in, it's gonna be a bit difficult. We've seen him struggle with that before. So far, playoffs. Rasi has played the Atlas, Estes, Diggy, Natalia, and Kaja. I believe. Those are the five heroes that we usually see on this man. And you're right, we haven't really seen a lot of teams really target ban Rossi in the playoffs so far, which has been the way to go to beat Alter Ego in the regular season. But with Nino being a menace, I think it makes sense. A lot of teams are now looking at Nino more than they are looking at Rossi, but is that where Alter Ego's strength lie? Or their weakness, actually? With Nino being targeted, should Rossi be the one who gets target ban? Who is Rossi the one who should be shut down? It might be a, it might be a gamble as well. It's limiting mm. heroes, uh, uh, Rossi's hero in the first phase. I feel like Alter Ego, they can easily counter that and just pick up the hero for Rossi in that first phase. Prioritize Nino, Rossi, and as well as Udil, right? Three heroes. Meanwhile, Celebor and Pi, they can be flexed around. They can play a lot of hero pools, so perhaps that should be their approach here. For the side of Alter Ego, just secure Udil, Rossi, and as well as Nino's hero in that th th first three picks. I feel like they're gonna be okay with their game plan, with the game plan that perhaps that they are brewing. That is a good approach though. Onik, I feel like they shouldn't really try to limit unless they didn't, don't pick up Rossi's hero pool in that first three. Well, there keep in go. mind though, if you want to go with that strategy, this also means that in the first phase of drafting, you are exposing your mid lane and the gold lane, and that in itself also though. brings a lot of issues. So, I don't know, they have to pull out something really amazing if they want to try and apply that strategy, Goni. No, it's no, usually, no. it's usually, they usually do that though. You have Farsa, Udnino always in the first phase, and sometimes Melissa picks up the first phase, so it's not really a, it's not really a, it's not really an unconventional thing to pick up the Melissa first pick and whatnot, and whatnot. These days, I feel like it's more of a secure and comfortable. Secure yep. the priors. Absolutely, but you know, I just really disagree with your word choice. Amazing. What's 
You mean awesome, Rashi. That's awesome. the way to go. Because, hey, speaking of awesome, we got the two awesome phones right here on camera for you guys on the desk. It's the Galaxy A Series 5G, which includes the Galaxy A34 5G and Galaxy A54 5G. So Clean this with right here, this is the A34 5G. On my right, as you can see, the Mirror Bless or the Mirror Curse for Samsung phones. It's obviously the Mirror Bless. RAM is up to wow. 8 gigabytes, ladies and gentlemen. The memory is up to 2, 5, 6 gigabytes. Screen, Super AMOLED Plus. With a refresh rate up to 120 hertz. It's basically Ooh. a monitor. The processor is Exynos 1380, and it's 5G ready. The battery, 5000 mAh. Okay, you might be saying, Mirko, what the heck? What are all these specs? Must be so expensive. Must be... 20 mil. Must be a... Five billion dollars. No, ladies oh. and gentlemen, five million IDR. Under. That's right. To go and check it out right now. Samsung.com slash ID so that you can, you know, download the great app that you can utilize at home to watch MPL 2023 Max Stream. Also, hey, it's not just MPL 2023. It's Ghani's favorite shows as well. We got the Lovin' Coach with Rachel. Lovin' Game as well. Mm -hmm. The one I believe. The one believe. These are my two personal favorites, all right? Rasha, the Wonder Kid, and, and Cole Ack, Express, <laughs> all right? So don't miss out on cool and exciting shows. Watch where only on MaxStream on your new Samsung Galaxy phone. There you go, Rashi. Have you been enjoying MaxStream? Oh, yeah, man. Like, we spent a lot of time at home, right, after MPL. And I think just watching shows and quality shows like uh, MaxStream is going to be amazing. And now let's take a look at the lineup for Onik, Sans, Boots, CW, Kyrie, and Keyboy. Just the most successful, most consistent combination right here. They have a chance, they still have the option of changing it out, but at this point, with how well they're doing, they don't really need to do so. Here as well though, again, both teams sticking to their main lineup. It's pretty sad that Samo hasn't got time to shine at all, but alter ego, we're not joking here as well. They want to secure MSC, they want to be top two in season 11. Ghani, it's time to welcome the two teams. Let's welcome Team Onik and Alter Ego Esports as they walk onto the stage saying Ooh. their hellos, saying their hi, saying their hellos and goodbye technically to their fans. And this is going to be personal for these two teams. Both teams looking focused, looking relaxed as well. But my God, you are seeing now the best of the best MLBB team. Man, they just seem so relaxed and they are definitely feeling that confidence. Altrigo with the great performances as well as Onik with the consistent, amazing performance in the line of Dawn. And look at the crowd, man. It has to feel amazing knowing that the hundreds of people you see right in front of you on stage has your back. For better or worse, they have been through thick and thin, especially for Alter Ego, who has not been able to get the best of performances in the early stages of the season. And for Onik, the Onik fam's always there, including the one person in the English desk as well. Yeah, for sure. The man you have been listening to, Ghani, is a big fan of both of the coaches for Onik, especially Adi and Yeb, but also for Rashi. He's a big fan of Alter Ego. Why? Because there's a man with a similar name, Ah Rasi. Ooh. And even their coach, <laughs> Aris and Nafari, have been able to facilitate that man, Arasi. Arashi. Not Arashi, Arasi. That's why his name is Rasi. He's no. been able to facilitate Rasi super well, and that's been the winning condition. Alter Ego have come to life in the playoffs. Look at the most pick and ban heroes here though for the side of Alter Ego. Farsa has always been used, but now Valentina has caught up there as well. And for both teams, that's Fredrin. We've seen it being used so well in the hands of Albert from RRQ, but this hero just does everything. Crowd control, pick off potential, burst damage, sustain, everything you would want, especially if you want a really relevant presence in the jungle. So both these heroes will definitely be contested. And then afterwards, it's all about the claw and the carry. Will it be picked yet again? Because so far, today at least, we have not seen that carry that often at all. You know what's... I I'm sorry, you know, I I'm getting distracted here. 
It's funny that Yeb has coach in his name. I thought his name was just Yeb, and the coach Yeb thing was just nope. like, you know, coach Yeb. <laughs> it's his title and then his name. So, but no, the coach is coach Yeb and Nafari, not just Yeb. So technically, so he's coach coach Yeb. Exactly. He's coach coach Yeb. It's coach coach Yeb going against coach Nafari. And the stats really shows that coach coach is definitely having a bit of the lead here. And the band by opponents, though, you can see that for Onik. The, the Fanny that we haven't seen, so elusive, hasn't been allowed to be played in the hands of Kyrie, And for good reason. That man will just absolutely tear it up. As you take a look at the previous draft recap, like we mentioned, the Claude has always been contested, and usually it comes down to the Melissa and the carry, but that might just change. That might just change indeed here, right? In the previous draft recap, well, in leg two in particular, leg it two. was um, Onik defeating all Torigos, 2-0. Without any like, um, yeah, without a straightforward approach, and it's gonna be a tough challenge here. But it seems like it's been a story of reverse sweeps. Well, reverse, um, reverse win, right? Yeah. Like reverse one, wins. well, match one, RQ beat Evos both legs. Uh huh. They lost in the playoffs. Bigatron as You're well. right. Going up against Alter Ego, they won two both oh. times, two both oh. times, and then lost in the playoffs. So. Right. So far, as well, the only team who's broken the first game curse has been Onyx. So, it's only hey, hmm. maybe this is the team. If there was a curse to be broken, you can bet on Onyx. And this is their chance to prove that they are worthy of getting Grand Finals four seasons in a row. Can't still get my head behind that. Four seasons, Grand Finals. Oh my god. And this is the strongest they have ever looked. The most consistent they have ever looked so far. We'll see if they will be able to once again find the same level of success with this man in the center of it all. The import who has been legendary, Kyrie. There's also a lot of controversy as well, but Kyrie, man, he just does everything. The retributions are solid. If he's on a Fredrin, the engagements are there. If he's on an assassin, you best watch out for your gold laner. So now with that being the case though, right? Speaking of Kyrie, his counterpart inside of Alter Ego is also Sully Boy, and they both have a reputation for playing well on those assassins. With the meta shifting ever so slightly towards the gold lane, maybe those assassins will be picked up, and we are going straight into the drafting phase. All right, here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to game number one of match two for the upper bracket finals. Woo! Alter Ego versus Onik. Alter Ego on the blue side. Again, trying to set up for that Melissa first pick with the Claude ban instantly. That's their winning condition. But Onik, knowing CW, knows that matchup really well, understands Melissa. I feel like they might as well just let it go. Try to read Alter Ego out. I agree. Right here, it's, it seems like Onik. They're just unfazed, right? Letting go of the Joy doesn't really a problem. Perhaps letting go of the Melissa shouldn't be a problem as well. But Onik, though, they understand that perhaps their composition is very uh, flexible, right? They like to play the Rome Mage, such as the Kadida. And that can cause a problem if your opposing side have the Natalia. With that in mind, Rassi also, right? It somehow limits heroes Rassi. So again, Time within the keys to victory, it's gonna be the joy here, band. Out on it, what will they do here in that last ban? I thought Alter Ego somehow forced Joy that to be banned by Onik. Well, this means that Onik, they will be banning away too many of the heroes available for Rossi. And honestly, it's great that he can have some heroes with success, but in the, in the grand scheme of things, the fact that you can be predictably picking only one out of like three heroes, right? A very shallow hero pool for Rossi still. I think it just makes it very predictable for Onik to try and draft something. Because for the most part, it's not too flexible. It's always reactive. It's always counter engage or security for his team. We've seen that in the previous match, Evos was, uh, well, RRQ was able to use drafting to try and counter the Claude pick for Brands. Maybe they can do the same thing right here, Onik, against hey, Alter Ego. Whoa! Not what we expected, no Melissa. They instead pick up a hero that's good against that Melissa. The Farsa was also picked by RRQ to try to nullify the Melissa from Evo's Legends. Now, so far, Melissa has had the better win rate up against the Farsa counterpart. I feel like for Onik, it's a no-brainer. Why not go for the Melissa? He, yesterday, literally just yesterday, Brands and Dreams, I believe. 2v1, easy peasy from this man. And 
with that in mind as well, right? They should add Valentina. We can't Makes just sense. copy away that Feather Airstrike. It's going to be FCP battle. Me. But now it's going to be the Fredrin <laughs> here. Sure. So, question now. Fredrin, Valentina, or Fredrin, Melissa? Mm. I think I think Onyx isn't really urgent sure. on the gold lane. They just have all the flexibility wow. available. They go for the more flexible pick and the more aggressive pick in the Valentina. Remember that the highlights earlier was of Sans. Gila, as Shervin likes to say, or Gilang, his actual name. Ooh. Very bold move here from the side of Onyx. Again, though, this is what we've come to expect. Onyx likes to say to their opponents, try it. Yeah. Try the winning condition. Try the hero that has gotten you this far because we will try to counter it. And yesterday, letting the joy open. So many different heroes have been let open by Onyx, especially in the playoffs. It feels like a challenge, but it also puts so much pressure on yep. the enemy team, yep. because losing on your signature pick would be such a massive win for Onyx. And there you go. They successfully baited it out. Now, with the Melissa and the Forza, it's going to be the Diggy very early on. First phase. Three heroes that Three heroes. I mentioned. Nino, Rossi, and, and as well as Udil, right? Letting go Sally Boy, and as well as um, Pi Hero for last. Beatrix, though, picked up. Wow, man. Like you predicted, like you predicted the Johnny, path. the it's heroes for Udil, Nino, and Rossi. But here's the thing, though. It makes sense, because for Onik, usually if you have a Diggy, the only real threat is that long-range artillery. The fact that Onik has already picked up the Valentina means that for Alter Ego, they don't really have to worry about that being a big Sanjo. problem for Nino in those big team fights. Securing the Diggy early on means that Onik now has to amend the rest of their draft. It's a comment from Moon, though. I hope Onik and Alter Ego can make it to Woo! MSC 2023. Now, if you guys want to know the full interview, what he said exactly is he's tired of facing RQ. <laughs> <laughs> because he, well, Tonak have not won. They haven't been able to win against <laughs> Tonak, I mean, against RQ. Yep. I think in the entirety yep. of MLBB Esports history. So, <laughs> it's a fun little trivia there. I think he can rest assured that RQ will not be making it to MSC Bye, this Rashi. time. And here, it's going to be the Yu Zong ban, not by. <laughs> Alter Ego. Okay. It's actually by Onik here, understanding that, you know what, the Forza is not really going to get countered here because they I already have a Diggy with man, the time journey. You know Onik have been watching very closely. Yep. Sure, they will leave the Melissa open, but they will take away the supporting heroes towards that Melissa goal. Man, now with the Barats banned out though, the potential for Sully Boy to go for a utility jungler is available with the Akai, but We'll have to see if that is the option that he goes for, right? Narrowing down the hero pool, knowing that the Barats was still standing at a very high win rate. I believe it was close to 100 still. That is definitely something that Onik is trying to reverse. And now with the final ban available for all Chirigo, are they going to ban an Link. engage tool? Are they going to ban something counter engaging or dive towards that back line? Mm, you know what? I thought about a Hilda. Ban here for out of Alter Ego. It somehow nullifies the Diggy, but no one's gonna be the Kaja ban. Not the uh, a Roamer, but not Hilda, it seems like, right? Onik now with the first pick of the second phase. I feel like they should secure a hero here for Pi. Right. Well, for Boots, right. rather. The XP. No, Hilda picked up, right? So, yeah, it's because Alter Ego did not ban the Hilda out, so it's gonna be picked up by Keyboy. A very good hard, a hard counter towards that Diggy. Keep in mind, the Hilda with the Concussive Blast does a lot of damage. And in the late game, that is still enough damage to push Udil away in that Feather Airstrike. So that could be something that Onik is looking to do, ensuring that they have the range advantage if they can use the Matrix to try and use that Renner path. and outzone uh, the members of Alter Ego. But for Alter Ego, that's going to be the Arlot pick for the hands of Pi. But Onik has set up to be able to pick a counter for the Boots. Very good cover. Honestly, looking at the Alter Ego right now with the Arlet pick, it does give them so much more cover. An underrated thing about the Arlet that a lot of people haven't been, you know, looking at is the way he can peel. The final smash literally gets everybody <laughs> away. The artists to end worlds. up the traps here. Noticing the maybe, maybe Onik will be utilizing the Fredrin into the jungle. The Martis becomes a very good pick against it. But Onik can definitely still flex that Fredrin into the XP lane and maybe pick up something like a Ling, but with a Diggy, it's already very tough for yeah. the Ling. We'll see though, Avonik are feeling confident. Kyrie definitely Masha understands how to utilize that Samsung Ling. 
I'm looking at a hero that can go to the back line without being disturbed by digging. That's Masha, I feel like. Will they pick it up, though? Seems like it's a possibility. And Dude, he's really a likes the Masha, but it's not going to be the Masha. It's going to be the Flex Ling. Wow. Indeed. And three juicy targets, right? That can be somehow targeted by that Ling. The Diggy, the Melissa, and that Farsa. You were just talking about the amount of coverage that Altrigo has, Mirko, but Onik are completely undeterred. They'll find a way. And honestly, it might be using that huge mobility because yes, in the team fights, Altrigo has a bit of a edge, right, in crowd control in AoE. But for Onik, they never give you the fights that you want. It's always when you least want it or least expect it, if that's when they pull the trigger and just catch you with very few options to try and counter it. It's a very interesting draft because honestly, looking at it, it feels like, again, they are literally giving every single one of the comfort heroes over to Alter Ego and picking their comfort heroes with the Ling. The Battle of Comfort, ladies and gentlemen. Who's it gonna be? Will Onik somehow get the victory with a composition that is built to be executed soup in a, oh it's so difficult to execute we'll see let's we'll see. see let's see right this is truly gonna be a make it or break it moment for onik let's see let's enter the land of dawn for game one between alter ego and onik Sally boy already forced to use that retribution by none other than keyboy that signifies you perhaps link Okay, Ling will play it safe. I thought Ling will travel towards the orange buff, but no. I gotta give the honorary Samsung Ling, guys, for Kyrie. As we enter the game right here. Rashi, why Ling? It's probably for the macro here. If she, if you go and have a very crowd control heavy approach, like Onik usually does, like you mentioned, Mirko, all three guys have a lot of counters and they have the Diggy picked up as well. But if you look at the composition now for Onyx, for the most part, only Fredrin is very hardcore on the crowd control, so they're trying to play around that very early Diggy pick, but look at the gold lane. Oof, Keyboy just taking so much damage on that Hilda pick. But so far, going up against Martis, he won't be able to dive oh, in the back line just yet. Solo kill almost there by San. Skyrie will oh. say hello, Tempest the Blade. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Sally Boy! Outplaying two members of Onigir. First blood. Alter Ego now stepping a little bit on towards the gas there. That was a very, very clean outplay there by Sally Boy and as well as Udil, my guy. Hey, Ghani, your all star team there making a mistake already, but hey. The event for All-Star is going to start on the 31st of March, so go ahead and check it out. Follow Itzy and Rafaela in the Land of Dawn. Arashi, what happened? They just overcommitted, and they were really intent on shutting Udil down, but unfortunately, the crowd control from the Martyrs is something that they didn't expect. And look at this damage from Nino. Slowly but surely, man. He's not on the Jujutsu Kaisen skin, though, Mirko. Is this a sign? Is this foreshadowing? It's unfortunate because I think that skin is currently bugged. So that's why we haven't been seeing it at all in the tournament room. It's kind of strange, but that's why. We haven't been seeing the Jujutsu skin at all. Or the Melissa. But back again on topic with the going in, Gani. Oh, Udil. This time, say bye-bye. CW picks up the first 200 gold there for the side of CW. Wow, the aggression, man. It's still even right now, but using this Hilda pick, it seems like Onik is trying to nullify the threat of the Diggy. And then the EXP lane, a lot of moves, Pi and Boots just duking it out. But there is more prior for Alter Ego, and they're going straight for that hurdle. Seems like here, Feather Airstrike will be popped. Telly Boy now will claim the first neutral objective without any contest. Sans will be forced somehow here to recall after the clear. And top side now should be their main focus. Udil, wings by wings. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Oh, he wants what? to kill Sans. And Kyrie now, careful. Ling, Tempest of Blade pops now. T Boy providing cover. T Boy picks up the kill with the help of Kyrie there. Rare thing to see to be to see Sans getting outplayed. But there you go. There's by the, the first OG. time. By the OG. There for the first time for everything. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Here, talent prediction, though, you can see, again, the only alter ego, right? Did you go alter? No, you went for Onyx. I went for Onyx. Two alter You, egos, I don't need to actually. ask. <laughs> I went, no, I went, Gani went alter ego. Oh, what? You Gani? See? You went alter ego? Yeah, I went what the for heck? alter ego. No worries. First I, time for everything, I guess. Literally. See? This was my, um, 
I know, I know. It's okay. But it is a very risky move, even in the draft, right? Yeah, so, that's... again, you can already see Alter Ego utilizing that comfort as they go in. But so far, Onyx, despite losing in these skirmishes, despite getting picked off, have kept their losses to a minimal. You see me able to actually throw away and look around, but look at Keyboy getting pushed down. Yeah, it seems like CW now will be the main target. T-Boy escapes, flickers, but Selly Boy and Udell securing that kill. Now Selly Boy moving with the Mortar Coil to escape that Feather Airstrike. But take a look at Harlan now, 2v1 situation high, soaking a lot of damage, quite low. Gets his time and flickers away, but Kyrie picks up that kill. Top side now, take a look, it's never ending battle. I love it. Minute number four, eight total kill points. Keyboy jumps in onto Zeno and Rossi. He needs to be careful, he has no sprint. Taking a lot of damage, but the damage is not enough yet. Look at the amount of time Onyx is able to buy, though, just by sending Keyboy back again and again, stopping the recall of Nino even yet again. And the other side, Kyrie has been doing work, man. They're able to take Pi out, and they're able to take away the orange buff, so the trading game from Onyx is still definitely in place. And I think oh. that's how they want to win this, man. They have to go for the macro plays, because on a teamfight basis, Agani, I agree with you. Even you can see it, Alter Ego has a significant advantage, but only if Onyx gives them that fight. There you go. Set in stone already. Onyx somehow again with their superior pathing, the macro decision. Kyrie down once already, but he is ahead of Selly Boy. And right now, Onyx are actually able to control the map better. Seems like now with the um, four man from side of Alter Ego in the mid side, they need to be careful here. Blue Keyboard repositioning. Selly Boy already in that turtle. It seems like this time Onyx will contest. Selly Boy moving towards Keyboy here. No commitment just yet. Sans have HP, but they will not commit on towards the turtle. Both teams here disengaging from a fight. Perhaps I might be wrong. Keyboy files that sprint here to escape. Will he be able to escape this time? No! The summation is there. Finding the kill. Will Whoa. he claim the double? Wow. Yes! Selly Boy will! To all one side, Nino bombing that go away, but will it be enough? No, Kyrie says, let me pick up the kill. It's a one for one, one for two rather, but Alter Ego will gain the neutral objective. Another good trade in favor of Alter Ego. Nino surely will fall there, but still, for Alter Ego, it's an objective. It's two kills on the board, and they also get the enemy gold lane. Alter Ego, the way they're playing here, have been absolutely phenomenal. Always reading Onyx movements perfectly, even understanding that Keyboy will be looking for Rossi. Look at Saleh Boy, man, 4-0 and 1. The Marcus is a hero that does absolutely well if he's snowballing, and Saleh Boy is definitely on track to do so. Kyrie is still able to match him in the AXP and Gold Income Department, but only for so long. For Onyx right now, it's all about stalling as long as possible for the point in time where Keyboy can be tanky enough that he won't be able to br be bursted down by Alter Ego before the fight even begins. For now, it's Alter Ego trying to use objective as much as possible to force Onik into these fights, but Onik isn't biting. CW is honestly unreal. Take a look at this, right? Nino has been farming, has been babysit the entire time, and CW still has a gold lead over the man who's been placed on all these resources. Despite him being rotating across the map, he's still able to find that gold lead and just goes to show how much of a good weak side gold laner he is. But the bottom lane, it's in Alter Ego sights. Yeah, they're willing to sacrifice the top side here, it seems like, right? Oh, so they're edge right now on towards Keyboy. Boots will go with flank. Kyrie jumps in. Fox at the will take one member down. Go away. Pops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boots will whoa. not be enter. Not be able to enter as CW flickers away. Sans now trying to find the burst damage flickers as a defense. But it's still Alter Ego getting two kills. That's a superior rotations coming in from Alter Ego. Even sending Pi to pull away the, the creep, the minion wave in the mid lane. So everywhere and everywhere at the same time, Alter Ego just keeps making the plays happen. And there's no real response from Onyx. They can't take team fights if they go for these little skirmishes as well. Nino will never let that happen. Whenever Keyboy wants to jump in, there's a go away. There's a time journey. There's a reverse time bringing him back. No source of initiation as well from the team so far. Looking at Onyx, it is very, very one-sided when we look at just the draft. But again, what's interesting is eight minutes in, it's only a 1,000 gold lead. And the fact that Onyx have built up more map control, somehow getting control over the Lord. 
Sally Boy's looking for the opening goal in it. Gunny. Another airstrike now to Zone the Whoa, Boy. Sally Boy finding the steal. Harry, time to play. Will he be able to escape? But Boots will be sacrificial lamb here, it seems like. Sally Boy getting the monster kill in a minute number nine. Hey man, whatever the draft is, that's a level advantage for Kyrie and Sally Boy just out retreat him. Arashi, what's going on? Sally Boy is just feeling it, man. 6 0 and 1. Absolutely snowballing right now. And Onik. Now they have to be very concerned because the main damage dealer is also a very tanky hero in the form of Sally Boy on that Martis. So for Onik, it's a bit of a double double disadvantage, and they don't have any, nearly enough damage to try and will through the whole HP bar of the Martis. And Sally Boy understands that. Is walking on the turret all over the jungle of Onik. Things are not looking good here for the side of Onik. 4,000 deficit. Take a look at Keyboy here, perhaps looking for an angle, but it seems like the Martis will open vision. Now, inner turret, bot side, bot top side, and the mid here now will be taken down. And with that in mind, the Magic Sentry is in play for the side of Onik. Let's see Alter Ego though. Ooh. Went very aggressively by him. This might be a mistake. Taunt comes through. He gets taken oh. down. And now the Lord will be taken the care of. Boots though. Officials wrap just to soak in and give the damage. Keyboy the backside. Kyrie finds the kill. Keyboy finds the kill as well. As Nino will find one, but it's a wiped out. Onik Esports here responding back. Two minutes ago, Alter Ego gains control. This time round, the yellow porcupines have been sick. The threat has always been lingering. It always, there's an unsettling feeling when you're ahead against Onik, and this is it. You are ahead, 5,000 gold. You have the Lord, you have the turrets, you have a gold lead. But Onik, somehow, someway, they creep in and they take everything back. You think you have an advantage, and before you know it, you make one mistake and your whole team gets wiped out. This is what Onik has in their advantage, the mobility. You start at Alter Eagle, they thought it's about, they're about to siege down the base turrets of Onik. But Onik says, you know what? Let's bring the fight to you. Let's take a look at that instant replay by the Samsung Galaxy A34, A54, 5G. It all begins with Pi getting picked off there. And with the time journey popped open, they have to back away. They fail to take boots down and look at Kyrie and Keyboy coming in. Too fast, too dangerous, too much damage. And with that, they're able to get all the shutdowns, equalize all the gold leads, and even take it away from Alter Ego. Now it's Onik's turn. Man, that's the, um, I guess, the benefit when you're using Ling, right? Before that play, Kyrie was top side. And then he rotated towards the bot side, like, within five seconds. I kid you not. Exactly. That mobility, man. We talked about Onik. Why are they going for this draft? No crowd control, no real engage tools. Mobility, man. You can expect to see the same exact thing again and again. They're going to wait for all three go to try and make something happen and then cut them off from safety from uh, off their base. And with the wave clear right now, with the control around the map, they've taken painstakingly. They can go for this Lord, but keep in mind, the superior team fight is still in the hands of Alter Ego. We'll say once again, if it's a 5v5, like you mentioned. But remember, Onik can utilize something that Alter Ego does not have. The mobility is going to play a big part in these team fights as well. When it comes to the later stage, we're honestly almost there. The Valentina with her dashes, the Ling as well. The models will not be in a place where it can get everyone. Very different to the game against Bigatron and even RRQ yesterday when the Melissa popped off. Here though, Sally Boy, he's been able to take the Lord out. He's trying to you know, get some pressure down on the map with his team as well. But again, like you mentioned, the Ling is always there to answer. Sans Ooh. gets chunked. Off HP, no flicker now for Sans. That is information. Selly Boy takes no time to somehow semi commit on towards this Lord, right? But Selly Boy is in the area, fighting vision as well. Let's see the fight. On the for a move on towards Alter Ego now. 5v5 here. Boots getting the stun. Well, get stunned up. He gets pulled back and Boot surviving with literally one HP. Silly Boy now needs to be careful in the backside. Keyboy forcing to use that go away. Alter Ego somehow oh. isolated. Feather airstrike. Kyrie gets the Lord. Now Kyrie wants to make a move, but that's a mistake. The Silly Boy is there to shut him down. Two for all, but Onik gets the Lord. And Rashi, what do you think about this? 
It's definitely valuable for Onik, man. We talked about not winning in the team fights. The fact that they're able to get the Lord, even though Alter Ego were the ones pressuring, they're the ones with the ways pushing in their favor. That's a massive benefit. And of course, it was very, very close, but somehow, some way, Kyrie strikes again, stealing away the Lord, even though he's on the very vulnerable assassin. But now look at Alter Ego going for more, trying to get the base turret. Yeah, boots move back with the reverse time here. Will be enough damage. No, Zeno no! now low HP, but CW gets taken down. Alter Ego Eastwards gets another kill here, and this time around, it's they saying Onik. Let me get game one. Player goal by UBS Gold. You take a look at that. Kyrie and CW somehow, some way, still on top. And now look at that. Everyone is still in the fight right here. But Kyrie is forced to back away, getting chunked by the Feather Airstrike. Yep, now Boots receiving the stun. Will I be able to escape though, but I might be wrong here. Yes, Kyrie does not pick up the purple. Keyboy now quite isolated here. But it seems like Alter Ego Esports, they will not commit on towards Keyboy. Will they? Is the question of high opponent vision. Oh my god, Keyboy is just buying time at this point, right? To let his team recollect, let his team recover as well. This time around, Selly Boy with the double purple buff here will make sure. In-game equipment item here, itemization, top, thoughts. Blade armor for Keyboy means that Nino can't just randomly be hitting around. He'll be taking some damage back. And having the Athena shield means that he's not really as vulnerable to getting bursted down by the Feather Airstrike. And this means, as we have seen in the mid-game, since about a minute ago, Keyboy can go all over the map behind Alter Ego Esports. And if they want to use a big teamfight ultimate to try and catch a Hilda, out of everyone, not the Link, not the Beatrix, but the Hilda, then Onik is just gonna be very happy to take that trade. With that play right here from Keyboy, they secure ways to force out ultimates, like the go away, for example, and they also secure a way to get a very reliable source of intelligence, which means that they have always had the, uh, the chance to outmaneuver. Silly boy. This time around, Silly boy will be picked off. 5v4 now, Boots seems to be one more here, it seems like. But it seems like, again, the... Discipline coming from Onik. It's uh, very evident. 20 seconds to the Lord. A bit late to the party there, Alter Ego was. Selly Boy, obviously, again, with a little bit of a blunder. Using the Mortal Coil, but not getting through the wall. These little mistakes are going to start building up, especially for Onik here. They're going to be able to punish these mistakes like it's nothing due to their better mobility. Selly Boy down, or just any member down from Alter Ego, creates such a massive hole in the map that Onik can utilize to create more space by clearing out the waves and bursting down the Lord. Yeah, you can see here the Lord will be taken by Kyrie quite comfortably in the front side. Time journey has oh, been Keyboy. Keyboy. Keyboy looking for the flank onto it. Zeno gets it. Sans though secures the kill. Barca, Feather and Strike does not get anyone just yet. Sans very alone. Shelly Boy with the execute. Uh oh. CW needs to be careful, but gives away. What? Keyboy survives. Kyrie survives. Only Sans the twice casualty. Pi and Nino though will be taken out, so it's gonna be another defense here from sort of Alter Ego. What a flicker by CW, man. Evading from the decimation. I didn't even think that was possible, but again, usually it goes through, Arashi. When you use the decimation, it follows through even the flicker, but in that particular situation, I do believe, I think Boots or Keyboy walked up as well to try to take it. Kyrie is going in, forcing a winner truncheon. Just the play in the bot side. Mid-side base turret will be taken out now from the side of Alter Ego. Look at the that. bottom lane as well here, it seems like, will be taken out Arashi. And with this, Onik will not pull back, will not advance more. You thought it was a weird draft, but you know what it is? It's the classic Yeb banana split from Onik PH back in the day at M3. Mm -hmm. That's it, the mobility and the pushing power for the side of Onik is what they're using as a weapon right now. And keep in mind, with the Hilda, like we mentioned, they just know where everyone is from Alter Ego. So they can just split push very comfortably, right? There's no chance of anyone getting walking into a death bush with four members in because Keyboy is spotting everyone out. You can see that even with the initial Lord take by Alter Ego, they're unable to match the structural push from Onik. And now with a 6.5 or well, 6.2k gold lead, they're just waiting on this, and if Alter Ego are not careful, they might just get, get back towards here. Such a brilliant way to tackle the Alter Ego that likes to team fight. 
Don't go for the team fights. Go for the objectives. Go for the split. Utilize the mobility to poke and pull back. And again, the signature banana split, it has worked before up against teams who really like to team fight. Thing is, it usually gets countered by a particular team who likes to clump up Blacklist International back in the day and Alter Ego, they kind of have a similar draft to that. They have a similar draft, but they don't really have the same tools right now. They have a lot of aggression and they can chase people down, but for the most part, it's only if Onyx really shows them, uh, themselves very vulnerably in the front. Because even now, if they want to try and jump onto Boots, onto Keyboy, they can just escape with the tankiness by surviving long enough and outrunning the rest of Alter Ego. And if Alter Ego commit too far, you already know that Onyx will start sending members to the back line, flanking around, and make it a very difficult fight to back for the side of Alter Ego. And that's the clump of fights we've seen really favor Onyx. Let's see here, right? It's, uh, it's tone that, well, the pacing here has gone down very slow. 5,000 gold lead here in hand for instead of Onyx, so there's no rush to it, right? Magic Sentry now pulled. That's information perhaps that the top side of the Magic Sentry will not be in play for Alter Ego. Onyx now, will they commit to the Lord here is the question. It's a very good question, Gani, because it's a question that Onyx has the answer to. They will always say no because of the waves constantly pushing in, because of their superior mobility. It kind of forces Alter Ego to always concede the Lord. And again, they're never going to look for a pure team fight unless they have a man advantage. And currently, they do. See here, right? Valentina Sans has opted for a uh, steal on towards that time journey here. That might be big during a 5v5. But Maya is still on the top side of the map, trying to deal with the wave pressure. Even Nino forced to move around to the mid lane. He's actually going to leave it. He's going to push right almost towards the base. So you can see the pressure mounting up for Onik, and they just can't keep doing this. They're just waiting around, waiting for Alter Ego to make a mistake and overextend. And before you know it, the Roamer is going to take out your back line. So unless Alter Ego go for a more defensive approach to try and deal with the initial burst damage, they won't be able to win a fight anyways, because Udil and Nino are never allowed to be present in those fights. At this point, it's better if they go for a bit more tankiness, a bit more survivability, but being able to actually stand their ground in the midst of a huge team fight. The CW is definitely going to have a field day here, hitting everyone up, getting a lot of damage, and sustaining up. Once again, that slow build-up has begun. And once again, it's Kyrie into the mid lane and rotating up to the bar lane. That's been set up perfectly by Alter Ego. And right now, what Alter Ego are doing is pretty similar, right? They're trying to bait Kyrie up top, and then they will try to burst the Lord. Thing is, though, look at how Kyrie is playing it. He understands that that top side is already slow pushing back to Alter Ego. He doesn't need to be there. He is just out of vision, forcing Alter Ego to fight. Usto taking a lot of damage now. Oh my god, time journey bops from. He, both parties, up as a blade, that was huge. Nino no. gets taken down. Pyre, good night, and Boots will be traded back though. Now, Kyrie jumps in onto it, Sally getting the kill, but Odil finds Keyboy. It's an all out messy, messy fight, but only Rossi left standing, and this is it. Wow. The yellow porcupine strikes first. Just like that, man. They go for the big fight, and in the jungle, when everything is so clumped up, you see the quote-unquote wombo combo come in from Onyx, despite the fact that they do not have a huge team fight initiation. They do so by corralling Alter Ego into a singular point, and then they go for the decisive destructive strike, this denying, just wiping out the whole roster of Alter Ego, getting a really unexpected victory in game number one. Even Goni, the token Onyx fan on the English desk, thought that Alter Ego has this. But yeah. the mobility, man, the draft is so, so clean from Onyx. And as like literally what we said, the later the game goes, it is going to favor Onyx with the superior mobility. The way that they can play, utilize this draft with the macro, the wave clear, and even in the fight itself. How Alter Ego can win is ev if everyone clumps up. They have literally built a draft where they will not clump up. Hilda, Ling, Valentina, these three members will always be trying to flank, be trying to attack from different angles. And in the end, the muddles from the Melissa had no impact in the fight. Attacking for different angles, destroying a front to back, and splitting the map up. Classic Yeb, classic Onik.
And this is a scary one now, man. Onik, you asked the question, Rashi. How are they going to face off against an alter ego who wants to team fight? This is it. Exactly. Just don't give them the team fight that they want. Man, all this time in the current season, in the current meta, we've seen that it's all about crowd control. It's all about winning the big team fights and then using the neutral objectives to bait your opponents in for that decisive end. But for Onik, they have just shown that it doesn't have to be like that. There are alternative ways to play the game once you understand the forces at play. You once know what? Again. You're right, uh, Mirko. Uh, very good uh, re reminiscent of moment there. It seems like it's a banana split vibe that we're getting, right? Onik, PH, Kyrie, Yeb, they know the fundamentals in executing this type of gameplay. And it seems like this time around with that Ling last pick, they implemented that. They go back to their uh, very, very strong strategy as well. And Alter Ego, it seems like it overwhelmed them. I think a big problem for Alter Ego, okay, we have a great team fight, right? But they were expecting, they were expecting dives, aggression from Onik. So if you look at their roster, there's not a single real big engage tool, right? The Roamer is a diggy who can't really jump in and engage. And usually, if the Roamer can't do so, it, only, it falls on the shoulders of the EXP lane. It's an Arlet. Yes, yep. he's mobile. Yes, he can engage, but not very dynamically, not from far away, especially when you don't have intel, when you don't have knowledge on where your opponents are. So Alter Ego, they're stuck grouping together, but not able to find a fight. And all the while, you just see Keyboy just running circles around them getting that information and then fighting when it's right, when all three go just are not prepared or are in a very difficult situation. So I think the draft could be amended for, for the side of Alter Ego for sure, but in general, what is that, Gani? Well, Arashi, I'm gonna have to cut you off. I have a good drawing here. It's a banana, banana split. split. Banana right. split. I, have no, I haven't made the ice cream, but this was supposed to be the banana, but that was the strategy of game one. And ladies and gentlemen, we're all going to see the item build, so Arashi, please take it away again. I mean, before that, though, I'm going to have to cut you off as well, Arashi. <laughs> There's a little adjustment that Alter Ego can definitely make, because, sure, the Arlet is good in team fights. They doubled down on that fact, but in terms of mobility, he has mobility in the team fight itself. Outside of the team fight, he is very immobile, very slow. Clear waves in the far lane, you can't get back into the turtle fight or the Lord fight, right? So. A proper adjustment necessary here is to secure a mobile XP later. That was how Blacklist did it back in the day mm -hmm. against the banana, banana Split, so with that, they can simultaneously look for a team fight, force a team fight, but also take care of the waves in the far lane. Exactly. I feel there's solutions available right here. Better engage, better macro wave control as well. And for the side of Onik, though, it's a bit of the opposite, right? They just did everything correctly according to the game plan. And initially, of course, it looked a bit a bit sketchy, right? They're allowing Sally Boy, of all people, to start snowballing, start getting these kills, but they understand that in the grand scheme of things, Sally Boy won't even reach the back line anyways, so it's all good. I think for Alter Ego, they really need to start forcing Onik into tough situations. If they go for drafts that work well when Onik does one single thing, you can't expect Onik to just walk into that trap, right? Onik is just so more, much more adaptable, so much more flexible, and they're not going to give you what you want. That's the main problem here. Alter Ego, they need to try and force Onik and do their own game plan, right? And actually, I don't know, just brute force it. They need tools available to do so. So right now, this makes it very difficult because Rossi plays a very reactive heroes. That burden will have to fall on someone else on the team. It could be the jungler, it could be the XP leader, but it has to fall onto someone. Look at this though, Kyrie, gold per minute, 904, even Whoa. beating out both of the gold laners <laughs> who've been placed with a whole lot of resources. It's a Kyrie thing to do, is what I say. Udil on the Barca as usual, even in their losses in the regular season, he almost seems to be able to find a way into one of the, you know, categories here in the post-game recap. Onyx, 17-17. Kills, if you take a look at it, you think it's close, but really in the game, it really was not. And you can take a look at it, damage to tower, and even the Turtle Lord rates. They control every single objective after the first few Turtles. Exactly, initially it just seems quite even, right? It's back and forth, steals were happening as well, but afterwards, it's all Onik. And the reason why Udil, by the way, is all the way up there in damage, Melissa has a lot of damage potential, but 
Did you see how many people were jumping onto Melissa, onto, onto a Nino? Seven. He was using everyone to try and save him as well, exactly. They, he was using the, the, uh, the go away and all the other ultimates paired together and yet they're unable to save him. So, shows again the limitations of an immobile goal you know, with a, without a lot of outplay potential. Something that they need to try and keep in mind. If you look at the gold chart right here, the gold curve, initially it's all for Alter Ego, but once Onyx starts playing that macro game, you saw that Kyrie was all over the place. Keyboy, as long as Boots, everyone is just farming constantly while still maintaining pressure all, all across the Land of Dawn. And the reason why Kyrie is just so high up there in terms of gold is because that mobility was being used to clear the waves whenever the neutral objectives were in the picture. Oh. So it's just a solid game plan, man. I think none of us really expected it or at least saw what they were planning at first glance. I mean, it's a rare thing to see Onik um, not winning the early game here, especially in the second leg throughout the playoffs. So uh, yeah, give credit towards the Alter Ego, right? I mean, they're able to... Uh, find that loophole and somehow control being to able to dictate going up against Onik. That's a very, very um, rare thing to see nowadays. The thing is right now, if you give Alter Ego all their comfort, it picks and Alter Ego can't win against Onik. Now Onik, I really think they're not going to let that happen again. Your MVP presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy S23 Series 5G. It's the Valentina. Gila Sans is the quote we <laughs> really like to hear here in, in, in Indonesia. It means Sans is crazy. And here's the heat map to show how crazy he is. He doesn't care about the other lanes. He's like, exactly. I'm a mid laner. I will stay in mid. Exactly. I'm called a mid laner for a reason. And keep in mind, he was shut down and taken out by Udil in the early game. But overall, he just knows what he has to do. Start, stay away that mid lane push, that mid lane pressure. And afterwards, smooth sailing, man. Let's take a look at some of these highlights where this was the beginning of the end right here. Pi getting caught out, and everyone, look at that. Look at the movement, look at how fast Kyrie just speeding down the jungle to try and make sure that the members get caught off. Nino being on a Melissa just cannot get out of the way fast enough from the whole train of Onik steamrolling the members of Alter Ego once they see that there's a lead. And the issue is, even if they try and maintain a proper front to back, Keyboy is always in the, in the back lines trying to push them in one direction. Here again, just catching them off guard, slowing them down long enough for Boots, for CW, for Kyrie to jump in. And if everyone's clumping together, like you said, Goni, so all seven members jumping onto one area, they still have CW with the Bandit's Rage to play around with. And that's a lot of damage, man. Look at this. Boom. Everyone decimated completely, even though Sally Boy is the one with the decimation. Of course, the Air Strike final ball here takes out multiple members, but it, in the grand scheme of things, with the wave pushing towards Alter Ego, with the gold leader still available to destroy the structures, Onik just take that decisive victory. It looks messy, but honestly, like we mentioned, Onik never looks shaken. They never look panicked. I mean, I swear to God, right? So I mean, good. well, I swear to right? God. If Onik wins another clean Grandma. sweep. I think we had this discussion up top, and I said if it was, if I, I said it was possible, I really said it was possible because hey, yeah. it's Onik. If it's any other team, I'd say no. Yeah. The playoffs, it's really, really hard to go and sweep your opponents. But if it's Onik, honestly, I feel like they are miles ahead and giving all the comfort picks, giving all the prio picks, the strong picks over to Alter Ego, and still outplaying them shows you the level that they are on. And you guys can elevate your level as well Ooh. so that you can be you know, a little bit more similar to Onik with UBS Gold because, hey, free hero skins with every item, okay? So when you get your UBS Gold XMLBB Mia Necklace, Eudora Bracelet, and Bundles UBS Gold Bar, you can also go ahead and claim a skin right there. Turn it around, Ghani. Show them, the show them the code that they can scan, actually. Here, you can scan here. So check it out, right? UBS Gold. Please, Mirko, say it. I'm, I'm, I'm just a model. Available at ubeslifestyle.com. Ube, oh, you're not the model anymore. Ubes Lifestyle e-commerce. Rashi, since you don't have one, here you go. Thanks, man. I'm not mythic yet, so this is a... There you go. And finally, mythic, guys. If you guys want to be mythic, you can try and capitalize on this promo as well. And man, it's just value, honestly, right? Rather than spend on frivolous activities, might as well invest in the future, and UBS Gold is the right way to do it, man. As a wise man once said, value, dude. And also, ladies and gentlemen, 
since you've already, you know, invested in a pretty value trade. You know, there's something else that you might want to invest in. Daily dose of caffeine. Daily dose daily of caffeine. Daily dose? Yeah. You know, Ghani, I want some daily I want a daily dose of caffeine. I want my daily dose of caffeine, but sometimes I just can't find the right shop. I Here. can't find the right cafe. What the heck? You it's finished your empty, coffee. All right. Within a blink, it's empty. It's point coffee though. It's a cup. Yummy. Point coffee. <laughs> Check the, it out. The it's cup is yummy. The cup is yummy indeed, man. Cup, yeah. We already have our own shares as well, Specialty man. Specialty coffee with the concept of made to order. Well, so yeah, guys, gotta check it out. Serves fresh quality coffee using 100%. There you go, the model now. Baristas with an international standard coffee machine. Special in season 11, right? There's an exclusive collab. Promo point coffee X MPL season 11. Just enter the promo code. Minum point coffee. In the Indomaret Point Coup application, you can get a 40% discount coupon for palm sugar latte, cookies and cream, and pandan coffee. For more information, check out Point Coffee ID on Instagram, all right? Yo, Mirko, that's not a competition, Yo, man. Mirko, Yo, Mirko! What where? is this straw, bro? Are you We're drinking? Yeah, yeah, are you drinking? Someone gave me the, the straw for the hot <laughs> coffee, the little one. <laughs> but it's fine, you know? You gotta make do with what you get. And that's what Onyx did in game number one. They were like, you know what? Here's the draft. Yep said, here's the draft, kids. And they were like, sir, how do we use it? We Figure don't play this out. style. No, you do. <laughs> in the drafts, yeah, in the scrims. Because they definitely practiced that. It felt really weird, but... Then I realized halfway or even towards the end that this is, I've seen this somewhere. The mm -hmm. way they play, where have I seen it? Mm -hmm. Maybe I've seen it in the booths outside because you guys can definitely find whoa. the coffee outside. Find it right here. And oh, whoa, whoa. We got a glimpse of a of the Indonesian desk just a bit there. A lot of activity, man. An awesome But fun. yeah, if you want to check it out, man, not just coffee, the tea is good as well if you can't really deal with too much caffeine. The lychee tea, I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly recommend. At Point Coffee ID on Instagram. Check it out for more information, ladies and gentlemen. And Alter Ego right now with more information that they were able to find in game number one. Will they be able to make the proper adjustments? Will they go for a mobile XP laner? Because so far in Alter Ego matches, they haven't been going for mobile XP laners, except for the Yu Zong. Right? Hmm. And that's why the Yu Zong was banned out. You really understand it. The brilliance within the draft now that the game is over. That is also the one of the reason that perhaps they grab right the opportunity grab Arasi Zero in that first phase. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, go and grab your car or bike over to the MPL Whoa! Arena. See this booth right here is the That's grab a cool booth. booth. Look at that. Missy MLBB. That's a cool booth. Which means the MLBB mission. The discount is up to 95% and you can see here you can enjoy support your favorite teams by ordering grab and coming to the venue. Rashi grabbed here. Ghani grabbed here. I grabbed here. Dude, Everybody in this room. <laughs> I don't know about Grab that. Here. Yeah, we, we can't really guarantee that, but honestly, I can guarantee man, the ones on the desk did. <laughs> it's but. 2023. You really gonna pay for parking? Like, really? Come on, dude. <laughs> Get Grab. Don't deal with the that. The heck? I don't even know what parking don't, means. Don't. What the heck? <laughs> Don't pay for parking kids. <laughs> no. That's not what we meant. <laughs> That's not what he meant, Donnie. Hang on. We meant... do not condone this message. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, what we condone is a phenomenal performance by Onik right now that can continue in game number two. Onik with the victory. Alter Ego with the defeat. This is your game recap. Wow, total gold is still favoring Kyrie. And of course, with him split pushing, look at his gold compared to everyone else. He is almost twice the gold of Whoa. everyone else on his roster. And for the side of Alter Ego, Boy is the notable player, but he does quote unquote fall off on the Marktis. So they were really just unable to capitalize on how strong he was. In a way, I feel like they're playing it a bit too standard, trying to go around the map and match the movement speed of Onik. Instead, if they just focus down uh, one lane, right, and forced Onik to come to them instead, that is a viable option. But uh, by the time they notice what Onik is doing, I think it's a bit too late, right? There's just too much damage, and they're gonna lose too many important structures in exchange for a decisive fight. So I think with that in mind, though, with the possibility of another banana split making an appearance for Onik's side, Alter Ego can have adjustments and can have pre-countermeasures in the early stage of the game. My question now is, what is Coach Coach planning? Coach Coach. Coach Coach Yeb and Coach Adi. Coach Waiting Coach in the back. Fun fact, 
Adi has a chance to go to a grand final right after moving. Mm. And right after he left the team he was on, that team gets knocked out before getting to the grand final. So, hey, maybe he wasn't a chill out for real. Yeah, I mean, you can't be really argue with his performance right here with the results. Onik has been, you should mention Mirko, the most consistent, the most dominant they've ever been. And it all began technically with the uh, appearance of Coach Adi, or Adin, as we like to meme his name. But let's go into the drafting phase, and Onik now is going to take the first pick right here. So already a bit of a difference. All right, there you go. Welcome to the drafting phase, ladies and gentlemen, of game number two. Onik with the first Need pick now stitches? on the blue side. Yeah. With, again, the bands here that they will show respect. Faramis, Diggy, and Melissa. Whoa. What we mentioned earlier, man, it can happen in game one, where they try to read Alter Ego out, but if they win against these comfort heroes, it's not only a massive you know, hit towards Alter Ego's morale, but it's also signals that Onik, now it's the time to go all out. They're looking for that clean sweep now. They are looking for that clean sweep. It's somehow there, right? After this match, it's match point. And still, it seems like now, Onik, they respond with another Rossi ban. With that Diggy ban. I am the power <laughs> of the It's going to be the Kaja ban out here. Rashi, what did you do, my guy? I feel like, I don't know, the, the energy from the stage just blasted towards us in the English desk. That was surprising, but here's a comment from CW. When I first played Mobile Legends, at the time in the MDL, Rossi was actually my tank. We played together, and in this playoffs, we meet again as opponents. Back then, we were like friends. Now we are opponents, and we have to fight it out. They can only be one. Man. You gotta say it right, by the way, Arashi. It's not CW. It's Chewe. Chewe. Chewe with the 1-1 pick, too. Again, Oof. Calvin Winata. Calvin Winata. <laughs> yes, that's what I call him. Because that's his name. That's why it's CW. Anyways, <laughs> Alter Ego now. With the 1-1 one -one pick for Onik. Yep. What does Alter Ego want to go for? The Claude and the Melissa both have been banned out here. Usually, yes. against the 1-1. One -one. It has, we have seen him go for a bit of tricks, right? You know, but honestly, picking up a Farsa, I think, is still the number one priority here. Another good response towards a 1-1 one -one pick. Oh, wait, no Farsa. Valentina instead hit the bit tricks. So I was right at least about the bit tricks, but Valentina, why no Farsa here? A bit too vulnerable, my guess is. Bit too vulnerable, dealing with a very mobile goat leaner as well. Maybe it's not exactly as prior. They want to try and have a bit of extra CC as well on the Valentina. And depending on the situation, a good stolen ultimate from the composition of Onik. We've yet to see just yet. It could be very massive. Hey, now with the two picks for, for Onik, sure. they are the ones taking the Valen sorry, the Var the Farsa and the Fredrin. So securing solid jungler potentially. Good crowd control, so the early game is going to be very dangerous, very roam heavy, more in line with the Onik we've seen so far in Season 11. Solid first phase for Onik right now. Very different to the first phase that we saw in game number one. Alter Ego, let's see if they go for the same formula again. Gold lane, mage, and Romer. Right, that is the question because in the first game, it was actually exploited, right? The Yud Zong ban comes through. Swing. But it's still Your gonna team. be... Whoa. No! It's a Fanny pick. Whoa, I did not expect that one, baby. They came out of nowhere with a Farsa and a 1-1 one -one in the picture. Very easy targets, but with two more picks available for Onyx to try and shut down this Fanny, including the Romer pick that is usually relied to do so. It's just a bit risky, but Sally Boy is known as a miracle boy for a reason. Can he make a miracle happen for his team now? We'll see, you know, today has been a day full of miracles with Evos winning mm. without getting a single turret in the first 18 minutes. Yeah. What the heck? Kufra banned out though. Hilda should follow through next to respect Onik with their Fanny shutdown maneuvers. But Onik can definitely just flex the Fredrin into the jungle, giving Kyrie such a good time, but up enemy. against a hero from no sword. Right? If you're good at it, you understand how to counter it as well, is the understanding that we un that we know. Onik, though, have taken away the Minsathar, so setting up to really set Chewe for success. Making sure that he can be as mobile as he wants, 
making sure that the Fredrin can also engage freely in the midst of a big team fight. We have to see for Alter Ego, will it be yet another roamer? It's gonna be the Masha, ensuring that the macro play will not be abused yet again, but the Hilda is still available, keep in mind. Onyx can use it if they want to. Alter Ego can try and pick it away technically if they feel like Onyx will be using an Assassin. And even if Onyx picks up a fighter, the Hilda presence, as we can see from game number one, is still definitely a big nuisance for your game plan. Again, with the Masha pick, it does leave the, leave the Hilda up for yep. grabs here, and Onyx can really just push the tempo with a Hilda, Fredrin, and Forza. That combo can be very disgusting uh, for any might not be able to get a purple buff after the first one. Fovius man comes through as well, knowing that Pi loves the Fovius. Also a very good response, or a very good uh, ban from Zerva on it. But the thing about Hilda, right? The one thing that I really don't like the Hilda is it's just no crowd control, right? It's yep. very slight. And Alter Ego, they are somehow letting that Hilda go because they can respond with the glue. They pick up a glue, asking a question in the keyboard, are you really going to pick the Hilda going up against the glue. So perhaps Onik now, with this in mind, they're only one. There is only one hero that is good against the Fanny, against the Beatrix, and that is the Cho. Hmm. The Cho, I mean, if they really want to, the Franco can be True. used here as well. The issue is right here for Alter Ego. It's a bit of a split. It's no longer a one-dimensional teamfight composition. So yes, they have more strong suits, but keep in mind oh, that teamfighting also path. isn't as good. And Onik answer back with their own hey. teamfight threats. It's gonna be the Arlet, and my man has called it. It's the Cho. It's Keyboy on his signature Cho. There you go, some lockdown. Single target on the Fanny, and also technically the Arlet is also a pretty good counter. counter for the Vanny, understanding that now the dashes can be cancelled with the final slash, you can take him out. And it's also a good matchup for Boots against this glue. Now it's the final pick for Alter Ego. That should be the Roamer, unless they flex the glue oh. into Rome and then try to set up Pi for success with a winning matchup into that Arlet. Something that definitely could be picked up. But will they? Is like the a question. Song? I mean, we've seen the Yutong being used yes. as a counter for the one one, right? The yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Too much. Called it too, Gunny. We're on a we're on a roll today, boy. We called the Joe. We called the flex and the Yutong. And that's yeah. it. That's it. Arashi, both comes. full circle. Full circle. Oh, this is gonna be a good one to watch, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa! Some whoa, of the Onik fans whoa, in the whoa, building whoa, right whoa. now with the Alter Ego fans. <laughs> they're fighting it out, but they're fighting it out peacefully. Interesting contrast there, Mirko. Duality of man. But for Alter Ego, they have answers. Now it comes down to the execution. Just because you have the tools does not mean that you are going to be allowed to use them properly. And if you're against Onik, that's the last thing you can expect. My, oh my, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game two. It's still Onik here with the lead of the series, 1-0. Oh. They're leading. But this time, Alter Ego, will they be able to equalize to make it one on one? Let's see the conclusion. Land of Dawn, here we go! A four game two between Alter Ego and Onik. Will it be one one? Because there's a one one in the gold lane right now for Onik. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's foreshadowing. Maybe. Yeah, even though know, weird things happen in MPL ID every single time. But looking at the jungle though, it's a bit of a contrast. Assassin against a fighter. But against a Fredrin, you have to be careful on the Fanny, man. You get caught, that's game over. A lot of burst damage is available. The Cho can knock you up. Boots can set up for a kill as well. And with a Feather Airstrike coming in swiftly, that could be the end of a very mobile Fanny. As Rossi just goes toe-to-toe -to -toe against Keyboy, man. This one is a bit tough, right, for Rossi because it in the early stage, you would expect him to be able to maybe put some pressure down onto the Cho, but because of that mid lane control, they're able to roam freely, and the Farsa with the superior range is able to just get so much more done early on. Also, better mobility, right? So that's what Onik are utilizing already early game. And even in the gold lane, CW then can utilize that winning matchup to pressure Beatrix early on. Ooh, Keyboy, he's just being so impudent, knowing that he has a lot of mobility. Mr. Three Key. dashes, technically, but now look at the mid lane, though. That's Kyrie picking up a kill. 
Oh, Sally Boy wants more. It's gonna be one for one with the trade. Rossi here. He's a little bit stuck now. Taking a lot of damage, forced to use the flicker. Oh. Keyboy finds the Jet Kundo. One oh. more. Rossi using his Ooh. skill will be able to escape for now. There you go, man. Already a little bit of skirmishes here and there, but Onyx still leans on the fundamentals. They're able to get these leads just slowly but surely because they are able to clear the waves, having proper setup before they actually take these skirmishes. That's the reason they were able to keep the gold advantage from Alter Ego from snowballing in game number one. Now back again onto the turtle. Contest should favor Onyx with oh. More pressure in the mid lane, and also knowing that Fanny needs to go for the purple buff, but Udil has responded, and they have more pressure instead. Keyboy, though. Oh my goodness, the deny, oh. the rotation Ooh. for Udil now. Oh. oh, we have Dragon connecting onto a silly boy, not full of damage, though, oh but my final God. slash finds the kill. Double, perhaps, here by very low. Boots claims the double. Man, Keyboy has been popping off on this show, Rasido. Wow, well, Keyboy! Roots, and <laughs> Keyboy just takes the aggro of that turret, saving its life. But top side, Teleboy finds a kill on towards Sans there. Alter Ego finds a response. Kyrie finding the neutral objective. Now it's a 3v1 action. Rossi, no oh spells. Everything is given on towards this guy. Sleep tight. Keyboy takes the turret aggro right before Rossi brings Boots in. So, so good, Arashi. He's just so aware of the circumstances surrounding the game. And now Udil gets jumped on, gets hit with the feather airstrike. Kyrie is looking for it, will not be able to land. But for Onik, it's such a solid performance here. Yes, they lost Sans in the top side, but overall, picking up kills, picking up the neutral objectives, they are doing amazing right now, and they are still in full control. My God, Keyboy, man. On the show, you think it's going to be the mechanical display, which you do get, but he adds so much more. There's a cherry on top, there's dessert. It's a full-on buffet when Keyboy picks up the show. And man, oh. I think this time, right, game number one, we gave Alter Ego a little bit of the benefit of the doubt with their prio picks, with their comfort picks. But after game two's draft, with the respect given, it's very hard. Onik have gotten all the control, and it's reflected here. Definitely. The side lanes are not doing so well with the intervention coming in from the rest of the team. So for Alter Ego, now they are the ones struggling to find a really winning situation. Sally Boy is definitely still on track to try and snowball, try and get some gold, but he does not have the safety of knowing the information and Rossi gets jumped on. We have Dragon, we'll connect onto Rossi. He gets taken down. Oh, oh, oh. Some oh, 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 oh. cable, but he escapes with the cables as well. Onik boots there, a little bit late to the party, but it's another trade for Onik. It's a very messy performance because both teams are just trying to flex their outplays right here. And I even forgot that in the previous fight, by the way, it seems like Boots made a bit of a misplay too, jumping onto the gold creep and then flickering over the wall to try and salvage the play. But all things considered, it's still very close and Udil survives. Hi now will be the recipient of that way of dragon, will be taken down by Boots. Another trade favoring the side of Onik. 5v4 in this neutral objective. I say Alter Ego, just go back and fight a trade in the bot side. And there you go. Neutral objective here will be secured by Kyrie. That was a very speedy engagement. Oh, a very speedy maneuver for Sally Boy and the Fanny just going to the other side, knowing that there's some free time right there. Trying to abuse the mobility. It's not nearly as good as the whole roster of Onik in game number one, but it's definitely efficiency at, it, at its best. Sally Boy showing again his experience in the game, but Onik already looking for these structures right here. Trying to get more map control, more maneuverability, and trying to suffocate the income of Alter Ego. It's gonna be uh, Boots. Taking out three, final slash connecting on towards two, but with the mount and Nino. Nino will claim the shutdown now. Keyboy moving on towards Nino. No problem, it seems like. Oh, oh flicker no, no way. Dragon. No way. Keyboy! No way. Oh my goodness. Will he find he got the solo it. kill? He got, got it. Him. He got it. And no Keyboy way. solo kills Nino bot lane. One of the best gold laners in Indo, and Keyboy just solo killed him on a roaming toe. And Sans again, now putting some pressure. What the heck are Onik on? 
It's Orashi. unreal. It's unreal, man. Alter Ego, they were able to get a trade technically, but what was that? How is that even possible? This is oh MPL ID playoffs, and yet this man is making the impossible dude. happen. I yes, hurt dude. myself. <laughs> passing that play, wow! <laughs> Man, I was just jumping. You guys can support the Indonesian national team's uh, team in SEA Games 2023. And hey, Keyboy is in there. He better be playing here with his performance on my goodness. in MPL. Man, what the heck? I am, so oh my goodness gracious. Onik are not just dominating, they are styling. And look at Kyrie. Oh my goodness, Ooh. now looking on towards Selly Boy. Rossi is isolated, forcing to use that split split now as a defense. But Onik, they know better. They will not commit on towards Rossi this time. Exactly. Why commit when the turtle is spawning and you can get it uncontested? This is what they've always been doing. But look oh, at this trade of feather airstrikes. Oh, oh, oh. two feather oh. airstrikes. The flicker as well. But CW will claim the 200 gold extra there. My goodness, I thought we were going to see a. 1v1, but in the front side, say goodbye to Boots as he soaks in a lot of damage and he wasn't able to move there. One for one, but Onik finds the last turtle. Hey, no fair, no fair, man. Come on, that was a proper 1v1 of both past and present mid laners for Onik, Udil, and my boy Sans. But CW just came in, he was like, no, yeah. this ain't gonna be a 1v1. He didn't respect bro. the 1v1. It's fine, though. It got them the lead, so it's fine for Onik. But, Keyboy, Keyboy, Keyboy. Whoa! Flicker Way of Dragon, bye-bye, Pie. And now it's gonna be Rossi, though. Taken down by the crossbow of Tang. Sally Boy finds Santi at the backside. Good cable management, but it's still a 2v1. 2 for one oh, rather. Oh, Nino, Nino, revenge. Oh, Woo. doesn't get it, man. Unfortunate for Nino, but Keyboy chose that recall position. So maybe he knows, maybe he knows. Here though, let's take a look at the itemization. Arashi, Onik, and Alter Ego. So far, only 2,000 gold lead, but anything significant in the item builds? Nothing too crazy, but for the side of Onik here, Kyrie already with the blade armor, trying to mitigate some of the damage coming in from Nino as much as possible. Rossi going for the Antique Kuras because of all the abilities available from the side of Onik and knowing that he won't be the main target that needs to be bursted down. So far, oh, that makes oh. sense. And for Nino, only the BOD and the Fury Hammer means that he has burst damage for the squishy targets, but unless he can land it on the right targets, as you can see, it's very easily manageable by the front line of Onik. Here, Black a Dragon format to open things up. Keyboy will take a lot of damage, will escape the wow! Alter Ego with a lot of resource now spent will not be able to continue the pressure that they want. It's just not enough damage. And Onik right now, they're just taking it very, very slow, going for the turrets when possible. But if Alter Ego bring in the firepower, tries to deter them from doing so, they fall back, they keep farming, and they know that they can wait and make that insane plays, use the battle spells when the next neutral objective is up, and that is right now. Alter Ego definitely have a way back into the game, right? You can see Sellyboy Boy have, has built up a significant gold lead over Kyrie as well, and this killing pressure will be there. Rossi, though, God, pinned down. Way of Dragon not committed just yet. Kyrie oh. picks up the CW, finds oh the crossbow attack, finds the double, and CW this time He's not messing around. A three men taken down, puts out of Alter Ego, and this creates more than enough space to take the inner and as well as commit to the Lord. They made that play happen without boots in the picture even. It doesn't even matter, man. The Lord does spawns, you lose three members. What can you do? Not a single objective contest can be even be attempted from Alter Ego. And if this, this is how things are gonna go, it doesn't even matter if Sally Boy gets a gold lead, gets an EXP lead. There's no 50-50. It's getting further away from Alter Ego's grasp. The game here, Onik are controlling it 100% of the way so far. 10 minutes in, Alter Ego have been forced into Onik's playstyle, into Onik's tempo, into the pickoffs as well. They try to look for some pickoffs back. But CW and Onik have already built up some defensive items properly. I believe CW went for the steel leg plates. Don't quite remember it actually at this point. We'll take a look when the items pop up yet again. But I think he has, considering the fact that it's a Beatrix, it's a Yu Song, and it's a Fanny. There has to be defensive, pre uh, defensive countermeasures. I saw CW build some. Not quite, I can't remember quite what exactly it is. But now with the Lord coming in, like I said, they're playing it slow. If Alter Ego are willing to give up 
the tower, the turrets, then they just keep taking it. If they go for a fight, if Onyx sees an opportunity, they fight it. If not, it doesn't matter. It's all back down to the next neutral objective. Flicker, Wave Dragon is in play. Let's see, Feather Attract to zone the members. Sans now taking a lot of heat. Wings by Wings will be used. Rossi now using the Split Split as a cover as well. No base turrets taken down here from the side of Alter Ego. I say Alter Ego defended well. Proper value though, honestly, for the first Lord, you expect usually just the tier twos, but now with the conceal played in, he might be looking for something, Keyboy. Oh, yeah. he doesn't, he just baits in a few of the resources. If the airstrike comes down as well, but yes, there is a steel leg plate and even a win of nature. So, so much respect being given from CW to Selly Boy, though he's behind. Oh, oh way of Dragon wow, the catch. Man! Wow. Unstoppable collection. Wow. Crossbow and Sang with the cherry on top, claiming the triple as well. My goodness. Onik, they are unstoppable now. Onik. Nino here, be careful, he gets... Oh, it's oh, a Maniac! Wait, wait, wait. Is this gonna be the first Savage? No, not the first oh, the Savage. Playoffs. Oh, playoffs. Let's see, we have Dragon now. Black and Dragon form, rather. Will be popped. The base quite exposed here. Pi, solo. Oh my god, the damage is low. Oh. We have Dragon to push him away and see oh, no. the unofficial Savage. But there you go, the yellow porcupines sitting at match points. Without a Lord, without the Lord. They got the value of the Lord and they said, you know what, let's keep on going. Let's keep on fighting. Selly Boy gets caught by a perfectly timed way of the Dragon. And CW says, hey, I need my comfort heroes. You give me my comfort heroes, I can carry the game. No problemo whatsoever. That was the CW that I knew. We saw 1-1 one, one earlier in match number one, and some people were saying, that doesn't look that efficient, that doesn't look that effective. In the hands of CW, it absolutely is, man. What a monster, again and again, is getting doubles, triple kills with a single crossbow of Tang. Yes, he's ahead, but man, you don't expect that kind of damage, that kind of performance. Alter Ego, man, they tried their best, but Onik just says no. Stonewalls them. It, it feels, it <laughs> really <laughs> feels. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, I said this during my prediction as well, but it feels like everyone are fighting for second place. And Onyx <laughs> is just, are just sitting on top saying, hey man, you know, keep on going. 3-0 against Evos, possibly a 3-0 against Alter Ego. Alter Ego that beat RQ through one. Alter Ego that smashed Big Turn Alpha out of the playoffs in day one. This is a feared Alter Ego. It's not just any Alter Ego. It's not, oh my god, Onyx made them look like amateurs. That's how good they were here in this game. Giving their comfort heroes, doesn't matter. Banning those comfort heroes away. All 10, or, or I don't know how many, but every Whoa. single talent just went for Onik. And we understand why. Yeah, for good reason, man. It's just an insane performance. And this is what you come to expect. You're not even that surprised anymore. You just know that that is the way it rolls when you go up against Onyx, right? Perfect execution, everything happening at the right time as well. Perfect timing, man. You just, it does not get any better than that. Top tier, peak Mobile Legends. Peak Mobile Legends it is, man. That performance, particularly Keyboy, on that show. Insane. Ooh, MVP, um, I feel like he should just get the MVP, right? Just give it MVP, to him. Right? Give, it to him. him. Oh, oh, it's, it's been a while since we saw Keyboy on a show. I bet he misses playing show as well. Finally, the draft from the side of Alter Ego uh, supplements him to pick up the show. And my God, did he deliver? Perhaps here, I have something. I have no uh, picture, but I have a message. All right, for here, Keyboy, right? Keyboy Yowie's performances, uh, very, very. There you go, Ghani, right. with a spicy message or a spicy question. Well, a question, it was, a, well, do you not miss Keyboy here, right? Yaoi, hey, Yaoi, do you not miss Keyboy? Did you not see his performance earlier? Man, I would love to see you go 1v1 against Keyboy, but that's just, that's just about the message that I want to give seeing game two. Hopefully, hopefully they do meet up <laughs> in MSC, Ooh. right? Because right now Onik are on track to just get that MSC slot. 3-0ing both their 
competitors in the playoffs. And obviously, I'd love to see a Cho 1v1 from Yaoi and Keyboy. Obviously, maybe we can set that up in the future. But hey, maybe even an all star match. Just a fun little match of Yaoi and Keyboy going at it. At Why not? Why that not? would be amazing. I mean, for real. But hey, we can't forget M4. Can't forget, man. <laughs> Cho, Yaoi, and oh. CW got kicked. True, that's. <laughs> Unfortunately, someone has to get kicked and Cho is on the field, man. Let's take a look at the items right here, though, for Ultra Ego. It's just not enough damage. That's the whole point. They have Sully Boy on the Fanny, but very limited targets. He was always able to find Sans, but even there, in the end game, Sans has the Winter Truncheon, so his targeting is severely limited. And everyone, as we can see, has the crowd control, so Fanny is no longer that really annoying, that really glitchy, buggy hero They can just dodge away from crowd control using the cables. He gets stopped dead in his tracks by the by Cho, by the Fredrin, by the Arlet. So Onik once again has a composition, right, that has everything. They have DPS, they have burst damage, they have defensive crowd control, but unlike Alter Ego, they have the engage tool in Keyboy, able to find those pickoffs, able to go and make those crazy plays, and even then, if, when push comes to shove, everyone else can still step in. Boots can still was still able to try and get those pickoffs. So Onik, usually it's jack of all trades, master of none. Onik is just jack of all trades and still mastering every single thing. So it, it really <laughs> like isn't it. fair at all, man. He's the king of all trades. What is like going it. on? Like the brains behind Onik is on steroids. It's, it's just not. It's not not legal. It's coach, coach. It's coach, coach. It's right. Coach, it's, coach. it's just double. And here, man, you can see Che Wei on a signature 1-1, one, one, GPM 935, Sans. Gila, crazy. As far as <laughs> 54,000 damage dealt. And you know why? I think I know why Keyboy was so good and why CW was so good. It was Sans playing all five. You're oh, right. You I, sh I should have you know wrote, what? yeah. yeah. I should have wrote, hey, yeah, I do with Sans. Give the MVP to Sans, man. We play the Cho while simultaneously tapping on the screen. Solo killing Nino. Solo killing Nino. Getting the crossbow of tanks as well. Uh -huh. Sans, dude. Getting the retributions, even the final slashes. That's why Boots died a couple of times because Sans was AFK. occupied. Yeah. He's occupied on the key on Keyboy's phone. Man, the memes are absolutely amazing. But Sans <laughs> is also amazing, honestly, though. All seriousness, I think Keyboy deserves the MVP. Yep. Even though CW was popping off, you know, maniac, yep. but you know, the setup was. The boy. No doubt. Hey, usually it seems like when you're trying to pick the MVP, you're like, okay, it's either this guy or this guy. It's a hard question. For Onyx Games, it's like, you know what? If you give it to anyone on this team, you can make a case for it. You can make an argument for it. Because let's say in this game, of course, Boots wasn't the main highlighted player. But look at the moments where he actually made the play. The final slashes were on point. Jumping in in the early game, quite, keep in mind, he was a great facilitator and ensuring that the fight before the turtle went all the way on the side, uh, for the side of Onik. It's just so good. And like we said, anyone you pick can probably make a case for being an MVP. And that is something that Onik has been doing. And that's why Brands is on top. But if you keep, if you think about it, Onik's MVPs are just distributed so equally. And the MVP for this game, Samsung Galaxy A34, A54, 5G, it's gonna be Key Boy! Could have gone, he's such a selfless player too. He's, he could have gone the full perfect KDA, 1-0-15. Nope. He's like, no, CW, do you want your unofficial savage? Get I the will savage. Flicker into the base. I'm an MMA fighter. He's a I hero. I can kick people. I use the way the dragon. It's like, that's me playing charades with, um, <laughs> you know, Joe. I interesting. Oh but look at the heat map here for Key Boy though all across the map, but for the most part, very directed. And even there, you can see that a lot of his emphasis, a lot of his uh, time was spent in the EXP lane to ensure that the, 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 the that lane was just winning so hard and they can use that pressure to go for the mutual objectives. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here, where Selly Boy was able to get a lot of leads, but this is that play. Initially, Boots made mistakes. We did see it, unfortunately, but in the grand scheme of things, it still went so all the way in favor of Onik. And look at the crowd control available. Even if you're playing a glue, it has a lot of survivability, a lot of mobility tools. It doesn't matter when you can't move, when you're not allowed to make plays happen. And this is that solo kill, man. CW. I'm not CW, sorry. Nino just wasn't ready for that Way of the Dragon play. And afterwards, that burst damage is so good. 
and when everything needs to happen so fast, when you have your when your opponent has a gold laner, they can outplay, they can be invulnerable for a while. That's just way too much time where oh he is God. immune. Look at that! Look at that kick. Sent Fanny all the way down, and then boom! Oh my God! This hero was nerfed, by the way. Just a fun fact for all y'all. Just a fun fact. The zero was nerfed. This hero <sighs> has been left open by everyone, but. Now what do you do if you're alter ego? Your comfort heroes all let go. You still lose. Now respected, and you try to let go some of the heroes that, you know, are Pryo, like the one one. You think, no longer Pryo. We beat this before. <laughs> BTR, BTR smash them on the one one. CW says, no, bro. That was Sakin. That's not me. That was Skyler. That's not me. I am CW. I am Cheway. <laughs> I am Calvin Winata. Calvin Winata, indeed. Well, again, it's just a good performance. I don't know what to say anymore about Onik, right? I mean, it's just game after game. Uh, so sad now seeing G that after G. G after G that one lose against RRQ. If not, it's still stainless. It could have gone could have perfect. Unattainted, right? Could have gone really undefeated, but unfortunately we have to suffer a loss. Well, not we. Onik has to suffer a loss. But now it's going to be just... Yeah, they're looking and shaping up to another clean sweep here. Well, yeah. really deny it right now, man. They're on oh the God. way to clean sweeping. Alter Ego. The Alter Ego that has been surprising. The Alter Ego that have reached a new level. Yeah, the new level isn't even near to oh, Onyx level. Yeah. That is insane, man. This puts it to scale, right? The whole perspective. They were able to beat RRQ, the team that a lot of people were talking about, like, oh, gonna be number two as always. Alter Ego nope. beat them in quite decisive fashion, right? It's not a yeah. full five games, and yet against Onyx, they are just powerless. It's not even that eventually they lose. It's the fact that all the way from the beginning, it seems like Onyx has a plan and nothing can change it. Alter Ego with a different draft, with a different execution, nothing changes the whole plan for Onyx. It's just smooth sailing for them every single time. So I think if you're in Alter Ego's shoes with all the hopes of the people behind you, it's got to be a very disheartening moment, man. But let's hope they can shape up and still maintain a good mental state, mental headspace for game number three. Hopefully, hopefully, man. Game three here. I mean, the series is not over until it's really over, right? To win now. Absolutely. EVOS Legends did that in game, and day one rather, right? Down 0-2, perhaps, perhaps. It's a miracle day. EVOS Legends, they were able to defend four lords, five lords almost against RRQ and got the comeback. But ladies and gentlemen, on that note, it's been an awesome day. To top it off, here is an awesome app, Dunia Games. Dunia Games. If you guys want to get, you know, value, dude, go ahead and check it out. You can buy items and vouchers for MLBB, for games, buy diamonds, and also get a three gigabytes bonus of quota every single purchase so you can go if you want to get a thousand diamonds buy 500 and 500 and you get six gigabytes of free quota Woo! you can use to Woo! game to watch mpl indonesia or to do anything even chill with max stream do your games and obviously choose the best provider guys telecom cell in indonesia i think it's better than that right rashi yeah best coverage the gone are the days where you gone. go to someone's your friend's house and you're like My name. man i have no coverage here because honestly for, for real, Telcom Cell has the best coverage. Telcom Cell and Keyboy. Well, true. is Keyboy Telcom fine. Cell? Is Keyboy a provider? Call him. <laughs> I don't know. Keyboy Telcom. He provided for Onik. That's Keyboy what he did Telecom. in game number two. Yeah, I'm trying. You know, I don't think it'll work. <laughs> Tele Keyboy. Maybe. Tele, Tele Keyboy. <laughs> there you go. Scan the QR code, ladies and gentlemen. To Tele go Keyboy. And check out the app, or you can just type it in your phone, your Samsung phone, or obviously DuniaGames.com. ID because right now we're gonna go into a call Whoa. right now. So let's throw it over to our host. Whoa. Hello. Hi, I'm way four. How are you? No room. Yep, I'm fine, doing well. Wow, and you're not a coach, not a player. Yes, now I'm a coach. Uh, how do you see uh, the 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 team Onik Esports in Inu Onik in Indonesia? It's super strong, especially in this match, coach. Uh, yes, I think Onik Indo is actually a very strong team in the MPL Indo now. I uh, feel like they are one tier above the other Indonesia teams. Yes, yeah, yeah. 
Jadi Onik ya. saat ini menjadi sangat uh, kuat ya. Bakal malahan ada di atas tim-tim lain di Indonesia. But LOA4, uh, how do you see the... Uh, if you compare between MPL Indonesia and MPL Singapore, how is it? Uh, I think MPL Singapore like to team fights a lot. We really like to fights and fights and fights. But uh, in MPL Indo, they have better gameplay, better macro. Yeah. Ada perbedaan yang cukup yes. signifikan ya. Kalau di Singapura katanya lebih suka team fight, team fight dan team fight. Kalau di Indonesia mikro makronya jadi bilang lebih baik untuk dari hal permainannya. Yes, wow, ini keren sekali, menarik sekali. But Elway, for you're a former player and right now you're a coach. Is there any difference from being a player? Uh, definitely. And coach? Yeah, definitely there's a lot of difference. Uh, I think the biggest challenges I'm facing now is the drafting. Because as coach, you have to think a lot about the draft. Yeah. Oh, jadi katanya ternyata memang sulit ya berbeda ketika menjadi player dan jadi coach. Ketika jadi coach ternyata ini uh, pentingnya draftingnya. Jadi itu challenge-nya ketika menjadi coach ya. Yeah, and uh, are you expecting the left team in MPL is this three team or you have any any other prediction for the team especially you you watch the first match because RRQ and Devos Legends they beat each yeah. other and RRQ is eliminated uh, I definitely watched that series I was expecting RRQ to be in the top 3 but I think Evos uh, took it by surprise and Evos is actually a surprise entering the top 3 yeah wow jadi katanya memang Di ekspektasinya sebenarnya tadi Bude ya, RRQ bakalan menang. Tapi ternyata Evos yang menang dan saat ini udah di posisi ketiga ya. Ya, uh, yeah. and uh, in Indonesia, can you see the the biggest, um, maybe the most a point for Indonesian team? What is so good about Indonesian team? Maybe the gameplay or something else that you can point out in Indonesia? Uh, yeah. I think Indonesia players themselves have very good individual skills. Uh, they play assassins really well. Like in Singapore, I think our assassin players are not as good as Indonesia players. So mechanics very good in Indonesia. Mechanicsnya wow. berbeda ya. Yeah. Jadi ini mekanik Indonesia memang berbeda dan bisa dibilang sangat-sangat bagus juga dari sekarang LY4 yang menjadi coach. Yes. And one more last question LY4. What about the C games? How do you see the C games? Uh, if you compare it between the teams in Indonesia and in Singapore? Uh, definitely, I would say that Indonesia has a better lineup now. But I think uh, with hard work, Singapore will definitely have a chance to win Indonesia. Oh, jadi katanya memang Indonesia kuat, tapi bisa ada juga chance untuk Singapore bisa juga mengalahkan Indonesia ya, Bude? Yep. But who will represent in, in, from Indonesia? What do you think? Uh, I think maybe mostly from Onik and uh, Evos. Yeah. Oh, yes. Onik and Evos. Prediksi Onyx. dari LY4. <laughs> yes, that's really great. And LY4, lastly, maybe you could just say something for uh, to our fan, to your fans in Indonesia and maybe for the teams that's going to play the games today. Uh, so hi to all my fans in Indonesia. Thanks for always been watching me for the past uh, four to five years of ML. And to all the Indonesia teams out there, good luck to all you guys. We will be watching from Singapore. Oh, jadi katanya so, uh, semangat untuk semua tim dan juga dan tentunya dari LY4 juga tetap mendukung dan melihat-lihat dari Singapore. Betul, dari player sekarang coach, once again thank you so much for joining us here. Good luck for your journey as a coach now LY4. Thank you very Thank you. much, Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Iya, Bude seru sekali ya kita mendapatkan perspektif nih dari... Ladies and gentlemen, wow, what an interview with a Singaporean legend of the MLBBC in LY4. Not LY3, LY4. Not LY2, LY4. Four. Speaking of numbers, 2-0. 4-3, zero. 2-0 two, zero right now for Onik. No esports, just Onik. Against Yo. Alter Ego with esports. With LY4, could we possibly see four games? It's a stretch right now. Look at the games. 3-0 <laughs> is the... You gotta keep the dream alive, Mirko. Come on. I want to. I really do. But then reality smacks you in the head, the Ow. face, drops you down, and stomps on your head as you're unconscious. That's what reality does to you, ladies Hits and gentlemen. Hits you in the face like a double battle shotgun. There you go. <laughs>
You know, Rashi, I've been making a lot of the samurai references, but Gani and Eterna and Chefin, they just looked at me weird. <laughs> if you know, if you, you, know, know. you know, you know, right? And right now, we and I don't know. Tell, know, tell us if you actually do. Tell it in the comments, tell it in our social medias if you actually get the references, because for some people, it must be really confusing. <laughs> very, very. I can imagine Gani just like. Uh, unconscious. I know a lot of things, but not that one. You, you know, know that Onik are good, and right now they are really, really, really good. 2 0. Alter ego, can they still come back here in the series? And if they can still come back, how do they do it? That's my main question, right? They've tried a full team fight, the team fights get avoided. They've tried an all rounded composition. They get outperformed, right? Out macro and out micro as well. When it comes to the mechanical plays, there was no shortage of that in game number two. So for Alter Ego, now I'm really confused. Maybe they just have to go back to their roots because it's really not working out. Well, maybe we're going to ask the Onyx fan next. But <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's time to ask the Onyx wow. fan next. Gani, how just do Alter Ego do it? If they can do it. Here's the thing, right? I've been asking the same question to myself. <laughs> really? I Alter Ego, how can they do this? It's by um, Force Major, I feel like. Force Major? Okay, if got it. Onik, no, no. If Onik, let's say, concede all three games, then I feel like that's the only... <laughs> so Looking at their comp... I mean, I'm not is saying this, this because I'm an Onik... This is a realistic situation for you, Gondia. <laughs> this is an Onik fans <laughs> no, no. in the world thinking, you know what? <laughs> oh. Onik's the best team in the universe. There's just no way. Oh. Gondi, chill. <laughs> Come they got to win. Earth. They got to win M5 or something before you know you can do that. <laughs> but for now, Alter Ego. Man, you're right. It it does seem very tough, right? Because yeah. even with the comfort heroes, no. With the heroes banned out even further. So now I don't think Onik will take that risk. They are no longer in a position where they want to you know experiment, play around. Nope, nope. I think yep. they'd much rather just go home, especially Kyrie, because yeah, he got the girlfriend buff. His girlfriend came mm. all the way from the Philippines to Indonesia. That's huge. And even said in Indonesian, I love you. Oh, that's so sweet, guys. Have you checked out the clip or have you seen it live, right? Very sweet. Mahal kita. No. It's a, it's a great moment. No. Don't say mahal kita. I have claimed Kyrie. He is now Indonesian. <laughs> so he can speak Indonesian, you see? You see? That's part of the plan, guys. Here, welcome to game number three, though. Onik. First phase pick. New Come side on, with Coach Coach, yeah. It's our show time. Coach Coach, we're going for the Diggy Ban again. And you do see that all three go, they are struggling when they can't really team fight and they can't really have Rossi with the decisive team fight equalizer or team fight disabler shutting down any kind of engagement. But the Faramis banned away as well. All three go, they're going for more standard bans, but I think this time they won't really let go of that 1-1. One -one. That, was, that was painful. That was really painful here, right? So already, Need Alter Ego stitches? needs to uh, adjust. And Onik, if it ain't broke, still adjust. Still fix it, right? In a sense, they ban out the Melissa, which they left open in nope. that second game. Oh, they didn't. Oh, okay. So, so if it ain't same broke, band. don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Still. Same exact bans. If it goes the exact same way, we're going to see a Minsitar and a Fovius. Unless for Alter Ego, like we said, <laughs> It's a big gamble, they're going to leave it open, they do not. So now that they've banned away the 1-1, one -one, the Kaja is what is being left open, but Onik might not want to pick that up as a first pick. Hmm. Onik, with this in mind, what will they go for here? If they want to go a safer approach, they can pick up the Kaja. Hey, it's going to be the Farsa yeah. though here for Sans. Ars has an opinion. RRQ always become Alter Ego's big obstacle. If we can be RRQ, we can become the champions. Well, normally, <laughs> normally that's the case. Hang but on, this is not aging that well. You know, normally that's the case, but this isn't season six anymore, right? So, yeah, Onik, maybe, I don't know, Onik, oh my god, this team is, I don't understand, man. The Forest of First Pick now, Alter Ego can definitely go for something like a Kaja. Oh, choose my own they will not. I they will go for the Valentina and the Arlet. Oh, the Arlet, huh? Mm. Interesting. We know that it's a great, it's a great tool to use in the ESP lane. Both teams, no Pi and Boots, have been able to utilize it really well. It provides catch, but now, so far, it seems like Onik is outranging Alter Ego, so they have to make sure that they don't you fall should. into the same trap of game number one. They need some kind of engage or some kind of catch. It won't come from Rossi. 
And now with Pi on the Arlot, it might not come from him as well. Especially with a thick front line with crowd control like Fredrin in the hands of Kyrie potentially. They have to try and find something that can work here. I see just two heroes here for the marksman left open, right? The carry and the Brody. Sure, they can they can play the Moskov, but not a lot of success here. Teams using that Moskov. So if Alter Ego do pick up a marksman here in this last pick, on it can just eliminate more marksmen and ask a question to Nino, what are you going to play? So I feel like Alter Ego could play. No, they go in and huh, pick up the Atlas here. So they're gambling here. Even here though, it's not like an up, it's, it's a pretty good pick, but you can obviously just see that the Farsa will go for the Purify, right? That's something that she should go yep. for, but for the Beatrix, it is the Flicker, and for the Fredrin, sure. I think for the Fredrin, it's okay if he gets caught in the Fatal Links, right? So Alter Ego, they're banking again on a composition <laughs> for full team fights. Oh, there you go, the in the into world. The show. This time, they don't have a Farsa, but still, it's just such a good pick on the hands of Keyboy. <laughs> I've been waiting for too long. Uh oh, Nino's getting banned out, though. Yep. Exactly, exactly. No, no gold lane, like Gani mentioned, means that Onyx can start narrowing down Alter Ego's options and even maybe force them into a marksman that won't really do well in a big team fight. Not a lot of DPS with the right kind of coverage. And keep in mind, that's already narrowed down by the fact that if you pick someone too immobile, that's still a potential Renner's Apathy and the Feather Airstrike just completely chunking you out. So with the 1-1 one, one Claude, Melissa and Carey no longer available. Moskov does come to mind, but that's way too situational. But if they think that Onik will be going for an assassin, maybe it just might work. You know what's crazy here? I have a, I have a hunch. <laughs> Ooh, what is that? Your team. <laughs> Alter Ego might pick a uh, fighter for Nino in the gold lane. What fighter though? Yu Zong. Yu Zong against the Beatrix can certainly work the Moscow ban here. Again, that's one of the heroes that can actually. Wow, they they they're too. kind of forcing the Brody pick here. That does very well. I would say Beatrix winning matchup plus the range on far side. That's a Brody lane for disaster. Set up for disaster, not just for failure. With the Atlas, it does make sense, but there's no real man. What do you go for? Oh, it's the only hero left. The arts of a miracle. Up. They get baited into it. They kind of get forced into it. There's no other hero to go for. Yeah. Well, keep in mind, Nino is still a very adept Brody player. We've seen that, uh, I still recall that scene where he was going 1v4 essentially. He's walking in the front doing damage. We can maybe expect the same thing, but so far, they're having the same problem. Their only reliable engage is Rossi on the Atlas. Is Everyone else game? needs to wait for that. So Onik, if they want to go for something with mobility, there won't be a lot of catch available from Alter Ego at all. Hayabusa game. Hayabusa. It's not banned. Not banned. Ling Hayabusa banned in game number one. Game number two. What do you think about the health care? Oh, it's going to be Lancelot. Okay, it's going to be Lancelot. And a hero for T-Boy. It's going to be the Kufra. A classic Kufra versus Atlas here in the head-to-head -head of Rome. Look at that, man. Long range, poke damage, crowd control, engage, and also disengage. Onik has everything. How do they keep getting this, man? Like, teams, it's not like teams are giving this away for no reason. They're trying to shut down a lot of things for Onik, but they just find com combinations that work. Coach Coach and Adin just really have no weak spots here. For Look. Alter Ego, they gotta find potentially like some what jungler works here. Assassins, maybe for the back line. Akai. There's perhaps. some sense there. Oh, Helker. Helker wow. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, can I rebuild Lancelot Assassin here? Yeah, yeah. I was I thinking about, about that a little bit. I think looking at the composition yeah. for Alter Ego, it's very, very viable. Definitely. Not building tanks a lot. Obviously, very possible here. Let's see if he goes for the killing spree. Indeed. There's a lot of members he can slay with the did you see the clip of him getting like a savage with a um, lance in ranked, but back and forth the puncture, and then the phantom execution he gets savage. I think that's the one of the one of the only times I've seen Kyrie surprised at his own skill. But ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Both drafts set in stone. Rashi, predictions. Do you think it's going to be a tank slot or a damage slot? I think they're gonna go for a tank slot just because 
it might not be as scary or as snowball-y, but it shuts down the chances of Alter Ego coming back even more. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, match point for Onik. They can end the series right here, sending Alter Ego down below to battle it out with Evos. And it is a tank slot, no Lancelot, the proper one here still. But I believe he is going to go for the more offensive route if he gets ahead. My Sully Boy is on the Hellcurt though, so the silence might be useful, might create some opportunities. It is an unfamiliar hero for the last few weeks, so we'll see what Sully Boy can do with it. But it's a very all-in, very risky hero. But with a, an Atlas and a Valentina in the mid lane, maybe they can catch Sons off guard, even though that is one of the hardest things to do in the Land of Dawn. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while that we have, we are about to see the same set of um, spells for each side, right? Oh, Keyboy now jumps in. Let's see here. Uh, what I do meant by this is CW and Nino, both Marksman, Flicker, both Roamer, Flicker, both mid laner, Purify, and bo both EXP Flicker. So the head to head in the spell department is pretty much the same. Well, exactly. you, you wouldn't believe this, man. It's also retributions for both junglers. Wow. Wow, really? Oh, man, this is why you're the analyst. <laughs> I did not see that one. Can you honestly? Can you tell us how many diamonds you can get with the promos there as well, Rashi? I can't to, seem to read it. To Only analysts can. Thousand nine hundred thirty-six, but Sans. Yeah, Dark Knight falls here. Whoa. Take a look. Oh, first blood still falls. Who claims it? Silly boy, low HP is able to escape that one. A good initiation there from the side of AEE. A E E? Uh, Alter Ego Esports. Nice. All right, man. Alter Ego, though, they're using that early game aggression really, really well. Burning the Purify and then going for repeat gank. Capitalizing on the fact that Sans won't stay quietly in his lane. This is in his DNA, right? He wants to be aggressive. He wants to go all in. But now Pi is trying to you know, disrupt Kyrie in the turtle take. Oh, Kyrie, perfect, but fiddling will connect all towards this oh. game, and Keyboy finds the cover! No, Kyrie, you still fall here. Now they want to find the trade. Boots picks up a kill on towards Rossi. It's still Kyrie for Rossi, though, but remember, the neutral objective has been secured by the side of Onik. I would still say it's value here for Alter Ego. It True. does give Sunnyboy a bit more room to farm up to get to that power spike on the Demon Slayer Hellcurt, right? So, this is the, you know, pick that. Whoa, Bren likes to go for Nino. I think that's not what he meant to do there, wanting to get in range for the turn of our memory, but luckily he did not go for it because Keyboy was there for a party. Speaking of parties, ladies and gentlemen, the Mabar Pesta, which means the play together party, is here. Yeah. Surabaya, Pakuan Mall. Go ahead and check it out. 13 to the 16th of April, 2023. That's the year we're on. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, indeed, Ghani. And in this lane, though, Russ. Rossi is trying to oh God. make some happen, but the mid lane is where the action is at. Udo is fortunately able to survive, but look at Onik trying to strike back right here. The mid game is definitely going to be interesting because for both teams, technically the mid game has a lot of potential. Yep, now people soaking a lot of damage. Will force the use of oh. Rossi whips the fatal links. Oh, 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 oh Sally Boy getting out played there. Key Boy for the trade. But he, a boy, there with the Tyrant's Rage, forcing Selly Boy to his teammates. Now, this is an advantage for the side of honor. Selly Boy just got caught off guard. Trying to go aggressively onto the roam of all people against Onyx that's just so dangerous. You, never, you know that Key Boy won't make the kind of amateur mistake. And in this game, the fact that he's on the Kufa is so dangerous because he is known for counter engaging and there's a lot of opportunities here as Kyrie just completely styles on Pi, man. That timing too, he didn't see Pi in the bush yet. He popped the Thorn Rose and he caught out the first kill. The timing is, is unreal. And look, timing. At him, look at him, look at him, look at him. No oh. way. <laughs> Kyrie is in the building, ladies and gentlemen, the Retri God. <laughs> My God, this speaks volume right now. Sally Boy now can definitely contest this turtle, realizing that he has yet burned his flicker. But CW turtle. gets it. CW will get that turtle buff. Alter Ego Esports, man, is in disarray. Even look at that. They know that they have pressure. There's, there won't be a connect. So they, uh, there won't be a contest. So they send Kyrie off to his buff and secure the turtle without that retribution. So. Again, it's just a great show of efficiency. It's not always them just doing crazy things. It's also them doing things smartly, the intelligent way. And now they're just waiting for an opportunity and already 
Big Boy Sans himself making a cheeky play right here. Oh, it might just work though. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shot not connecting. Nino able to dodge. Sans! <laughs> Nino forced to use the flicker now. Key Boy though caught here. 3v1. Fiddling connecting. Damage though does not connect. As Tyrus Rage on towards Rossi now. Forced to use the flicker. Kyrie! And Key Boy finding the kill. Feather air strike from Udil will not create anything. It's a 1 for 0 oh, for the yellow porcupine. They got the engage in that particular situation as well. Burnt the feathered airstrike. Udil now Whoa. pinned down. This one, this one is looking very bleak already. Very early on, five minutes in, and they are absolutely shutting Silly Boy down. Kairi has three levels on him. Okay, now silence connected on towards Boots. Pine. Trying to cover, trying to also poke Kairi and Boots. Both teams here disengaging, both teams does not want business. At this point, Alter Ego, they just are not doing enough damage. The longer the game goes into the mid-game, everyone from Onik, Kyrie, oh, Boots, and Keyboy, they're just a bit too tanky to be picked off, and that's the problem. If you can't go for a pick-off, you have to contend with a full all-in engagement. And for Alter Ego Esports, a team without a lot of DPS, the prolonged engagement is definitely not in their favor. So they require some items to ensure that the members, the members of Onyx can't just walk around without risk like this. But the touch prediction, like we saw, like we mentioned earlier, it's, it's looking so one-sided. See now. Affects the game. Again. Game three. 3,000 goal lead here, Mirko, all right? Uh, three, three kills on the board. Three, three. Indeed, a lot of threes here in minute number six. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> Kila Sans! <laughs> the way he recalls, man. The way he recalls. No one can do it. No one can recall that way. Look at Keyboy though now, three on one, stunning two members. Clicker the no way, no apart memory does not take him down. And now Kyrie jumps in. Alter ego here, a little bit sadder. But take a look at Sally Boy, the backside here, doing business with boots. Oh my god! Whoa! Flicker appraisals well to secure the kill. Boots! Deadly! That was deadly business, man. I don't think you want to do business with Boots anymore after that one. We just <laughs> smack him in the face. <laughs> he slams down the Appraiser's Wrath. That's the end of it. He's just way too tanky right now. And Fredrian, he just does so much damage. But speaking of damage, that's a Bennett. And with Keyboy, just spinning around. That in itself zones Alter Ego away. Oh my god. Keyboy. 1v3, getting chain CC'd, no problem. Gets, oh my god, what? How? He missed the retreat. Oh. The game just blocked him. Oh, silly boy again now getting engaged. He's too good. But this is uh, another stomp here. Onik, another clean sweep, question mark? It's possible and it's looking like it's building in that direction. Alter Ego so far have not found a working solution. They can't go for the pickoffs because they don't have enough damage. They can't go for a full team fight. Best they can do is maybe split push, but even then, the mobility is so limited, and Kyrie going to 1v3! This That's is a tanks a lot. Tanks a lot, though. Nino! Gets taken down, and Kyrie does not matter! Kyrie now moving again on towards Rossi. Rossi has no flicker. Italy will connect here on towards Boots. Take a look at the damage, take a look at Kyrie! God. Killing spree oh by my now God. the next casualty! No way. On it! They're dismantling Alter Ego Esports here, and it's not even minute 10. Gilasan, look at him! Look at him! Again, recalling <laughs> during the Wings by Wings. Oh my god, Kyrie. This is a tank slot we're talking about, Arashi. Yet he plays it like an assassin, and he finds a similar, no, the same level of success on it while assassinating. Sally Boy, the assassin. About to get assassinated by Keyboy, Keyboy. The Battle of Boys. See Keyboy oh! with the outplay. My goodness. Sally Boy now caught. Have to go with the blinker, but CW is there. My goodness. Rossi looks for an engage here with Pi, Udil, and Nino. Four men rotating. Kyrie picks up the Lord and take a look at Keyboy. Oh, he canceled out though, but he still catches three. Oh, and it's going to be God. a mega for Boots. Boots still wants more. He gets the double. So and Rossi will be deleted. Kyrie moving on towards the outlet here, but it seems like it's just Pi standing alone for Alter Ego. Look at this, he's just doing it again! <laughs> oh my god. You can't keep getting Asans. away with this! He just flew over top lane to recall. <laughs> what? Sans, man. Oh my god. Look at him. Stop, stop, Sans, stop! 
Stop, okay? Stop. You're in an MPL game, not a ranked game, okay? You're in playoffs, man. You You're can't in the do upper this. bracket finals. Man, that's <laughs> unreal. With the Lord marching down, what can they do? They're getting pulled down, they're getting chunked out. The Lord is untouched, and Onyx go for it, but Rossi tries to make a play. Woods, though, a little overzealous, gets taken down. Baser and Hex and will be taken out here. Kyrie will do business and poke the turret bottom side. It's gonna be a one for nothing here. Boots the only casualty, but it's not really that significant, it seems like. It's a shutdown. He was five and zero, and he, he kind of willingly gave that kill up, no problem. And even then, look at the gold difference. He is he's 2k gold above Pi, man. That is that is so one-sided. And Kyrie, it's no different. He is what is this? Like 4k. He is 4k gold ahead of Sally Boy. Sally Boy is not present in the game right now. His gold income is being matched almost by Rossi and Udil and Nino and Pi. Everyone has so much more gold than him when he's supposed to be the main farmer. The, the man with a lot of income and the man being jumped on by everyone! <laughs> Son just wanted to KS there. <laughs> Keep going. Oh, oh cancel there. But it seems like now Rossi will not connect the feelings just yet. Code of Art Murray does literally nothing. At this stage, 11 minutes in, Onyx still in full control. Full control. Oh. It's almost understatement, man. The Lord advantage gave them quite a bit right here, but at this point, it almost feels like it doesn't matter. The gold advantage is one this thing, guy. but the execution is so solid, despite the fact that this man has not stopped. He's starting his own nightclub right here with all these flashing lights. Someone counts the amount of recalls he has spent. He has Take a oh, Keyboy's joining him. Oh no, Keyboy, no, stop, stop, no. Let it just be Sans, man. And he's also flashing the Alter Ego emote, man. Oh my god, Sans. Oh my god. Whoa. One feather airstrike, one pop, and he goes back to recalling his real business. What a nuke. And even with all the fun and jokes, Onyx still are waiting, are doing their sick just Onyx thing. Just waiting for a proper winnable team fight, waiting for the next neutral objective, not wanting to mess around too much and get, I don't know, tables turn on them in front of the base. Looking at the items right here, it's so painful. I mean, Sally Boy only has the Malefic Roar. Usually the Hellcurt is a bit more powerful here with the Sea Hallward, but that is not even in its inventory just yet. Everyone else building penetration as much as possible, and even Nino with the Hepatis still won't be able to do business. He won't be able to reach the backline squishy members that he needs to reach to make full use of that Bleeder Hepatis. Here it is once again. Both teams slowing down the tempo. Alter Ego still trying to find a way back into the game, but if we take a look at the player's gold, like Ube as gold, Nino, their gold laner, is 200 gold ahead of Sant. The man who's just been recalling the entire game. Arashi, Keyboy even is closer there. The Roamer has more gold than Udil, Celiboy, Pai. That is, that is just not what you want to have happening in your games. And now Celiboy is waiting for an opportunity, but the man who shows up is Kyrie. Oh. So, whoa, hang on. He's still going for it. Oh, Celiboy now oh, limits up. Dark Knight Calls will be able to juke that one. But it's still now four members trying to end the game, perhaps. But no, they will take care of the top side a turret first. Now, will they look for the engage? Rossi with the conceal play will not commit onto a fight. Commit lays now onto its keyboard. Keyboard in the top position. But he will survive in the back side, though. Only low HP. Very, very close to taking him down. It's still on it here, taking just the base turret top side. Bot side turret still stands. All things considered, Onyx is still respecting the potential for Alter Ego to go for that big, decisive team fight. It's many shows, but unfortunately Onyx will still be able to take a base turret. Now Alter Ego, they might just go for this. Let's see, Boots soaking a lot of damage, quite low as well. Kupra also here, not at full HP. Onyx will relief off pressure now. 13,000 gold difference. Look at the items right here. Sans has the Winter Truncheon just in case things get a bit dicey. Just in case the Twin of Memory from Nino is there to steal his fate. On the other hand, Kyrie actually having the War Axe and the Rose Gold Meteor going more and more into a bit of a hybrid situation. The Thunder Belt he has though will allow him to be so much more sticky to the backline targets in Nino and Udil. 
That is something that they have to try and keep in mind in the midst of all these fights. Look at CW, he has a Haas Claws, but he might go for the same Rose Gold Meteor. Seems like that is what he's passing towards. So even when they're recalling, when they're showing dominance like this, they're still keeping in mind smart itemization and execution. Oh my god. Sally Boy almost gets taken out by the long range combo, but they shared that damage. <laughs> Look at that, both forced to recall. Again, right, if Nino didn't tank that, that would have been a Sally Boy gone instantly with just a Renner and one strike of that Feather Air Strike. The 13,000 gold lead here really shows not even Keyboy can be bursted down as he just stands there menacingly. Yeah, Dark Knight falls Oh though. my god! What a read what? by Keyboy! What? That was inhuman! And now looking at the front side and back side here. Oh, the top oh. connecting on towards War Rudil. Quite low. Who still wants more? Oh, the Winner's Truncheon trying to swipe time. He will really? fall as well. And this is it! The team that will secure the grand final spot. The team that will go to Cambodia. MSC 2023. Whoa. It's gonna be the yellow porcupine CW. And as well as Kyrie now duetting. But it's gonna be Kyrie focusing on the base. And it's official. Another clean sweep. As we congratulate Onik. Congratulations, Onik. Grand final secured, MSC secured. Alter Ego will meet EVOS in the lower brackets. 3-0 in the first round for them. 3-0, another one undefeated in playoffs. See you in MSC. Onik, first team to secure it. Was there ever any doubt after their regular season performance 13 and 1. The magical run continues for Onik. They can go invincible in the playoffs. Undefeated. Undisputed. Season 10 defending champions about to go back to back. That's just crazy, man. They have just completely destroyed the hopes of Alter Ego of getting any semblance of success. It's not even that they lost three games. They got destroyed all three games. They were unable to find anything of value and they are just real forced by brute force to swallow a very painful defeat. It's back to the drawing board. Fortunately for them, they have time to improve. But at this point, everyone has their eyes on Onik, man. This team is just unreal. At every single moment, at every step of the game, you can't help but be in awe of what you're witnessing right now. The most dominant form Onik has shown to be in. Coach Adi and Coach Coach Yeb <laughs> joining the team on stage as Alter Ego. The players join the management in the player room. Onik, what a spectacular run they've had here in Season 11. Oh my goodness. Rashi, I can't put it into words. I don't think anyone can. Well, apparently, game highlight. The King of Sky is still too strong. Onyx secures the grand final slot and MSC 2023. Four seasons in a row. That's the words. Those are the words you're looking for. Man, they got it done so easily. You can't, you're still just confused. What can people do against it? The, the, the foresight, the planning, the decision making in the split second, everything was just so, so good. And you really wonder, what the heck has this team been cooking, right? What is in Who their food? Cook? What is going on? Like, how are they this solid? Where did it all begin? <laughs> there, Keyboy was yelling, nice. Then he coughed. And then he yelled, nice, again. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, man. He should be a caster. Let's throw it over to our host for the interview. Di atas lagi masih ada Onik dan di slot MSC sudah ada Onik dan di slot Grand Final FL sudah ada Onik. Onik di mana mana. Wow dan akhirnya hari ini perfect juga 3-0. Kalau kemarin Teman-teman di Onik ngomongnya katanya ini ditunggu-tunggu nih mau melawan Alter Ego. Setelah match hari ini seperti apa? Eh uh, senang, senang. 
Seneng aja ya. Tapi Ki Boy kamu nggak mau kasih poin gitu buat Alter Ego? Boy? Eh, uh, kalau gua mana Spicy Boy? Mana Miracle Boy? This is Ki Boy. Wow! Di mana? This is Ki Boy. Serem banget dari Onik dan begitu panas. Tapi apakah sesuai ekspektasi dari Ki Boy dari match ini? Setelah mereka ingin melakukan kudeta, tapi matchnya hasilnya 3-0. Sesuai ekspektasi Ki Boy gak sih? Sesuai ekspektasi Ki Boy gak matchnya berakhirnya 3-0? Gak tahu sih, main aja. Main oh, aja. Tapi ya Bude ya, kalau dilihat dari match di selama playoff kemarin dan hari ini, perfect victory 3-0 kemarin hari ini 3-0. Rahasianya apa? Apa karena kemarin foto-foto kalian ditempel di badan Coach Yap sama Coach Adi apa gimana nih? And you as well, Coach Yap. Apa? And you, What Coach Yap, and Coach Adi. Apa? Of putting the sticker on your body. Itu rahasianya biar menang 3-0. Uh, itu biar pemain yang gak main ikut berada di stage playoff ini. Oh. Sama jiwa-jiwanya merasuki kita. Jiwanya merasuki. Tapi Adi, kalian men-secure slot MSC dengan bisa dibilang cukup lancar dan mudah. Adi, spill dikit dong. Apa sih yang membuat kalian bisa memberikan hal yang terbaik seperti ini di MPL. Padahal kita lihat posisi dua sudah tertumbangkan. Begitu bulat gantian tiga. Dan banyak sekali yang ada di atas tuh nggak bisa bertahan. Kenapa kalian bisa bertahan? Karena kita sering ketawa-tawa. Kan gue udah bilang yang gue bawa itu yang penting happy. Yang oh, penting yang happy. happy. Tapi kalau ngelihat RRQ terhenti perjalanannya tadi. Kamu ngeliatnya gimana sih Cil? Apakah sesuai dengan Adi, prediksinya Adi atau hal yang tidak disangka oleh Adi? Sedih sih karena kan kita harusnya berangkat bareng terus dari season 8 kan sampai season 10 ke turnamen internasional. Jadi sedih sih. Tapi mungkin karena gak ada gue juga kali ya. Jadi ya semangat terus aja. Tiga season biasanya bareng-bareng sama yeah. Onyx, sama Adi, sama Acil dan juga RRQ gitu ya dulu ya. Yeah. Wah, tapi coach Jadi, sekarang aku doang sendiri. Oh, sendiri. Oh, Oke. Okay. Nah, ini beralih nih ke coach Yap. Coach Yap, gimana ngelihat hasil hari ini selama playoff? Kayaknya dari regular season sampai playoff Onik oh, bagus banget. Ini jadi grand finalist. Uh, kita senang. Uh, tapi hoki aja. Hebat ya. Coach Yap udah tahu bahasa Indonesia lancar. But coach Yap, you got the ticket for MSC. Udah dapat tiketnya. And of course, negara lain, another country, will get it as well. Is there any teams yang bikin Coach Yap kepikiran untuk MSC? A strong contender for MSC for you guys. Apa negara? Negara or teams? Can you name a name? Name uh, a teams? Bagus kalau itu Eko masuk ke MSC, terus... Brand or blacklist ya. Hmm, which one the toughest? Gua pengen sekarang Eko. Oh. Eko, balas dendam kali ya. Hmm. Mau mengejar yang lalu-lalu. Tapi mengingat pula ini adalah hal yang luar biasa pula dari... Gila, Sans! Sans! Di mid lane tadi akhirnya ngelawan Udil. Lihat 3-0 mau pakai dua mic juga dong. Tangan satunya dikeluarin. Sans! Pertarunganmu dengan Udil seperti tadi sudah sesuai dengan yang Stans inginkan gak sih? Uh, no, comment, no comment sih sebenarnya soalnya aku kan emang gak main tadi cuma rekal doang. Oh, uh, dia gak main? Hebat ya. Gak main aja bisa menang ya gimana nih? Rekal-rekal aja menang nih. Ngerikolin siapa sih Stans? Ngerikolin siapa? Apa? Ngerikolin siapa? Ya emang rekal-rekal aja tadi. Gak ada siapa-siapanya, emang mau recall-recall aja. Mau recall-recall aja, nambah damage ya? Enggak sih, enggak ada. <laughs> Tapi kemarin juga kita dengerin ya, kalau kalau nanti kita bakal mendengarkan dari mic checknya kalau Sansnya udah bukan Sans Gilang, Sans Ganyang. <laughs> ganyang, ganyang, tadi Ganyang juga enggak Sans? Enggak ada sih, itu buat lawan Ivos doang Ganyang. Kenapa cuma Ivos? Ya soalnya ikutin komunikasi dia doang. Oh. Hmm. Dan tadi kita dengerin juga ya, ada yang nge-spill juga dari belakang katanya mic checknya dari Alter sampai Bang udah bang, udah bang, kalian gak udah-udahin ya? Hai, hey, ah. tolong, jangan lagi. Apa-apa? 
Tadi tuh katanya ada yang bilang, udah bang, udah bang, udah bang, udah bang, tapi kalian gak udah-udahin? Tiga uh, kosong nih bos, Alhamdulillah. Tiga <laughs> kosong nih bos. Oke, nah tapi ya kemarin kalian bertemu Evos, hari ini ketemu Alter Ego. Dan nantinya kalian di Grand Final bakalan ketemu either antara Evos atau Alter Ego. Menurut kalian, kalian mau ketemunya sama siapa? Siapa yo? Kalau dari aku Ivos. Dari yang lain? Alter Ego. Oh, berbeda-beda aku deh ya. Which one? Enggak uh, tahu. Enggak tahu. Enggak tahu. Sama ada mau cewek 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 yang belum ngomong. Mau ketemu siapa? Tergantung Kiboy sih. Tergantung Kiboy. Kiboy. Oke, okay, Kiboy. Jawabannya berbeda-beda. Ini Kiboy. Oke. Okay. Udah, tapi gini, ini kan menarik banget ya, Cil, Acil, semuanya tiga kosong bersih. Tapi sebenarnya ada nggak sih tim yang lebih challenging buat kalian antara mungkin karena kalian baru ngelawan dua, Alter Ego dan juga Evo Legend yang salah satunya bakal kalian lawan lagi di Grand Final. Mana yang lebih challenging buat Acil ataupun Coach Yap? RRQ sih. Eh Adi, Adi, ya, Adi sih. Hah, Adi, sorry, maaf ya bukan Acil lagi ya. Adi, siapa Adi? RRQ, karena kan kita kalahnya sama RRQ doang. Iya hmm. sih, tapi kan udah nggak ada. Uh, ya paling siapa ya? A E A E ya A E boleh lah. Tapi kalau bisa lebih challenging lagi game-nya. Oh, karena ya kan gitu. out game-nya udah challenging banget tuh, nantang nantang gitu kan. Tapi this is Onyx Esport, bro. Oh, this is Onyx, bro. Oh, oh, oh. Dan yang terakhir ini mungkin ada pesan-pesan untuk teman-teman untuk. Sonic atau mungkin untuk tim yang nanti bakalan ketemu kalian di Grand Final, Alter Ego atau Evos. Any message? Jangan kayak dulu nih. Drian, Drian. Drian mau ngomong karena itu ada KG. Oh! Drian, please say something, ngomong sesuatu. Ngomong ngomong apa ya? Pesan-pesan nih buat Sony atau buat Alter Ego atau Evos yang bakalan kalian ketemu Untuk nanti. tim yang akan kita lawan di Grand Final. Titik, 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 titik. Karena nah. Kalau buat Sonic, makasih yang udah dukung kita semua. Sonic! Semoga biar penonton puasanya tetap lancar. Amin. Kalau buat Evo, semangat lawan AE. Kalau buat AE, apa ya dia? Semangat Nadil. Pengen masuk MST lagi nggak? Masa gitu mainnya? Semangat Nadil, pengen masuk MST. Dulu sih masuknya bareng ya, sekarang bareng nggak? Iya. Hmm. Penasaran banget ya Bude ya, kita nanti akan lihat besok tentunya. Dan sekali lagi Sonic bisa berikan tepuk tangan untuk Onyx. Puhal semangat dan ini lagi ya. Mereka begitu baik dan Sobat Onyx juga luar biasa. Spesial untuk grand finalis kita. Empunya juga MSC Ticket. Inilah tanda untuk tim Onyx. Sans Gilang, Sans Ganyang, inilah dia Gila oh. Sans! The chair fit for a king, Gila Sans! Gila! The man who's been playing on all five phones now lifted on a throne, deservingly so for... Oh, he's got a jersey for Mirko, I believe. No. It's Sans. Oh my God! He has a second jersey. He just, he just <laughs> Sans he thinks has that. Sans. He has five phones. <laughs> he also has a second jersey. Some, yeah. what for whatever He's wearing reason? Two. He's wearing two. He's wearing two. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, that's crazy. Onik, not only have they dominated the regular season, but they have dominated everything here, even in the playoffs. So far, Grand Finals, I think it might also be a 4-0, but now, ladies and gentlemen, give it all up for Onik. First team into MSC. That's definitely their moment right now, and you see them feeling it, and, and the, the fans, they are just so overjoyed. There's one other guy grinning over here as well, so, you know, congratulations, Goni. Fair Thank play. You. As expected. For As all expected, the international viewers, okay. by the way, if you guys don't know the meme, Gila Sans means Sans is crazy, which means it's, it's a positive thing. It's like, what? Sans, Sans is crazy. crazy. Yeah, it's like, 
you're insane, kind of like that. And um, exactly, it's been memed all everywhere, yeah. and that's why there's a special show as well. I didn't even know that was happening. We were briefed about that, <laughs> but hey, always with surprises. Imagine if always. he fell off the chair. <laughs> it looked kind of unsteady when he got lifted. I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he still needs to play the grand finals. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't won just yet. And with that, Fer Mirko, <laughs> Frederick. <laughs> as well as you know what? It's safe to say that here it is. All right, here it is. All right, let me see. Fridge. Onic, Fridge. this is it. All right, this is. Can you see the picture? Is that it's Onic? Yeah. There you go, Onic, king of the skies. Right, chilling with the Chillin'. birds, with the sun as well, and with that as well, we got all five members that played here. Welcome to MSC 2023. Onik will secure the one slot of the grand finals and one <laughs> slot repping the MSC as well. Congratulations, Onik! And let's see the highlights, shall we? Arashi, take the stage. Well, early on, it's all about the execution, and it seems like with the beefier members they have in their disposal, including the tanks a lot, they just keep going for the dives, man. They can reset the aggro so often, and of course, Keyboy. Just insane foresight. This guy lives on a different dimension, man. He just sees things differently. And you can see that Alter Ego were struggling to just find a way to try and catch him off guard at all. Sully Boy also was kept down under. And look at that. He just predicted the jump from Sully Boy, completely shutting him down. And for a while here, without any minion waves at all, they just slowly but surely play around with their victims before ending the game just like that. No sweat at all, just another Sunday. Well, it's not a Sunday, but Tuesday. just another easy day for Onik. And like Mr. Mirko mentioned, you can't help but feel and start thinking like, oh, dang, how is the Grand Finals gonna go when they've been showing to be so dominant? He's <sighs> on a clean sweep, was impressive yesterday. A clean sweep against wow. AE in the upper bracket finals. What the heck? By, by the way, Gone, I have to say, like before the before the highlights, I like how that the only character you can differentiate in your drawing is just CW, because he's the only guy with glasses. <laughs> yeah, you got CW <laughs> with the glasses. Everybody just has their hair to the <laughs> left, all the right. And Sans, though, technically. Right? Show, show, show the camera. Just put gonna... a crown on Sans, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Show his highlight, bro. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know. I only have a black marker, all right? That's, I call it my magic marker. Oh, man. <laughs> man. And for Onik, it's their magic day for today because, hey, Grand Final secured. They can sit tight tomorrow. They can just watch, chill at home. But obviously, they're going to have to practice, right? Because they can't take their opponents lightly. Grand Final secured doesn't mean champions yet. But it can mean champions if they keep working hard. Because hard work is the most important <laughs> thing in the end. Hard work beats talent when talent isn't working as hard. Yep. It's an amazing quote, man. And it's a, it's credit to Onik as well for actually performing so well and still being so diligent with the practice, figuring out, trying to improve every single time because it's hard to get up and work in the morning when you're sleeping in silk sheets. Coach, Coach Yeb, <laughs> Coach Adi, <laughs> the entire roster. What's up, Ghani? No, I'm just laughing at Arashi. Rashi, yeah. the camera wants you to talk more, all right? <laughs> Hi, I'm talking. <laughs> but okay, that was uh, again a clean performance overall throughout of the series, right? Three and all, same as day two yesterday. This might be. Are we shaping up to a four and zero grand finals? Hey man, four and zero grand finals have been happening in international tournaments a whole lot, right? True. Yeah. So maybe, maybe Onik, the way they are dominating right now, they are looking to be that route in on the way, right? On route here. Keyboy's targeting with the Tyrant's Revenge. Tyrant's Revenge. <laughs> Tyrant's. Helped Onik win in game Very number cool. three. There's a little bit of a misspell there, but <laughs> it's fine because, yeah, dude, Keyboy with the read. Even with the Dark Knight Falls, Ghani, he was able oh to God. read. He saw CW still there. You know what? Helker's gonna dive to my goal laner. I know that. I see you, He's Helker. been so aware. He's been so aware. Cho, tanking the turret, tank tanking for boots, and then here, Kyrie deserves the MVP though. Presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy A34, A54, 5G. 4, 1, 5, 8, 1, 8, 56. It's a bit of a hybrid build right there. He rushes the Sky Garden helmet and then goes for the War Axe. So a good mix of, you know, 
tankiness and damage, this might be the way to go. Because honestly, he was being still a very huge threat and yet still relatively tanky compared to the other assassins in the business right now. Soon we're gonna hear some of the mic checks. And knowing Onik, it might just be standard, but I don't know, maybe you're gonna see like laughs or hype moments. Let's check it out. Mati 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 Nice, so. Bajaibu, buat buat dia. Mati. energi, guys. Dapat di battle sih. Jauh jauh boy boy. Flicker flicker dia. Solo kill. Mati mati. Solo kill boy. Pelan pelan tower. Eh, Pani dari belakang guys. Belakang kita, belakang kita guys. Mau cari dulu nggak? Ayo cari yuk. Bos pump kicknya. Ini dia ini dia. Nice boy. Itu dia. Aman-aman, kalau bisa ambil atlasnya ambil boy. Eh udah ulti udah ulti dia. Eh let's go nih. Eh mati cari boy. Ulti 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 dia. Mati dah. Kurang. Ulti bro dia. Ulti bro di. Cover boots cover boots. Gak tau lah. Gua liat boots. Gua ulti lagi boots. Sama. Gua TB lagi anjoy. Apain lu bang. Santai dulu. Eh mau gas gak nih guys. Ulti lagi cari boy. Nih nih boy. Gua angkat dia. Pas bang. Pas banget boy. Gas gas gas. Gua ambil bro di nya tuh. Gerak bro di guys. Gerak bro di guys. Gara wood. Bunuh bunuh bro di nya guys. Mati bro di nya. Aman gua aman gua. Eh cewek masih free hit guys. Iya iya. Hanya gua yang ngajar. Gua yang ngajar. Gua yang ngajar. Tor tor weh. Tor 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 tor. I have never heard Onik that hype before. There has to be something going on for them to be that hype because usually they're just stone cold. They literally don't say anything aside from info, aside from the important things. But there, they were really into it. They were yelling, they were hyped, they were having fun, they were passionate, and maybe that's the key. Maybe they haven't been enjoying, they haven't been very passionate about the game, but now you really do see it. They are enjoying their time on stage and it's a different vibe. It doesn't feel like they're working, competing. It feels like they're just doing what they love, man. And they might be enjoying it a bit too much, though, with yeah. uh, <laughs> the, the, the antics in the Land of Dawn. We'll see if that backfires for now. That will not be the case, I think, for a long time to come. The keys to success, though, for Onik is for Keyboy to get his comfortable heroes. Because every time this man has a playmaking hero, it's just an easy day for Onik. And then pressure towards Udil and Nino, that is absolutely what they were able to do. And I would dare say, it's not just towards Udo and Nino. And whenever they get any kind of advantage, that pressure really extends very quickly towards every single member on the map. Because if Udo and Nino play a bit safe to try and avoid some of the heat coming in from Onik, someone else gets punished afterwards. So there's always enough punishment to dish out around for Onik. And this is just a stellar performance, such a signature pattern of gameplay. And like you said, Mirko, with them being so passionate right now, on one hand, maybe this is the solution. Maybe they're gonna be playing even more, getting even more creative, coming up with even crazier drafts. It's all good and easy, but we'll see if maybe in future they revert back because they will require that calm presence of mind to win in the highest level because there's still a lot of questions for Onik on the international level. That is where we are really looking forward to seeing their performance, their improvements, and their dominance. And of course, for now, congratulations for making it to the MSC yet again. And for Alter Ego, good luck tomorrow, man. It's gonna be a very tough day. They're gonna be battling it out, man. I feel like it's gonna be a bloody battle. I don't think it's gonna be 3-0 like we've seen from Onik. Yep. So far, aside from the Onik games, 
it's been 3-1, 3-2, 3-2, even there in El Clasico. 30-minute games. Every single game in that series went on for so long because of the level of competition. It's like everybody are fighting right here. This is the sweet spot where everybody are fighting. And then <laughs> Onik, literally, as their motto implies, are on top. They are crazy in this point, right? And again, a very good display of mechanics throughout the game. But moreover, it's just a battle of the grand lower bracket final. It's going to be, again, Evos and Alter Ego. We can't stress this enough how much is just going to be very intense, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Please make sure to be there and watch. Be right? there or be square. <laughs> uh, I'm a literally. I'm a circle type of guy. <laughs> Whoa! All right. So we'll see you around. <laughs> oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, Rashi, this is how he copes. <laughs> this is how he copes with this team getting knocked out. Shh, so don't, don't, don't remind me, man. It's fine, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Again, three and zero oh. for the first time ever. Though we are going to see some changes. Maybe not on the champion. Uh, I think Onik might still hold the you know position right now to be favorites for that position as contenders, but in terms of the grand finalists, we will have a different contender. It's either Alter yep. Ego or Evo. It's RQ have been knocked out, therefore giving us a new grand finals. It's gonna be very crazy, right? But here's a fun fact, right? Alter Ego, well, uh, up to this point, no, no repeats. So Alter Ego, they didn't meet oh, Evo's right. brackets, right? So it's uh, from a different bracket, Alter Ego, Evos, hmm. different bracket, they will meet. Perhaps the trend will continue, AKA Evos will advance. Because this playoff one, well, that's just a theory of mine. Let's see the result tomorrow, all right? I think adaptability will be a bit of a big question, because for Evos, like we saw in uh, their match, right, they were actually struggling until they can find out and figure out a pattern there they struggled really hard against RRQ, but against Alter Ego, maybe they'll be able to solve it uh, even better. We'll have to see. Brackets for the playoff, though, for MPL ID Season 11. Let's take a look right here, ladies and gentlemen. It's been arranged. It's been set in stone right wow. now. Wow. Oh. Man. Looking at it again. The Most interesting. In the Grand Finals, Onik, AE Evos down below. The updated brackets for you guys are right here. So, again, take a screenshot, save it, send it to all your friends if you're an Onyx fan. Right? Like Connie likes to do. <laughs> what? Just I never knew that. He did that. 13-1 regular season, he screenshot, he sent it to my everything. To all the social Emails. media. Even my email. He went on, he looked for it. I didn't even give him me, I didn't even give him <laughs> my email. He just found it and he sent me a screenshot saying, GG, easy. Put added in the newspaper as well. Here Crazy, man. Tomorrow's schedule, 18.30, which is 6.30. WIB, which is West Indonesian time. I, no, Waktu Indonesia Barat, West which means Indonesia. West Indonesian <laughs> time. Literally, right? <laughs> so, there you go. Alter Ego versus Evo's Legends. Final lower bracket. But before that, we will have the awarding ceremony where it's open to the public. Oh, it is open. free tickets for everybody. You can come over and watch the awarding ceremony where the MVP for the regular season will be awarded. The first team for every single role will be awarded. Rising star, most improved player, Best Coach, and also Ooh. the Talent Award for Best Indonesian Talent and Best English Talent. Also, Richest Talent. No, Richest Talent is done and dusted already. When Rashi stepped foot into the MPL Arena, he's done. got that praise. Hi. You only Why? lose to Wolf. Wolf is the richest in the world. I see. Mm. This is news to me. So, so if you guys uh, want anyone to treat you to food, it's Wolf or if you're in Rashi, Indonesia. Right? You gotta give Arashi a call, man. I'm about to hide away <laughs> before anyone catches me. Like, yo, where the food at? <laughs> where the food at? Well, the food is on Grab Food, Arashi on your Samsung phone. But before we get into more, more topics, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. Not yet for the playoffs, but today it's done and dusted. We've seen two incredible matches. We will see one more tomorrow and then another one in the grand finals. But for Mirko, I'm Ghani and I'm Arashi. We will be signing out. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the lower bracket finals and grand finals.
dan terus berlari terus ke arah puncak tertinggi ku takkan berhenti hanya sampai di sini kemenangan abadi Terus berlari 